Kicking off another week of live racing at beautiful Belmont Park. You're watching America's Day at the Races, brought to you by America's Best Racing. For the love of the race, visit americasbestracing.net today. Luckily, so far, the rain has held out for us, and we are on the turf as the girls are taking over the desk here for the early show. Acacia Kamal alongside Sarah El Badwi. And Sarah, great to see that we do still have turf racing in play. We'll start things off on the main track, but some really interesting turf races coming up later, too. Yeah, really lucky that we've been able to stay on the turf course for some of these races that we're going to see later on, including some of those two-year-olds coming up in the fifth race today. So we're, uh, we're hoping that all the weather holds off. It might get a little bit rainy later on and we might have some more rain in the forecast this weekend but lucky for us today we'll take it while we can get it we'll take a look at what's on tap today today's race is as always presented by claiborne farm we have one through nine nine race card at belmont park today that two-year-old maiden special weight as sarah mentioned will be in the fifth we're fast and firm as of now featured allowance race will be race number six today Reminder, you can join Naira Bets and play all the action on our program, plus a whole lot more while earning up to a $200 deposit match bonus. Sign up using promo code BONUS200 and you could earn up to a $200 deposit match right after your first deposit. Bet any track, anywhere, anytime. Join now at NairaBets.com for your $200 deposit match. We start things off on the main track, though, with the maiden special weight, seven furlongs. And this is for three-year-olds and upward and mount up a very short price of two to five. Rad Ortiz back stateside riding for Todd Fletcher, a horse Sarah that finished second on debut back in October. And this is one that really just ran like he needed a start, had a wet surface to deal with that day, able to figure things out and improve in the later stages of that race. He's working well at Saratoga in addition to that. And I'm sure off of those works, a big piece of it. The other one with experience in this race, here's Treaty Obligation. He's likely the most fit one of this group as he goes out for his fourth start. He's hit the board in his three chances so far. Now the rest of the field are first time starters. Here's Big Night Out. This one in Into Mischief. The Dam actually won on debut going six furlongs on dirt with a 74 buyer speed figure. She was successful on both turf and dirt throughout her career. We were saying before we came on, this is a big horse. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely got some size to him. There's the number four night champ for Bill Mott. Another first time starter in here. The Dam also won her first two starts as a two year old. A little bit green out there on the track. Mm -hmm. The five is out and here's the six Colville. Big pedigree for this one. The Dam Catherine Sophia won that 2016 Kentucky Oaks as well as the first four starts of her career. Mixed signals though with this one. The half sibling wanted to go very long on the turf. Yeah, that was Mezcal for Todd Fletcher, but Colville cold right now at 8-1. to one. For more on this field, as we kick off the day, we welcome in the third member of our team, champion jockey, Richard Migliori. Hey, Richie. Hey, thank you, Acacia. Yeah, I, I think it's as simple as one, two, three here, maybe not in that order, but I'm going all to the inside, starting with your big favorite mount up. He was a bit green first time. He actually reacted well when the doors opened, but he was just slow into stride. So I, I don't, it, you know, it says that he, he was bump start, he was squeezed. I just feel like he kind of created that on his own, just by not being kind of quick and jumping with it. Uh, climbed from the dirt, really did not handle the kickback very well, but that was a sloppy racetrack. And then he settled and he came running uh, and ran well, worked out a good trip down the inside and was second best to Full Moon Madness. And he should and could take a big step forward here. He is a big, good looking son of Army Mule. Treaty obligation, completely different type, lighter frame, a little bit more kind of a feminine in the way he travels. But he uh, has run well and consistently. I feel like he's going to have to get better because I think this race is pretty loaded and the horse just outside of him is the horse that I really like. Big night out, son of into mischief. You look through his workouts, I mean, consistently Fastest work of the morning, and you go back four works, 45 and two. Barkley Tag is not a conditioner that wants to see his horses fly in the morning. So obviously this horse just has a world of talent, being by Into Mischief, his damn blind date, which I'm proud to say I never uh, had to or, or you know endure that. Um, 
She's had five horses to race, all winners, so she's a producer. The Grand Dam, Snit, I actually won first time out at Pimlico for Barkley many, many years ago. And uh, the workouts, just point this horse out. He did warm up a little bit odd. Uh, he, he, wasn't, he never hooked up with the pony, and he just kind of hobby horse and jogged, and I never saw him really pick up a big gallop under Dylan Davis, and everybody knows I like to see the good warm up, but I will say he's just an imposing son of Into Mischief, and he will be my top selection. He's 4-1 to one right now. Richie, thank you. Of the first-time starters, definitely the one taking the most money. As Richie mentioned, though, he does seem like he's uh, not a fan of the pony. We'll see how Big Night Out does on his first big day out. There's your favorite, though, Mount Up. We'll take a look at his debut. That was on a wet track back in October at the Belmont at the Big A. He off a bit slow here this day. Not the quickest, kind of bumped around on any side. And this is a race, too. You see him, he's got his head up in the air already a little bit. He's about to move up and then just really kind of reactive to that kickback in front of him and just traveling a little bit awkwardly. He does ultimately figure things out as he goes along, and we will see him now picking things up. He's still far back, but making more of a run on the inside that day. Ends up getting up for second. He does, and the horse that won that race, Full Moon Madness, we saw go on to finish second in the Nashua. It wasn't the quickest race. That was only a 68 fire speed figure, but he faced some decent company that day. And as we see him dueling to get up for second, he had to work to get second. There was no catching the winner that day, but he, he showed a little bit late, which is definitely encouraging. Now, he does come back off of the layoff. He's clearly still a little bit green, and sometimes when you see horses that are running with their head high like that, it can be an indication of them not being 100% fit as well. So in, in my notes, I had kind of written down that he wasn't 100% fit. You can see he definitely looks like a horse that's a good doer. He's a big, <laughs> solid type. So uh, usually Todd Fletcher can have them ready to roll off the bench, and at least he does have that foundation, the two treaty obligation. He has the recency. He does, and as Richie kind of mentioned, this is a horse that we are starting to know what he's made of, and there are some horses where they're more unknowns or perhaps have the room to progress like that inside horse as well. So he can certainly win, but I think we're going to see something that might be a bigger performance from somebody else. A little bit green loading to three, big night out, a very good looking horse, but I think mentally still kind of figuring things out. There he goes, couple of first time starters to go. We'll see what we get from Colville, that son of Catherine Sophia. Again, as far as the sibling Mezcal is concerned, longer the better for that filly. Uh, he's a big price on the board if you like him. The opener from Belmont Park coming up. Here's John Embrial standing by with the call. Riders off number four, Night Chant in the gate. Night Chant has been backed out. Junior Alvarado now back aboard number four, Night Chant, who goes back in. We're set for the opener. And they're off. Night chant away well, joined on the inside by Mount Up. And on the outside, it is Colville. But it is Mount Up who has the early lead. Night chant in second by a half length. Colville is third by a neck with Big Night out racing in fourth, length and a half to Treaty Obligation, who trails the field in fifth. They race up the back stretch. Night chant moves right alongside of the odds on favorite Mount Up. Night chant pokes ahead in front. Mount Up. Now counters and is once again heads apart with Night Chant. Colville on the move on the outside. The quarter one in 22 and four. Just in behind the front three, the duo of a treaty obligation and big night out. Mount up is at the rail. On the outside is Colville. And in between horses is Night Chant. Three of them across. The half one in 46 and three as they come for the quarter pole. It's Colville on the outside. Mount up at the rail as Night Chant drops out of it. Treaty obligation being asked for more. Far outside is Big Night Out. It is Colville who has the lead over Mount Up as they come down for the eighth pole. Colville in front. Mount Up runs in second. 
Then it's big night out and treaty obligation. It's Colville in front trying to shake Mount up as they come on for the finish. Treaty obligation with a late run here. Colville, treaty obligation, Mount up. The three of them hit the wire together. Colville was in between horses. Mount up was on the rail. Treaty obligation on the outside. There was a lot going on in this race, Sarah. The number one mount up and the six Colville dueling late run from Treaty Obligation. Things did get a little tight for the one on the rail, though, around the 16th pole. They did, and I, I don't want to call this one quite yet because he was really coming back towards the end of this race with the two Treaty Obligation coming on as well. An exciting way to start the car today with this opener. And wow. They, uh, what do you think? <laughs> The one got the bob, but I don't know if, oh, oh that's really tight. Yeah, that's six close. six might have come back in between. That's very tight. Yeah. Very, very tight. You have wow. to give it to Mount Up, though. He looked completely he, beaten. He was hanging on that left lead here. And here's where things got a little bit tight. They did, and, and you really thought that he was just going to back out of there, especially after being a part of that pace with uh, the number four, Night Chan, who really just right. faded and was nowhere. But he battled back pretty well. And with the uh, the close quarters too, I wonder what they might do. If they might take a look at something, if there's something to even look at. But this is close, very close. It looks from this slow mo. Wow, that's very very tight. I I think <laughs> it might have been the six. Yeah. I think he might have come back to the bob, but I the don't know. Guy. No, I'm wrong. It wow. was the one. I'm no Paul Leduca when it comes to college <laughs> photos. Obviously, the that's one close. mount up. Wow. That's a Incredible that he was able to come back and get the win. I know he ran a huge race. If you consider yeah. what he did early, being on the inside of horses, off a little bit of a break too. I know we were dealing with a lot of first-time starters, but big race from him. And as far as the first, there's a three big night out who finished fourth. Very green through the running of race that he was trying to run off oh, under Dylan Davis too. Just not settled throughout. So one to watch next time. Mount up still a little bit green as well. Yeah, yeah. I think we could see this race be pretty live going forwards as well with these decent pedigrees as well as a pretty big performance from your winner. And I think, as you mentioned with Big Night Out, a horse that really just had nowhere to go mm -hmm. early on either um, and then clearly wanted to. <laughs> big effort from first time starter Colville debuting at seven furlongs. Not an easy thing to do and he ran very well. Just missed that son of Kentucky Oaks winner Catherine Sophia. But it was one six two three in the opener at Belmont Park. Feature coming up a little bit later on will be race number six today our allowance feature on the main track and yes it's a field of five Sarah but you can genuinely make a case for every single one of the runners in this field you can and you get two of them as a coupled entry as well so there's a lot going on in this race even though it is more of a compact field Nova Rags got the win last time out over C's get, get degrees who came back to win again we know C's get degrees as the speed the question is can Nova Rags could put back-to-back -back wins together and that's a big question for of course, that's probably going to be your favorite now with the scratch of Colonel Bowman. He hasn't been the winningest type, but he should get some pace to close into again today. I know you have some interest in him. He should get the right kind of trip. We'll see. Like I said, we know that C's Get Degrees is going to go to the front. He had a nice win uh, last time out at Pimlico. He settled for third in here to be part of that pace, but Nova Rags kicking away. He's a closing sprinter. That's what he wants to do, but he's got some pretty good competition to face in that sixth race a little bit later on today. We'll see how it plays out, but it was a tight photo finish in the opener. The number one mount up with a very impressive performance given the fact that he was in a little bit tight down on the inside and he came back gamely to get the win just in the nick of time. He looked completely defeated in there and, and really, really battled on to secure this win and, and really, I think, I don't want to say validated your two to five, but validated being a favorite in a field like this. Right. He obviously has the horse's ability. He still kind of runs with his head up in the air. I guess that's just a little bit of his style. And again, there's that greenness I was talking about, kind of where he was hanging on the left lead a little bit. The number six, first time starter, Colville, maybe coming over, trying to intimidate him a little bit. And here, you would forgive him if he just kind of backed out of it. Yes, especially considering how the early dynamics were of this race with the other horse that was a part of the pace finishing well, well behind everybody else. Pays 280, no surprise there with Irad Ortiz Jr. Boy. Jose Ortiz in second, which he always talks about just betting the Ortiz brothers in an exacta and you would have had a nice price here. Todd Fletcher, the trainer of the winner though, is standing by with Richie.
Yeah, I'm here with Todd Pletcher. And Todd, Mount Up showed much better speed today. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, his debut surprised us a little bit. I, I thought he would show more speed that day, but he kind of got bumped around at the start a little bit and then reacted like a lot of first timers would do and didn't like the kickback, but got away better. I was concerned about the, the rail draw, but uh, broke alertly and kind of, I read, had to get him into the race a little bit. And I still think he's, you know, he's a little bit green, learning, kind of intimidated inside a little bit, but looked like, I mean, you know, he's three quarters of a length back there and up. Not far, not far to go, and fought back. So I was happy to see that. Yeah, I mean, he, he looked like he was kind of looking at that horse outside. He's on his wrong lead, but then he reasserted himself. How satisfying is it to see him have that kind of tenacity? Yeah, no, that's what we were hoping for. He'd been training really well. We were, we were thinking he was going to give us a good effort, so glad he did. Ultimately, how far do you think he'll want to go? Because he does have a big stride on him. Yeah, I think he'll stretch out, you know, and uh, you know, the Army mules seem to be very versatile. They sprint, they, they turf, they do a little bit of everything, but I think this colt will stretch out. And Army Mule is a very brilliant horse that you actually trained. He won the Carter. Yeah, very, very, very talented horse. Okay. Todd, thank you very much. Guys, I think this horse showed something today. They can have ability, but they also have to have the desire. That was a really good fight he put on. And a good fight from his rider, Rad Ortiz, as well. Todd Pletcher, he's got the Texas A&M he's representing today. <laughs> a little bit cooler. Talking some strategy with Richie. I like it. Figuring out what's going on for the rest of the day. Richie's getting the inside scoop going on. He's got a lot happening there. R Rich, Richie gets all the inside stories. He really Nobody does. Nobody wants to talk to Richie. I, mean, I love I, it. I don't blame him. Mount <laughs> up with the win for trainer Todd Fletcher. Very game performance. Chad Brown just beaten with that first time starter, Colville, in the opener. But he's got a big chance this weekend for his fourth win in the wild applause. He has two runners. We'll talk more about their chances after this on America's State of the Races. The Run Happies are running. The Run Happies are selling. The Run Happies are winning. Eclipse champion Run Happy is showing a new dimension with winners on turf, dirt, and all weather. A record-breaking sprint champion, Run Happy is also showing winners at all distances, burning up the tracks. A sire whose runners can carry his speed over all distances and all surfaces. Run Happy, price for value and standing strong at Claiborne Farm. We're back on America's Day at the races on our FS2 coverage, brought to you by Claiborne Farm. 100 years of doing the usual, unusually well. Coming up this weekend, we have some fun stakes action to look forward to. The wild applause on Saturday at beautiful Belmont Park, a mile on the main track. And you have some interesting runners named for a very talented horse, Sarah. Wild applause as we'll take a look at the 1984 Diana. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is a race mare that was just 
so proficient on the lawn and it's great to see when they have races that are named after them that go on to be some pretty big performances. It was actually the Wild Applause a couple of years ago was one of the uh, better betting races for me. So I always remember this race fondly when it comes up in June as we have the time in between Saratoga. But just look at her go and when she puts the kind of separation like that on a field in a turf race, you know that those margins are more meaningful when they are able to separate themselves from a field on the grass as we don't see that happen that often. The Virginia bred by the great Northern dancer, wild applause winning the 1984 Diana was a great two at that time. Obviously we know the weight that the Diana holds now. Oh, and if you sure. want a great history of racing in New York, just look at the, what the stakes are named for. And you can learn a little bit more about the horses uh, that their namesake races are for. Mile on the Widener, the Wild Applause on Saturday. And here's a look at the field, field of eight with the main track only. Hopefully we get a chance to see it on the turf. And we'll take a look at Breath Away, who just missed last time out. She had, uh, she had a tough trip down in South Florida and uh, I should say had a tough trip last time out being just beaten by Asprey, a Chad Brown runner who obviously seems to have a pretty uh, good future ahead. Oh, absolutely. And she was a short price this day, but she was really much the best in here. She ended up having to be inside of other horses, waiting a little bit to execute that late running style and just getting nipped at the wire by a horse that got to start more of their clear run ahead of her. So she's a player for sure this Saturday if we end up staying on the grass. They put some separation on the rest of the field as well. Those two, the best, and uh, two, the big players in that hilltop. But Chad Brown sends out tax implications. A filly who will make her first start of her three-year-old season. We saw her win on debut at Monmouth and then finished second behind uh, Implicated in the Chelsea Flower. And if she can bring some of this two-year-old form into this year in her three-year-old season, she's obviously dangerous for always dangerous connections in the wild applause stakes as Chad Brown has had a lot of success winning that race. And she's able to produce a pretty nice closing kick through the stretch in here. Just ends up getting beat for uh, for the win in this race and those uh, Clarovich colors as well. But to me, it just seems like a horse that is likely to improve going from two to three. Chad with two chances. The Guria coming in that filly for War by Warfront as well. That one's seven to two tax implications at three to one. So Chad looking for his fourth victory in the wild applause with two chances to do so on Saturday. As Sarah said, hopefully we get a chance to stay on the grass this weekend for that wild applause. We have the New York Reds in the spotlight on Sunday as we take a look at the weekend stake schedule. Maybe a little bit of a quieter week as the stakes are concerned, but still some fun quality. The dance of Renee, the spotlight for those New York Reds on Sunday. Day. Yeah, I mean, this is a time where we have a little bit of that lull before Saratoga, but we still have a lot of good racing going on. I mean, even just the opener is still an exciting right. finish to that race. So whether it's stakes races, allowance races, maiden races, there's something exciting going on here every single day. We'll enjoy our time here at beautiful Belmont Park for a few more weeks before we start things up at the spa. When we come back, we'll talk about a true legend in the sport of horse racing. Over 7,000 victories in his career, pulling the upset in the 2004 Belmont Stakes. Jockey Edgar Prado announcing his retirement. Experience the adrenaline pumping, suspense filled action of the Sport of Kings no matter where you are with Naira Vets. It's fast, easy, and secure. Download the app today and start winning with our lucrative weekly promotions, thrilling handicapping contests, and a one of a kind VIP rewards program. Don't just watch horse racing, be a part of the action with Naira Vets. I'm very bullish on it. Tom's Day Todd's got a four length lead at the 16th pole. Tom's Day Todd has conquered the Clark. Your best horses of the last 10 or 15 years are not consistently as fast as this horse. It's total domination for Tom's Day Todd. 
He's a beautifully balanced horse and a really good mover, and he's just full of class. The nation's number one horses of racing age sale. Since its inception in 2013, this sale has produced 28% stakes horses, 75 stakes winners, and over 75 million in racetrack earnings. Recent star graduates include grade one winners Atone and Stiletto Boy, plus graded stakes winners Newgrange, Greeley and Ben, and Middle Eastern stars Scotland Yard and Electability. July selected horses of racing age, Monday, July 10th at Phasing Tipton in Lexington, Kentucky. Where will you be? They're coming to the top of the stretch. Smarty Jones is a four-length lead. Birdstone is moving to be second on the outside. Rock Hard 10 is back to third. And Smarty Jones enters the stretch to the roar of 120,000. But Birdstone is going to make him earn it today. The whip is out on Smarty Jones. It's been 26 years. It's just one furlong away. Birdstone is an upside foot. They're coming down to the finish. Can Smarty Jones hold on? Here comes Birdstone. Birdstone surges. Pass! Birdstone wins the Belmont Stakes. Birdstone in the 2004 Belmont Stakes upsetting Smarty Jones in his bid to be a Triple Crown winner. Truly one of the uh, most iconic moments in recent history. Sarah seeing Mary Lou Whitney apologize after the win. And Edgar Prado getting his second Belmont Stakes, also won in 2002 with Sarava. The, the biggest price upset still in history as well. But Edgar Prado, 7,119 victories in his Hall of Fame career. Uh, a wonderful career for him. And, and that's one of my favorite race calls by Tom Durkin because he really sets the stage for the heartbreak of Smarty yeah. Jones not getting the win and the triple crown in there, but uh, no heartbreak for Edgar Prado. Very excited to win that Birdstone with Birdstone in the Belmont Stakes. He's won some other incredible races, winning the Kentucky Derby with Barbara. He said that's one of the highlights of his career in a recent article that came out from Daily Racing Forum when he announced his retirement. And he's just had such success with really proficient stallions, if we think of now, too. Yeah, I mean, Lemon Drop true. Kid, Harlan's Holiday, even St. Liam, too. So uh, calling it uh, quits on this career, but we'll see what he ends up doing next. I feel like we all kind of end up staying around and racing <laughs> when uh, we do something else. It's definitely part of life as uh, we bring in Richie to this conversation. Richie, I know you know Edgar well and somebody that's been around this game for quite a long time and eighth all time as far as wins are concerned and, and the resume he built is truly incredible. Yeah, incredible resume. And the one thing that always stood out to me about Edgar was his consistency. He was just, he had sustained excellence over such a long period of time, and his approach never wavered. It didn't matter if it was a lower level claiming race or a grade one. He was meticulous in his preparation and a true professional, a jockey's jockey, if you will. Actually, he got his big opportunity when I got injured a week before Saratoga. John Kimmel brought him in uh, to ride all his horses in Saratoga, and then his ability just show, was able to be showcased up there, and he took off. Uh, a tremendous career and congratulations and happy retirement to Edgar. Yeah, absolutely. We wish him all the best. Last road is his last race in January at Gulfstream. And I thought it was very poignant what he said in, in that article you referenced, Sarah, that he said, when I was younger, I took somebody else's spot. And now other younger riders are taking my spot and it's time. And uh, I remember working in Maryland very shortly after his 7,000th career win, which took place at Parks. And just thinking about that sheer number of wins and not to mention the quality, but as Richie said, with, with all levels, um, Truly remarkable 56-year-old native of Peru. Very happy retirement to Edgar. Absolutely. And just also being able to call it a retirement and a, and a great career on your own terms and, and making that decision for yourself must be also a powerful way to go out instead of having to be forced into making that decision by injury or some other reason as well. We wish him all the best. We'll miss seeing him uh, around the racetrack. But as Sarah said, very few people actually ever leave this sport. <laughs> there are horses getting a leg up for race two at Belmont Park coming up next. A mile on the turf in this allowance. There's your favorite, the number five, Easter. Uh, I had a big theory with him, Sarah. I love the cutback to a mile today. Didn't think he'd be the favorite in this spot. But we'll see if this is just going to be the right kind of Goldilocks effect for him. 
I'm a little surprised that he is your favorite right now, but I, I guess you could argue that maybe some other people are seeing the angle that you are, that he's mm -hmm. getting that slight cut back in distance, and that might be more suitable for him. He's one that can be a little bit tactical as well. He's certainly faced some good horses lately. And I think maybe others are growing a little bit tired of a horse like Verbal, who was your morning line favorite. We just had a nice little visitor going by the set, <laughs> waving. Mrs. Vivian Malloy uh, from New Edition Farm. Always love seeing her around the racetrack. Uh, truly somebody that's given so much, especially to the New York Bread program as well. It's fun. We're, we're up on the second floor today, so we, we see a lot more people going by than usual. And there's a lot of people here yeah. today. There's an event going on. The, uh, the Belmont Room is full of people. So even though we kind of have an overcast type of day, it's always nice when people are out at the race track like Richie says too it's always warm in the winter circle so <laughs> Easter your favorite and obviously uh Mitch Levitis directing so there's your flag shot to get a little look about the a wind. little breezy day <laughs> we have today Duke of Hazard what about him he has got to get out of the gate better he does, and he, I think he needs to be a little bit more forwardly mm -hmm. placed as well to be effective in a race like this with a more compact field as he makes his second start off the layoff. He had more of a wide trip and was really taken out of the early stages of his race last time at Keeneland. I wonder if he can break a little bit faster and get himself more involved. Yeah, that seems to be uh, kind of his Achilles heel. Just left with too much to do last time. He was so far back. He's 5-2, to 5-2 to two as well on verbal. His who was a grade three winner back in 2021, only raced once in 2022. And now it's just kind of, does he still have it in him? Did he ever really improve? I, I saw him down in the Tampa Bay and he physically really impressed me a lot. It just, he kind of ran in place in his last couple of races. And he's disappointed as the favorite two mm -hmm. times now as well. He, running in that middle start in the Tampa Bay, he was a bigger price, won by Emmanuel. But he's one that I just want to see a little bit more mm -hmm. from him before I take him at a short price again. Making his third start of 2023. Now he's one of three horses on the board at 5-2 to two at the moment. Here's a bit of a price, the number two, seven channels. This is one that's likely going to have to improve in order to be competitive at this level, but he's had a couple of chances running at a mile on turf, and there are some back races that would make him more competitive. Duke of Hazard, that gelding we talked about so far back at Keeneland last time. The seven-year-old has only run a couple of times in the U.S. as far as his entire career is concerned, but he has some things to overcome today. Here's Chasing the Crown, last out winner. The full sibling, of which there are actually many, to Vasilika, a uh, multi, almost multi-million dollar earner. And this one, I think, could show some more early speed, too. Uh, I like him a bit. He's uh, faced some good horses, like up to the mark. Easter, still your favorite at 8 to 5. You mentioned wanting to see him cutting back to this mile distance. He has a good race, two back at a mile on Good Friday. He's actually run twice mm -hmm. on Good Friday before. I wonder if they did that on purpose. No, Probably. I'm kidding. Not <laughs> the sky and sand. Do note he was gelded before that last race. A really big price on a horse that's projected by Timeform US to be the speed and potentially alone up there. I think chasing the crown is going to apply a little bit more pressure, though. Yeah, Blinker's going on Sky and Sandy. He kind of threw his head up at the start last time, too. And, and I don't think he's going to be as far back as he was last time. I think that race is a bit deceiving because his race is prior. He was not that far off of it when sprinting. I agree. And I, I actually would have preferred him a little bit had this race come off the turf because he's run some OK dirt races in the past where there wasn't much other dirt for him to go on. But a really big price for a horse that can be forward. About three minutes away from the second, let's check in trackside with Richie. Yeah, guys, this is an interesting group here. And we'll start with the one horse, Verbal, a horse that obviously um, has a hard time staying on the racetrack. Got two starts in 21, one start in 22. Now he's actually making his third start in 2023. Uh, and he looks good, typical of a Chad Brown runner. You know, just comes over looking well-prepared, fit, great in the coat checked every box like what I saw from him I prefer others but from a physical perspective really cannot fault verbal at all the uh, three horse Duke of Hazard now I know this is a horse that generally tends to carry weight he's a kind of a blocky thicker individual if you will I just don't like his coat his coat's turned it's dry you know I, I I don't know if that's in or out of character for him but it's not a horse that I can endorse off of the way I see uh, him physically the four-horse chase in the crown looks very, very sharp. Uh, I love the way he was turned out. You know, that rich, you know, deep chestnut color, 
very rich hydrated coat. Love what I'm seeing from the four chasing the crown. And I really like the five Easter. Uh, this is a horse that I do believe is a true miler. If you go back and watch his race at Aqueduct two back, he was traveling in the bridle, just crying out to be turned loose. And when he was turned loose on the inside, got a really good ride from Trevor McCarthy that day. He burst through on the inside and finished the deal. I like him turning back to the mile. And I think from a physical perspective, he looks a little bit better than a few others that look really good here on the racetrack. All right, Richie, thank you. Intriguing prospect. Um, is it, just wanted to circle back to what Richie said. Uh, was it about the two he didn't like uh, or the three? I think he was talking about the number three. The three, the Duke, Duke of Hazard that he wasn't we uh, were showing the sold. Two. I know. That's why I was a little <laughs> bit confused. I just wanted to confirm on that. There's the three Duke of Hazard. Um, I know this is a big, solid type of horse, but what I wanted to point out is that I know that Maggie and I have actually had the exact same comment with all of the other Wesley Ward runners that have run here recently, that they have been carrying a lot of weight and conditioning. They just haven't looked great in their coats. Hmm. I have felt that about every other Wesley horse that I've seen the last couple weeks, and I've heard Maggie Wolf and Dale say the same thing. So I wonder if that's just kind of them shipping in, where they're coming from in Kentucky. I don't know, but I do think it's interesting that all three of us have had the same thought. I'd agree, and I think that's something to really keep an eye on moving forwards with a barn that does take a lot of money, that does send a lot, out a lot of live horses as we see him finishing second, or very close second and third in that uh, race back at Keeneland. And he ended up being third last time out in there behind the, uh, the pace setter, Fancy Liquor. The winner of that race, Hurricane Dream, returned to run second in the grade three dinner party at Pimlico. He's been facing good horses. I, like you, just have some reservations about a couple of things with his running style mm -hmm. and now hearing the comments from yourself, Maggie and Richie, all agreeing on the same thing with all of these Wesley Ward runners. I think it's just something to definitely take a note of. And I, you've moved the board on Easter. We're going <laughs> nine to five I don't know now. About that. <laughs> um, and to be fair, the, the Wesley Ward runners have been running, especially the ones taking aggressive drops in class. But um, just something to kind of keep in mind, I think, about the physicality that we're seeing. Uh, I don't know if it's me as far as Easter is concerned, <laughs> but it's I think, uh, yeah, well, I'll take credit for it. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as chasing the crown, who we're looking at here, this horse winning last time out, I know that you specifically were kind of hinging on this Gulf Street race back in January because it was first started off layup and he's behind up to the mark who's now a multiple grade one winner including taking the Manhattan on Belmont Stakes Day. Right and up to the mark made such a huge move in this race and a great call if you listen to it by Pete Aiello to catch him and call him coming into the turn because you knew that he was really going to put in a big effort going into the turn of this race. Chasing the crown was a part of a pace that fell apart in the later stages of this race and that's what I really liked about him. I think that he can be a little bit more forward and aggressively handled by Manny Franco in this spot. I like that he was able to get the win last time out for a little bit of a confidence boost. He certainly has the pedigree to go a little bit longer on turf mm -hmm. if they wanted to as well, but I just like this spot for him. I think that it'll set up for him well in, in terms of the dynamics of this race. And he just certainly has been facing some good horses throughout his entire career. I actually had some interest in him on debut. There was some really fun pedigrees in there, including a half to gear jockey, double clutch. That's right. That horse who finished third and would come back to win at Keeneland in his subsequent start towards the beginning of his career, chasing the crown. Currently two to one. Easter still your favorite at nine to five. There goes the number three Duke of Hazard. We'll see if he can get himself in a little bit better position today. Fun race coming up on the turf, going a mile. John Embriel standing by for the call. They're in the gate. And they're off. Slow beginning for number five, Easter, and he trails the field. Sky and Sand, the gray, is out for the early lead, quickly in front here by a length and a half. Down on the inside is seven channels, and alongside is chasing the crown. Then a break of two to Verbal, who sits in fourth, followed by Duke of Hazard, and the slow starting Easter in sixth. Long shot, Sky and Sand leads the field up the back stretch and leads by two and a half lengths through a quarter and 24 and one. Seven channels, second by a head. Chasing the crown is on the outside and in third. It's a length and a half to Duke of Hazard, followed at the rail by Verbal and at the back 
by Easter. Sky and Sand steps away now to lead by four lengths. Chasing the crown, seven channels remain second and third as they go into the far turn. It is Sky and Sand who ran the opening half mile in 47 and three fifth seconds. Sky and Sand by three lengths. Chasing the crown, getting closer in second. Duke of Hazard is now moving up on the outside. Down at the rail is seven channels, then Verbal and Easter. It is wide open as they come for the top of the stretch. Chasing the crown has taken over from Sky and Sand. It's chasing the crown in front with Duke of Hazard on the outside and Verbal being asked for more. Then Easter, who ran into a little bit of trouble there. It is chasing the crown in front. Verbal, Easter continues to gain on the outside. It is Easter coming after chasing the crown. Verbal in between horses. They come for the finish. Easter, a last to first winner. Chasing the crown second and Verbal was third. Easter gets the win off after getting off slow, but Sarah, I would imagine they're going to take a look at this because there was some bumping. Easter ended up going into the three, and then also the one got squeezed back late. I don't know if he was the one that caused it, but there there was a lot going on here. I, I totally see what you're seeing with him trying to lug in maybe a little bit. Poor Easter. He didn't get off that well. He, he knows that it wasn't Good Friday. <laughs> You know, a lot going on for him. Ultimately able to cross the wire first. I wonder if we're going to take a look at anything. Yeah, we'll see. We got the head on now to show so us. So this is already the, the bumping of the three has happened. I think the three might have come out a bit at this point. But what we're going to see is that the number one verbal and Irata Ortiz do steady and take up pretty significantly. Let's we'll go, to go back further. No, I, I think that was around where it was. Uh, let's go to Richie. Richie, what did you see in the stretch? Guys, I, I really think both incidents were caused by horses coming out from the inside. It appeared to me that the three-horse Duke of Hazard came out into uh, your winner Easter early upper stretch. And then this part here, the force chasing the crown comes under out under a left-handed crop. That caused the problem right there. Now, Manny straightens up and it looked to me like Flavian was holding a pretty tight line. It was really more the inside horse coming out into uh, the third place finisher verbal. Uh, they are looking at it, but to me, it, I think the onus is more on the inside runners as opposed to Easter, who performed extremely well, particularly after completely bumbling the break and being able to close into slow fractions. See the first incident right there? That was a, a Duke of Hazard coming out. And now it'll be compounded later on as Manny Franco under an insistent left-handed crop comes out right in here. That's the uh, infraction. If the stewards feel like it costs them a placing, that would be the only uh, horse I think they should be concentrating on. Well said, as always, Richie. Um, completely agree. It looks like actually both incidents might have been in a way caused by the four. And so they, it, the, what they're looking at right now, the stewards, and it's not blinking as to who it necessarily involves. They're taking a look at everything that's going on with the stretch run here, just the inquiry sign up. And with the number three, Duke of Hazard drifting out a little bit into the hip of Easter, Easter closing well. I think the biggest question as far as the inquiry here, Sarah, and now it is an objection, one against four, will be if they take down the four to elevate the one to second. Which is fair. Going mm. back and looking at the entire stretch run of this race, you really see more outside horses making moves and then the one verbal having to take up a little bit. Uh, no matter what, I think we can all agree that Easter ran the best race. I mean, he was off so race. slow. Yeah. And then to be able to close like that into a moderate pace, I won't say fast, and it wasn't necessarily slow for here, but a moderate pace. He ran huge. I think your theory was spot on about his uh <laughs> He his just mile. wanted a mile. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It wasn't the holiday. It was the mile. So uh, <laughs> we'll see what they end up doing here. I mean, I don't think it ends up affecting the uh, the winning race. Yes. Uh, Flavian Pratt seemed pretty confused as they came <laughs> back to the, the winner. So it was like, I didn't do anything. It was all them. <laughs> and yes, right here, you see the number four chasing the crown kind of coming out as Richie touched on with that left-handed urging and the others kind of having to re-rally a bit to try and avoid him and we'll see particularly the one verbal have to take back at this point the question the stewards are asking is did that drifting by the four cause the one a better order of finish not affecting the winner though is Richie standing by the jockey of Easter. Flavi and Pratt. Flavi and Easter kind of bumbled the break a bit didn't he? Yeah he's never great out of the gate but then uh 
Mr. Motion told me to just, uh, you know, stay, stay calm with him. He can be a little cocky. So I just, you know, let him settle down. He, he relaxed well on the backside. Uh, obviously, there's a bit of a cut. And uh, I think from coming from Europe, he really liked it. Yeah, I mean, he was traveling so handy with you turning for home. The inside horse came out into you originally, first Duke of Hazard, and then later on in deep stretch, uh, the runner-up seemed to come out. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Uh, actually, uh, yeah, mid-stretch, uh, there was a movement from, from the inside out, so it kind of bumped me wide. Uh, but but uh, from that point after that, uh, you know, it was pretty simple for, for my horse. Terrific ride. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Guys. Richie, thank you. Flavian Pratt handling everything cool under pressure, as is always the case. A great group in the winner circle here, too, as he's off to take a photo. Um, always love to see that. Always love to see so many people out at the track today. That's the Riverhead Rotary members. Welcome to Belmont Park. Always great to see yeah. a big crowd here on track, and then I'm sure they're glad that they don't have to sweat out this inquiry as much as it does <laughs> not involve their That's horse. right. Inquiry, third, uh, second against third, an objection. We'll see how it plays out. Not affecting your winner, though, in race number two, Easter the victor after that trouble trip and a big, big effort. Coming up, though, the summer season kicking off for the three-year-olds now that the Triple Crown is in the rearview mirror. Kentucky Derby runner-up to Phil pointing to this weekend's Ohio Derby. If he can get back to the winner's circle, we'll talk a little bit more about him after this. It's Thousand Words fighting back, coming down to the finish. If a picture is worth a thousand words, this is one stunning picture. Thousand Words just in front. Thousand Words wins the Robert B. Lewis. Honoree P is full out now, second on the outside. And they're coming down to the line, and Thousand Words has done it. Welcome back to America's Day at the Races, a case of Montserrat Bobby and Richard Migliori. Glad to have you with us. Race at two at Belmont in the books, and there was a disqualification, Sarah. The number four chasing the crown disqualified from second to third after interfering with the number one verbal. And he did move out a little bit in the later stages of the stretch, ultimately impeding the forward momentum of Verbal, who had to take back just a little bit. And I think it was the right call, ultimately. I think it was, too. Um, uh, the steady drifting out by the number four chasing the crown did impede Verbal, who did have to steady back at kind of a pivotal point in the race. But I think take nothing away from your winner, Easter, who got off poorly. Um, chasing the crown, the four went off as the favorite. Easter up to two to one, $6 and 10 cent winner.
Yeah, great pick by you. You were right Thank that you. he just wanted the mile and uh, really proved that today. He ran a monster race after breaking slowly. So great to see him uh, able to get back to doing what he probably wants to do going forward. Official in race number two. Uh, race three will be on the main track. A mile on the main track at $12,500 claiming race. Before we get into the third race, we'll take a look at what's coming up this weekend. Pointing to the Ohio Derby. Kentucky Derby runner up to Phil's. Here's a look at the field and two fills eight to five on the morning line. Deservedly so after the giant effort in the Kentucky Derby where he was a part of a pace that ended up falling apart in the later stages of that race. Able to uh, get the lead at the top of the stretch here as we see him more towards the inside and, and really gave pretty much everybody that backed him a bit of a thrill. I know there's a couple of our, our fellow co-workers that had some interest in him and picked him on top for the Kentucky Derby before he ultimately gets run down by Mage. You also have Lord Miles, the upset winner of the Wood Memorial, who did not compete in the Kentucky Derby. He's pointing to uh, the Ohio Derby. And you have Bishop's Bay, who was just beaten by eventual Belmont Stakes winner, Archangelo, and that Peter Pan. And when's the last time we saw such a competitive Ohio Derby? I know. This is Very a shaping up race, to be actually. a really yeah. good race coming up this weekend. Such a good looking horse, two fills, and he ran a tremendous race in the Kentucky Derby, being on top of that pace, uh, finishing second that afternoon, and a big opportunity for his jockey, Jareth Loveberry, as well. Here's a look at some of the top three year olds heading into the summer. Three different winners of the three Triple Crown races. Mage bypassing uh, the Belmont Stakes. He's waiting in the wings. And Archangelo, as mentioned, won the Peter Pan and won the Belmont Stakes in impressive fashion, Sarah, but also making history in the process. And so cool to be a part of that and, and watch that history happen with you as well. And to really see not only a great story, but the ability that he's shown going forward is being one of those three-year-olds we have to look forward to coming up this summer. And he's not going to have an opportunity to run a mile and a half again for the foreseeable future, but he's been capable of getting some of those shorter distances and just the move he made up the rail in the Belmont Stakes and looked like he was really going to draw away from this field as you see some of those closers catching up to him late, but still able to send them off. I just think that we're going to see a lot from him going forward this summer. And I like when we have a more competitive summer season mm -hmm. to decide who ends up being champion three-year-old male. Yeah, this is going to be a great second half of the year as far as the three-year-olds are concerned. And a special, special moment of the Belmont Stakes. First Belmont win for Jackie Javier Castellano. See him pumped up in the winner's circle. And a special win for trainer Jenna Antonucci becoming the first female trainer to train a triple crown winner. Just absolutely uh, great, great stuff. As we bring in Richie to the conversation. Richie, the fun thing about these summer three-year-old races is that you have some new faces that will be entering the scene as well. Yeah, you always have those kind of second half of the year horses. I mean, you can go all the way back to when Wajima wound up kind of running the table and beating the mighty Forgo as a three-year-old and uh, took down three-year-old honors away from Foolish Pleasure. Well, I'm looking for a horse that's only had one start to be that second half of the year kind of horse in Forever Donegal. Troubled beginning, he broke clean, second step, he stumbled. I read Ortiz Jr. did a miraculous job of staying in the middle of him and not using the horse's mouth or the reins to get his balance and right himself. Horse then proceeded to get in the bridle, cruised up, comes off the turn into the stretch, makes that flying lead change and then finishes the deal like a true professional. It's hard to debut at a mile and a 16th. It's even harder to do it in the style he did it, stumbling beginning professional after that and I just think this horse has got a lot of upside going forward I'm excited to see what he's going to do going forward he is my right now second and a half of the year kind of horse and took a ton of money and a big effort on debut after some quick workouts coming in he's one for one so far for Donegal and uh, Rad Ortiz and Todd Fletcher with a nice effort overcoming a lot of adversity in that debut too but of course we have the Jim Dandy the Travers of course some of the other races at other tracks like Pennsylvania Derby and Haskell and that makes things really interesting for the three-year-olds after the Triple Crown is done. It does, and we've seen so many of these horses that were a part of that Triple Crown trail, and maybe you know Forte leaving a little bit of something to be desired after not running in the Derby. It's giving the others an opportunity to catch up and keeping that door open. I think 
Richard Migliori brings up a great point about this horse Donegal Forever as being one that could also join this group of stakes-faced runners yeah. and, and overcame a lot, as we mentioned in that start, stumbling and earned a pretty big figure for that debut win as well. He did. We look forward to seeing how things shake out this summer as far as the three-year-olds are concerned. For one that seemed to be kind of lacking a star, maybe going into it and some questions about Forte, it's now gotten to be a really, really interesting group and competitive group, I think, too. I'd agree, and it, we luckily get to see some of these horses coming up at Saratoga for some of those big races that we have later on for the three-year-olds, and it's always great when this division is decided later on because it makes for more competitive racing. A lot of fun stuff still to come down the line. We'll take a quick time out here in America's Day at the Races, and Richard McLeori always talks about getting your position going forward. He'll take you inside the starting gate for an up-close and personal look. That's coming up after this. Warfront. This son of Danzig ranks among the world's elite sires. Ranked number one by percentage of stakes winners, graded stakes winners, and grade one winners. No stallion has a better strike rate. Warfront is the sire of over 100 lifetime stakes winners, including some of the sport's most talented runners both at home and abroad. The leading turf sire of 2022 by stakes winners and stakes performers. Warfront, standing at Claiborne Farm. Now more than ever, it's time to get with the program. When shopping for your next race prospect, consider that New York Reds start with an advantage. Our New York Reds run for serious green. At Saratoga Race Meet, New York Red Maidens run for up to $88,000. New York Red Allowance Horses run for up to $100,000. And New York Red Owners can collect awards of up to $20,000 per horse, per race. So get back with the program. Seriously. Catalina Cruiser. He won seven of nine starts coast to coast with six triple digit buyers and five dominating graded stakes wins, including a record in the grade two true North Stakes, a son of leading fifth crop sire Union Rags, a $370,000 yearling with an imposing physical and one of the best of his generation. There's only one Catalina Cruiser now standing at Lane's End. Racetrack Television Network brings you every race, every race from every track, every track on every screen, every, screen, every, screen, every day. day. With monthly packages starting as low as $5, RTN gives you great value and access to more live HD streaming and race replays than anyone. Visit RTN.TV today to sign up and watch on almost any device, including Roku and Amazon Fire. RTN has packages that start at $5 per month. There's so many key and important times in a race where jockeys have to make quick decisions, when to move, when to sit, wait behind horses. But to me, one of the most critical times in a race is leaving the starting gate. If you don't break cleanly, you can get shuffled back, taken out of position, and it's hard to get a horse in a good rhythm. Starts are so important. I want you to know what goes on inside the starting gate. Come on with me. Where are we going? Hey, we're from the front. All right. Yeah. yeah. The key to breaking sharp from the gate is having your horse warmed up, alert, but settled. You want them relaxed. We've got a great gate crew here in New York, and they know all the horses, their habits, what to expect. Put them in the gate, get them square, looking down the track, and be ready to go. Try to get as relaxed as I can on my horse before we go in the gate. And once I get in there, I want to let him walk in and take a deep breath and make sure the gate guy get up because I want to make sure he, he, he starts setting his feet correctly. And um, you know the ones that's going to sit in there and be still, but I just, want to, I just want to keep it as relaxed as I can going into the gate with the horse where the horse can feel like he's going to do his job. I'm going to just stay out of his way. You get one that cuts right to the gate, sometimes they'll balk. It's a, kind of a closed space. Some horses are a little claustrophobic. Important to pick up your feet so you don't get your legs caught on the side of the gate. You could feel their energy. Sometimes you'll feel their, their heartbeat beating on your leg. Again, want to keep them relaxed, settled. 
get them square. The assistant starters are so good at getting the horse nice and balanced. Sometimes you get one that's leaning a little too far, you'll take your leg, push off the petition, get them where you want them to be. Looking down the racetrack, all four legs square on the ground. Last horse gets ready to go in, you're gonna take your half cross, take a piece of mane, one hand, other hand free, in case horse breaks left or right, you can correct them, and you're gonna be leaving here in a hurry. Well, a lot of people wait on the guys to say one out to get all set and ready, you know. I'm, I'm not, a, you know, you can hear the guy say one out, but I'm mostly paying attention to the guy with the button. That's how I break so fast out the gate, you know. I'm a button guy, you know. Or I listen to the last door sound and the button. And after that, early position wins the race most of the time. So many moving parts that make a horse break well or break poorly. It's important to have great communication between the rider and the assistant starters as well as the official starter. And working with the trainers to make sure that if a horse is a little bit nervous, they school them, they get them where they're relaxed around the gate. It's not always the horse that's the most keyed up that breaks the best. It's the horse that's alert and settled and balanced in the gate. Then you can leave the gate in a hurry. Every single time, tremendous work by Richie and the whole team, giving it a, a clear insight as to what it's like being inside the starting gate. Richie, uh, you know how much we love that piece, and I know how special it was for you to have the opportunity to give everyone a little bit of an inside look into the Iron Monster. You know, one thing that I love about the job that we all do here in presenting racing is, is educating. And you hope that you can kind of give people a little bit of a different insight, a little bit of a different, uh, you know, view, if you will. So trying to bring people into the starting gate. And it's, you know, it was a... A, a pleasure and a passion to do that. But I got to say, I was quite emotional doing it. I hadn't been on a racehorse in 13 years. Um, and I just want to thank everybody that made it happen. You know, Bobby and Eldon and you know, everybody that worked on it. Just fantastic work, guys. And as you know, Acacia, they make us look good. They really do. Our team is so fantastic. The, the number of hours of television that we put on every week, and uh, they make it happen each and every week. And if you have some crazy ideas, Sarah, they, they also make it possible as well. Um, and we know that uh, Richie asked for forgiveness, not permission from his wife, Carmela, before getting on that horse to film that piece. Right, he was like, don't worry, I didn't ride an actual race. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the horse that he was on, though, actually did race a few days after that piece was shot, though. So Richie oh, the luck charm. I guess so. Yeah. We're getting ready for race three coming up next. Fast main track going a mile, $12,500 claiming race for fillies and mares. And no surprise, greatest love to the outside is the favorite. Four to five is very short price, though. But one thing to take note of, Linda Rice has dipped back in. This is now the third time that she's had this horse. She, she trained her twice previously and I think the reclaim angle is always intriguing for sure and, and we know how sharp Linda Rice is with picking up horses and spotting them correctly in order to be their most effective and this is also a horse that had shown the ability to be more aggressive on the front end and is getting a rider back who has ridden her that way in the past as well. She's right at her morning line at four to five. I know there's a little bit other speed in here depending on how they, uh, how aggressive they are with Valorand, but she's the outside speed of this group that's a, a compact field and she makes a lot of sense as your favorite. The one question I do have about her is that she was claimed in April. And Linda Rice will run horses back quickly. She will strike while the iron is hot. It's not like this mare had was off form or anything. And I haven't seen her in two months. That is one little question for me. Which is absolutely fair to ask because, as you mentioned with Linda Rice, she's not afraid to run her horses right. in, in spots where they can be more effective. And she's, she's more than happy to bring them back on mm -hmm. short rest. You sometimes see those one to seven days stats with her when you're looking at the program. So Which she is good at, by the she way. She is, yeah. absolutely. Uh, does very well with those short gaps in time. And that's a fair question to ask at a short price. But I think that you're looking at a horse that's mm -hmm. probably just better than this field. Yep. Yeah, she just might be uh, the class of what she faces in here. Now, Valorand and Gringotts will rematch. They faced each other in the last couple of races. They ran 2-3 back in that May 18th race behind Gypsy Janey, who would come back to win again. I know you prefer Gringotts out of that. I do. She's one that had a little bit more of a disadvantageous trip in there, having to be more out of it early on than perhaps she would have preferred. She ends up breaking okay, but then kind of taking back a little bit. And you see 
see her have like kind of a stumble after getting out of the gate. So she's further back. That's not the only spot of trouble she ends up having in this race. As you'll see her eventually have to steady a little bit out of traffic. You see her right now in between horses, whereas Valorant's getting a better trip to the outside, stalking the pace. And we're gonna see her take back a little bit in just a moment coming up where she ends up having to alter her course. And I think that when you're dealing with horses at more of a low level, as you see her having to steady right there, for them to then overcome something, this is something we talked about last night a little bit when we were talking about Canterbury, her having to make more of a wide move where this race was controlled by horses that were more forwardly placed, did not have the kind of trip that she had. I just like her returning to this level as I think she was also in over her head last time out. And the same could be said with Valorant, who was in that $20,000 try last time too. And Valorant, the seven in this race that we're watching, she made that first move after um, Redzilla, the long shot that she was dueling with on the front end, started to fade. So she kind of made the first move and Gypsy Janie was able to pick her off. You're going to see in the stretch as well as Valorant starts to get a touch leg weary and Maddie Olver, who's in town to ride, did the right thing with her. She was aggressive, but she starts to drift out a little bit as well, starting to get a touch leg weary. So both of them have some questions. Again, finishing 2-3 behind a very informed horse. And I still think that Gringotts is one of the most clever names, by the way. <laughs> um, I always mention it to Andy Serling, and he, he, he doesn't know he's anything not about a Harry Potter. Potter man, you know, which <laughs> kind of hurts my soul. But being my central banker and Gringotts, I just think it's so fun. I love it. It is. At yeah. least I'm here. It's okay. Okay, I appreciate that. See, I, I appreciate you, Sarah. Sarah will appreciate this. I'm here for your Harry Potter references. Yes. What do you feel about the new Harry Potter, by the way? I haven't seen it. I don't no, know. No, it's not out yet, but it's it's new, oh, new oh. people oh, playing no. Harry. No, that was just such a part of I our know. childhoods. We grew up with that. Exactly. Yeah. Seeing all of those movies in theaters and reading the books, too. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see new people. I know yeah. we're redoing everything now and running out of creative ideas, but I, no, I know. it's I'm not right. I know. I'm salty about it, too. All right. Anyway, we'll get back to <laughs> race three. Trade secret, first off the claim. Yeah, putting the blinkers on, this is one for uh, more of a lower percentage barn. I'd have to see a little bit more from her coming into the start. Here's Carly Hustle trying to turn things around. This is a horse I had some interest in a couple starts ago. I just don't know if she's in that kind of form now. Did go through the non runs of three condition, now facing open. Here's Gringotts by Central Banker. A great name, as we just mm -hmm. discussed. I'm looking forward to seeing what she gets with perhaps a better trip this time around. 9 to 2 right now, taking some attention. A bigger price out of those common races as well is the number four Valorant. I didn't necessarily see this much of a separation in right. price on the two of them, with Valorant being a shorter morning line at 6 to 1 and Gringotts being the 12 to 1. She can be forward. We'll see how aggressive they are with her. And Jamie Begg deputizing for Rob Atra, serving that suspension. Here's the number five, Refinity. A horse that's very consistent, but not yeah. consistently one that wins. Yeah, and just would not switch leads, or, or finally switched really late last time, but kind of lugging in, a little bit erratic. And here's your favorite, greatest love. And likely to just be the speed from the outside. We'll see if anybody else presses her early, but also probably just the class of this short field. Might just be best as Jose Lascano piloted her to her two most recent victories when we be aboard once again today as we see some nice people hanging out on uh, the apron today as we get ready for the third. Let's check in with Richie Trackside. Yeah, Keisha, you know, looking at this group, we're going to start with a big long shot in the one trade secret. Now, obviously on the racetrack, pretty is as pretty does. But I will say trade secret is extremely well turned out. She's dappling out. Her coat is great. I love the weight she's carrying. She adds blinkers, a little bit of a change. She is four for 17. And at 14 to one, I think she's going to outrun her odds. I like what I'm seeing from number one, Trade Secret. Now, in a perfect world, you like what you see physically, and you like also what you see on paper. That's what I'm getting with the five Refinity. Uh, I think she's a major contender here, and she, to me, is the best turned out horse in the race. I love the coat she's got. I love the weight she's carrying. It's a little harder to discern with um, gray horses when we talk about that rich, hydrated look to the coat, but I'm seeing it with her. And when you see it with a gray horse, I think it's even more uh, a, a, of a positive, a more of a check mark, because again, it's harder to discern. Um, problem with uh, the five Refinity, though, two wins, eight seconds. And I just really don't like when horses 
pile up so many more seconds than wins. That being said, she's my top selection. I'm hoping that she breaks through and gets win number three today. Greatest Love is obviously the horse to beat and taking all the money here. Uh, Six-time winner, a horse that has more of a winning habit. But I will say I'm not overwhelmed with her from a physical perspective. Um, she just really light frame kind of filly, not my kind of horse per se. Now that might not be out of character for her. I really don't have a, uh, you know, kind of a, a, a something to kind of compare it to, if you will. But to me, the one that stands out physically and the one that makes the most sense on paper is the five, Refinity. Hopefully she can get over her second-itis. And she's five to one right now. So we'll keep you in here for a moment, Richie, as you talked about greatest love and, and just not necessarily carrying the best weight in here. And she's always been a little bit of a smaller, handier type. And she sometimes looks very dull in her warm-ups if she doesn't run well. And we often talk about the coat and, and the appearance of a horse. And it's not just, like you said, a pretty horse that often can signify one that's maybe not doing the best or is doing well on the inside too. Yeah, well, I, I think it's a point. It isn't a matter of like, oh, we like the prettiest horse or the horse that maybe is the flashiest. The reason we talk about them from a physical perspective, how they're moving, their energy level, their coat, is give people an insight into their overall general good health. If they're doing well, if they look like they're eating well and, and carrying good weight, that kind of thing. So again, these are athletes and just like human athletes, they're going to go through periods of time that maybe they're just not quite as good as normal or sometimes they improve and they get better. So, um, you know, for me, the six greatest loves, not checking the boxes from a physical perspective, but on paper, she certainly is the horse to beat. Yeah, she is, and betting public, landing on her at even money. Richie, thank you, greatest love. And she does have some questions. You know, the more I, I and I, I picked her in here, Sarah, but the more I hear Richie's comments, and we take a look at her second place finish last time out, hear Richie's comments, and um, I actually haven't seen her in the paddock since the summer when she was a bit off form, and that's when I had kind of noted that her weight was going the wrong way. She just looked dull. And hearing Richie's comments today at a short price, I've got a few questions now. And I know you already had some reservations about the gap in time where we haven't seen her run back as quickly since returning to the Linda Rice barn. This is a day that with the race we're showing where she was sitting just off the pace setter and she's one that I think is a little bit better if she's really controlling the race. It doesn't have to be by a significant margin, but I like when they use her speed early. Jose Lascano has done that with her in the in the past, so we know that he's capable of making that happen, but I think that's how Icy Reply was able to turn the tables on her last time. I don't know, maybe with all the notes on her physical appearance, if we end up getting that same kind of performance that we saw two back from her, but I also don't really know who else there is to go to in terms mm -hmm. of a horse that might be forwardly placed, that has the recent form to go on, that doesn't have the string of seconds like Refinity, and, and Gringotts is taking a ton of money yeah. in here. She really is. And look, Greatest Love just might be better than what she faces in here. But at a short price, you can try to make a case for, for some others. Now, Refinity, she does have some positional speed. She got a big warm-up out there under Trevor McCarthy. And one thing we know about Trevor is he will be aggressive with her. Hopefully, she'll be a little bit better switching her leads. But um, I'm with Richie. She looks tremendous out of the track today. See if she can get the right kind of trip. Right, and he's one that's ridden her before. They had a second place finish last time out together as well. That was over a sloppy sealed track, and that was behind Freudian, who's a horse that's really jumped up mm -hmm. for Rob Falcone recently. I know he tried her on turf, and that experiment didn't quite work out. But I even think that she ran a pretty good race in defeat that day by setting a decent pace in there. So she's been in form facing some decent horses. I just don't love horses that don't necessarily right. win more than they finish second. Gringotts, as you mentioned, taking so much money. She's nine to two, while Valorand is seven to one. The, a big price disparity between the two of them, which is surprising. It's surprising me too. I'm, I'm kind of shocked to see that there's such a big gap between mm -hmm. these two horses because I think you could make the argument for either one out of that common race two back that they exit. I went one way, which is where the uh, the money is going, but. I don't think that you should be overlooking Valorant at 7-1 to one in here. And Gringotts really taking a lot of money off that 12-1 to one morning line to be kind of vying for that second, third choice spot mm -hmm. behind this favorite. So 
I don't know if this is going to be kind of a they knew or a silly kind of money coming in. <laughs> There's the number one trade secret. The biggest price on the board who did get some nice notes from Richie as far as her warm up and how she was appearing in the preliminaries. She was pretty far back in that common race up behind Valorant and Gringotts. But the blinkers do go on. We'll see if that helps her because she used to show speed. And if they can get some of that back, especially breaking from the rail, she could perhaps upset this field with those positive uh, notes about her appearance. This is just not the winningest group of mm -hmm. connections. And she's faced a lot of these foes in the past and not really been competitive with them. So we'd have to see something different from her than what she's been showing lately. And she's a big, big price if you do like her as we have a middle pick four kicking off here in the third race as well with this nine race card. Fortify favorite on greatest love to the outside as they move towards the starting gate. And we'll see who can get the right kind of trip in here. You and I were touching on this last night as well and covering Canterbury. Sometimes when you have horses at the lowest level, we often look for the ones with the most speed because you don't necessarily trust maybe a lot of them in this group to pass horses late. Exactly. And, and that's something that is not that common at these lower levels of seeing horses that want to go by other horses that takes more effort than being alone in front early. And you don't have the most competitive type of groups in terms of this lower level when you're talking about $12,500 claiming horses. But I think even when you have races like this where everybody's spotted at these lower levels, if they're spotted correctly, they can be more mm -hmm. exciting betting races. And especially in more of a compact field, it's more of a rider's race as well. It is. Who gets the right kind of trip and uh, the, the claiming horses, the backbone of the sport as well. And it's all about finding the right spot for them. An old racing adage, keep yourself in the best of company and keep your horses in the worst of company. <laughs> <laughs> Three to five on Greatest Love as they load in for the third race. Johnny I standing by. And Greatest Love. All set for Belmont's third. And uh, they're off. Greatest Love came away well from the outside. Uh, Valorand now moves up at the rail. It's trade secret. So the three of them are vying for the early lead. That is the gray. Raffinity, who's right alongside of Gringotts. And Carly Hustle trails the field in sixth as they race up the back stretch. In between horses is Valorand. On the outside is Greatest Love, and Trade Secret is down at the rail. Valorand leads now by a half length. The odds on favorite, Greatest Love, in second, and Trade Secret is next in third, followed by Raffinity and Gringotts with Carly Hustle at the back. First quarter was running 23 and 4 fifth seconds. It's Valorand leading here by a half length. Greatest Love on the outside, in second by a length and a half, Trade Secret next in third. It is Valorand and Greatest Love, and now they're stride for stride through a half and 47 and three. They've opened up two and a half length on Trade Secret in third. Then comes Gringotts and Raffinity, and for the back is Carly Hustle. The battle up front continues. Valorand on the inside and Greatest Love on the outside. Nothing between them as they come for the quarter pole. Gringotts has now advanced into third. Then Raffinity. Trade Secret is back running in fifth. Three quarters in one, 12 and three. Greatest Love on the outside and Valorand on the inside and Greatest Love has now taken the lead. Valorand back running in second with Gringotts next in third. It is Greatest Love and Jose Lascano and they're inching clear now in front by two and a half, now by three lengths and it will be Greatest Love at odds of three to five. Valorand held second, Gringotts was third. Greatest love. Maybe she had some questions to answer, but as we talked about, she was just too good against this group. You can see, Sarah, that Jose Lascano was always cruising with this mare. A very confident ride by him to allow Valorant to go establish that early lead, not getting worried about that and sitting just off of that one and then just being the best horse in the race ultimately. And as you mentioned, you're crushing the card so far. <laughs> I think I had two to five, now three to five, two to one. Uh, yeah, sharpest attack. Uh, the greatest love off the claim again. 
uh, the third time Linda Rice has dipped in to train this horse. So obviously saw something with her and it immediately paid off. 6-4-3, a photo for four here. But uh, the number four, Valerie Ann Mediolver did everything right. She went to the front when it was clear that Jose was not going to try and send right away with greatest love and choose just second best. But uh, they put in a little bit of a duel there and coming into the top of the stretch. I think it was a good decision. We were talking about it as the race was being run to just go and right. establish that lead and, and be the one that is setting the pace instead of hanging out in between those two horses. I think she made the right decision, just got beat by a better horse. As those two horses coming out of the common race beats Gringotts and Valoran, they run 2-3 yet again. Uh, so that's all you have to do with the favorite. When we come back, we'll talk about taking care of our equine athletes and the importance of aftercare here on display. Some of the things that retired racehorses can do after their racing days are over. Introducing a stallion, as top class as they come. In 22 career starts, he won or placed in 12 graded stakes, competing in 15 grade ones, earning over $1.7 million. His undisputed speed is evidenced by seven 100 plus fire speed figures, a three time grade one winner, Raging. We're back on America's Day at the races as our FS2 coverage continues. Race three in the books at beautiful Belmont Park in greatest love. I would imagine Linda Rice has some love for this mare. She's been quite good to the barn with winning moves stable, dipping back in for the reclaim, and she rewards them with a victory. She does. It was just too much for a field like this. We know how sharp Linda Rice is with those claiming horses. She spots them well. Going back in for a third time, as you mentioned, for this one really speaks to them wanting to be involved with this horse. She rewards them with another win today and a pretty patient, confident ride by Jose Lascano as well. Yeah, you could see it just kind of the difference with the two horses that were on the lead. As Valorand was forward with Maddie Olver, she started really asking and shaking the reins at her mount, whereas Jose Lascano hadn't even moved yet on greatest love. And you could see he just had much more horse underneath of him. He was sitting very chilly coming into the stretch. He knew what he had available to him when he asked. $3.50 winner, three to five favorite, gets the job done, six, four, three in the third at Belmont Park. We will be back in the turf for race four. Starter allowance for fillies and mares going six furlongs on the inner. Significant scratch, especially as far as how the betting was going to take place with Bella Principessa coming out. That means act of Congress, now your favorite at eight to five. She's one that if you go by her last race, of course, but where did that effort come from and can she replicate it going forward? It was a very different number and effort than we've seen from her in the past, but perhaps this is the worst. It's just improved as she's matured. 
We'll see if she can make it two in a row. Act of Congress, more on that fourth race in a moment. But as we mentioned before the break, we take so seriously looking after our equine athletes after their racing days are over. Here in New York, we have the wonderful Take Two and Take the Lead programs that do exactly that and also serve as a liaison between the horsemen and those wanting to find a spot for their retired racehorses. A racing career could be two, three, four years, five years at the most. They live to 20. The take the lead segment of the initiative is what we, what I do, okay? And we, we basically transition racehorses from the racetrack into aftercare facilities. We'll get the process started on paper, we'll take some videos, we'll gather up all the medical information, and then set up a profile, and then we'll contact the aftercare facilities. We have a wave of horses that leave the grounds, and there's five in the on-deck circle and four in the hole, if you use a baseball analogy. Nice looking little filly. She's got a little bit of a tendon issue that should heal up in about 90 days. One of our older horses, Saul the Freud, who actually, I trained, everybody trained him. He was a New York bred. He's been through up and down the claiming ranks and always put in a great effort. He's a candidate for war horse now. And I said, what a perfect horse, because he was a war horse. He's a perfect type to help with our military veterans with PTSD. Thoroughbreds already had this innate ability to learn new things, starting gait. Big track, little track, jog the wrong way, go the right way. You're gonna learn something new. They already know, they're already processed for that. Take two part of our initiative is a hunter and jumper thoroughbreds only league, if you will. And to be able to see what these horses can do once they're rehabilitated and retrained and adopted out and to see them in the take two competitions doing jumps or dressage or a polo pony. Riders are doing handstands and backflips off. I mean, this is really, really cool. What we've tried to put forth and to get through to all the horsemen, I'm a horse, you know, I've been training horses since 1988 on my own. Call us one race early, call us one workout early, okay? If you think something's going, if, if you think something's going awry, and there's a, there's a chance that your horse may have, have an issue in the future, call us before that. Instead of you know, trying to get one more race or one more workout or something like that, we can expedite this, this process within a week and get that horse into, into an aftercare situation. Take two, take the lead, such important programs, and they serve a, such a, a special place, especially here in New York. Sarah uh, Rick Schausberg, who's sometimes on the air with us, he's a man of many talents, a trainer for many years. He and the team do such a wonderful job in making sure that aftercare stays a big part of the forefront and really do things right here in New York. Right, and, and it's so great to be in a state that really focuses on aftercare so much. and. Of course, if you hit some of those bigger scores, give a little bit of your money over to those horses that are the reason why we have the jobs that we do, are the reason why we have the entertainment that we do, and, and get to really focus on racing for, I mean, it's really part of my whole life right now. <laughs> yeah, just one horse can take so many people on a ride with them, and it's so important to make sure that they have uh, a soft landing after their racing days are done. As we bring in Richie to this conversation, Richie, I know that aftercare is such a big piece of, of your heart as well as we've talked about before. Horses have really given us everything. A a absolutely, Acacia, and it's incumbent upon all of us within this industry, all of us that derive our living directly or indirectly because of these horses, to make sure that we take care of them, that we're responsible for them after their racing careers are done. Like Rick said, horses might run two, three, four, five years max. Still got a lot of life to live after that. I've got a horse on my farm that I rode from Michael Hushin 19 years ago. I won a race on him at Aqueduct. His name is Phone in the Money. Uh, his farm name's Cisco. Uh, and he's 23 years old and he couldn't be happier. He's got his back paddock and his best friend is a 33 year old mare that I have that doesn't have teeth anymore. But we feed her mashes and she's still doing well and hanging in there. Um, and at the end of it, 
we love horses. I know I love horses first, racing second. I love both, but horses were the uh, first and only true love and brought me to all the good things in my life. So uh, very fortunate. And also Rick talked about just how versatile thoroughbreds are and the things that they can do. There's no greater generosity of spirit than what is displayed by a thoroughbred. I couldn't agree more, Richie. They truly are incredible animals. And it uh, sounds like if you want to come back in your next life, you want to do so at the Migliori <laughs> Farm with a mare living to the age of 33. But Richie talked about the versatility, Sarah, of thoroughbreds. And uh, we have a, a, a horse that is a graduate of our program, Racing for Home. Uh, if not now, his bar name is Teddy, and he's now my husband's stable pony. So they can come back to the racetrack. They can uh, be ponies on the track. They can go to show horses, therapeutic riding programs. So many things that they can do. And so many people here are so involved in aftercare as well with Richie talking about the horses on his property. And I know you and your mom are so involved in aftercare. I got to meet your mom over for Belmont Stakes <laughs> uh, Day, which is very exciting. It's just everyone's getting so involved with all these horses, which is wonderful to see because without the race horses, there is no racing. So we have to take such good care of them in their lives after the racetrack. And it's great to see how involved everyone here is in making sure that that happens. They've given us a lot. And as Sarah said, if you hit a big score, maybe consider giving a little bit back to your favorite aftercare organization. We're getting ready for race four coming up next. Six furlongs on the inner turf from the starter allowance. Eight to five now on Act of Congress. This filly, she ran an 80 by her speed figure last time out, wiring the field at Pimlico. Are they question? Did she do it again? And I guess we're going to find out, but you're going to find out at a very short price right now with a couple of key scratches in here. We'll kick off the pick six. We'll see if she really has taken a big step forward as a four-year-old. We'll talk a bit more about her chances and the rest of the field. Race four for Belmont coming up after this. Global campaign by two and global campaign will win the grade one Woodward. It is global campaign holding on to the lead. Global campaign, what the Peter Pan. When it comes to horse racing, you can never have too much information. With Twin Spires, you can place your bets with confidence. Whether you use handicapping insights, like our Brisnet speed ratings, prime power and past performances, the guidance of our experts' top picks, or just choose a name that catches your eye. Yes! No matter how you pick your horse, bet with Twin Spires. Start earning your $200 sign-up bonus when you sign up with offer code GET200. The level of racing that he's achieved is extremely rare. Anybody who's witnessed a Tolly running sees a level of ability that doesn't come along that often. Matoli's a monster! Matoli wins the sprint! Oh, what a horse he is! Matoli, he did it again! Wins the mid-mile! The only thing to be better than one Matoli is a few Matolis. The mighty Matoli, who won the Fargo by three and a half lengths. The new stakes record. There's a big, bold, beautiful world waiting to be explored by you and your friends, of course. But not just any friends, the best of friends. The kind of friends who let you do you. Because in this world, it's positive vibes only. And when you get in the zone here, you stay a while. These aren't just good times, they're the best of times. And your time is now. So come explore. Resorts World. The centerpiece of the paddock is the Japanese white pine tree, which was present long before Belmont Park opened its doors in 1905. An image of the tree has been incorporated in the track's logo since the grandstand reopened in 1968. No one knows exactly how old the tree is, but according to historical documents, the white pine was planted around 1828. Located adjacent to the Secretariat statue, many of the tree's limbs are nearly 25 feet long. The white pine was actually supposed to be removed when Belmont was remodeled in the 1960s. The white pine serves as a source of shade and is a key component in the daily paddock ritual for fans, trainers, owners, and jockeys 
just as it has for well over 100 years. The iconic and historic white pine in the Belmont paddock, when you think about the great horses that have walked beneath that tree throughout the history of this place. And there's so much history overall with Belmont Park. And I like mentioning how there was a time when maybe this tree would have been taken down. Everybody said, nope, we're keeping it. And <laughs> as we go through so many renovations and so many changes as things grow and develop over time, it's nice to see those things that do stay the same as well as part of the history of Belmont Park. I love on a really hot day, getting to sit on one of those benches underneath the white pine in the paddock. And it really is a, a huge tree too. It takes up a lot of space there in the paddock, in the Belmont paddock. It's even on our logo here at Belmont Park. It's on yeah. the logo for it. It's yeah. embedded in the history of Belmont Park forever. <laughs> piece of the fabric. Eight to five on the outside on the number nine Act of Congress. She wired the field impressively over at Pimlico and non-weeders of two condition. It was the first start of her four-year-old season. Now the question is, can she do it again? And stepping up, she'll face a little bit tougher competition than what she found last time out. Right, and that was for a $40,000 claiming tag. Her first three numbers are just nothing like that. And they were also going a little bit further, going six and seven furlongs. Is she just an improved four-year-old? Maybe the five furlong distance really suit her as being that sharper turf sprint. There's a couple of questions coming in here, but of course, if she replicates that last performance, betters are thinking she's going to be very tough. I do as well. I just want to take a small shot against with someone that's a slightly better price, though not by much. She's eight to five. You'll get a good price on some others in the field if you like them. For more, let's get a paddock report from Richie. Hey guys, I'm just going to talk about one horse here. Jockeys are out getting ready to mount up. And uh, the four horse, Boss of All, who's a good price. Uh, you know, this really got to the turf finally. They tried to get her on turf early in her career. It rained off. And I just love what I'm seeing from her. I feel like she took a step forward physically from her first start uh, this year. She hadn't run since June of last year. Uh, I think she's fitter, she's tighter, she comes off a nice effort. And I think there's going to be even a, a, a big step forward from her here. She's owned and bred by Edition Farm. Uh, and that's Vivian Malloy. Vivian Malloy, just you know, a longtime supporter of the New York Breeding Program, uh, has a beautiful farm not far from me. Uh, and actually, I rode this horse's Grand Am mine tonight. I rode Mrs. Malloy's first stakes winner in Cliffy way back in 1989. And I love what I'm seeing from uh, Boss of All here in the paddock, just making the nicest impression. She's a nice price, too. It's 7-1, to one, Richie. Thank you. And, uh, Sarah, how about the hunchback? Because Mrs. Malloy came by and knocked on the window and waved <laughs> at us up here. So I think that could be the hunchback. Is, wasn't it always, you know, the first person you see when you walk into yes. the racetrack? <laughs> what about the first person that says hi to you on the set? Well, the bugs yeah. and the birds don't count. So right, she yes. Certainly. There's plenty of pigeons <laughs> to choose from up here. But we love to see Vivian Malloy at the races. And Linda Rice looking to go back-to-back -back mm -hmm. as well, winning the last race. But I'm glad to be uh, back tied on with you in terms of our top selections because you've been having a good day so far, <laughs> short prices albeit, but uh, you've been rocking the card to get things started. Thank you. Well, boss of all, there's the horse that Richie has some interest in, Kendra Carmouche getting a leg up, and she is a good looking filly. Uh, so we both liked the number eight Bustin' Bullet in here. She's seven to two right now. A filly that I think will appreciate a little bit less distance, and what we talked about with her last race is that you kind of have to time her run. She doesn't have much of a turn of foot for one of those kind of closing sprinters to use the European phrase you, you have to time it well and it almost was like she was forced to not make it at the time that would have been preferable to her exactly there was a pace setter in that race that she comes out of that was backing up who we're going to see again today in the number one Lola flow she was more forwardly placed, but had to pause, wait for room to become available. And by that time, other horses had just gotten started ahead of her. So I think being able to get out in the clear sooner and, and time that run a little bit more effectively. She does get a rider change to Dylan Davis as well, drawing a little bit more to the outside too, even though th some scratches move everybody in. I just think that she could improve off of that effort last time out. 
Yeah, Dylan Davis going to be aboard as he's ridden her before, too, and against some tougher competition. She did run quite well in November against tougher company in New York, but first level allowance field coming back in the starter allowance, just missed two starts back. And it seemed like the betting public kind of clued into that as well as she's 72, co-72 right now with the seven brisky frolic. The other one for Linda Rice and the one taking more money, this one off the claim, and she does have some speed. She does, and, and this is a horse, too, that I would have liked maybe a little bit more had this race come off the mm -hmm. turf as she has a little bit more dirt form to go on. Uh, we'll see what she can do stepping up to the starter allowance level, but certainly one to consider, especially with some of those scratches, too. Nine to five still on your favorite, the number nine act of Congress, who was impressive at Pimlico. Can she repeat that effort? And the reason we say that is because I know that it was her first start back as a three-year-old, but she wasn't even running anything close to that as a three-year-old last year. Let's meet the rest of the field. Starting off with a horse that has speed. Here's Lola Flo. And things get much simpler for her as she'll be breaking from the rail in here. She gets a slight cut back in distance, too. And she was very far outside in post-12 last time out. Was also her first start off a layoff for almost a year. Yeah, she has a bit of a runoff. So let's <laughs> see if the six furlongs helps her. Here's Western Lane. I thought a little intriguing cutting back. I'd agree. She's one also coming off the second effort off of brief freshening. Like you mentioned, the, the slight cut back in distance. She has run well on dirt, too. There's Boss of All, got some great notes from Richie back in the paddock. She did. This is one that is now getting to try this surface again after winning in her turf debut. There were turf intentions for her early mm -hmm. on in her career, too. And she does have that proverbial turf hoof we talk about, like a pancake. There's <laughs> the number six, try it again, trying the turf again. And it's been a long time since we've seen her on this surface. She did debut in a five and a half furlong turf sprint at Saratoga, has been all dirt since then. Brisky Frolic, the other for Linda Rice. And this one, first off the claim for Linda from the Mike Maker Barn. Linda has amazing stats first off the claim, but perhaps a little bit less so on turf than dirt. Seven to two right now on that one. Here is four to one on Bustin' Bullet. The horse that we both have some interest in that we've mentioned, perhaps getting a bit more of a well-timed run in this race than she had in her last start. And your favorite eight to five on Act of Congress. Short price for a horse that has some questions to answer, but if you're just betting her off her last race, I completely get it. Take a look at her last race, and she wired the field. She was always going best. It was off of a layoff. It was also going five furlongs, and it was a $40,000 claiming race, and she's not claimed. She's eligible to come back here in this type of field in the starter allowance, so things actually worked out quite well for Bruce Levine to run her in this spot. And the second-place finisher, Gift of Gab, Sarah, did come back to win in her subsequent start. So she kind of flattered this effort, if nothing else. She did. That's a fair point to make as far as what kind of figure are we going to see from this horse moving forward. You like to see the horses that finish behind them or in, in other cases ahead of them at least return with something mm -hmm. similar to show if that race was an anomaly to their careers or if everything holds up. I just think that she might face a little bit more pace pressure too, especially with the number one horse, Lola Flo, and that this might be a tougher field than she was facing over at Pimlico. Yeah, so it faces a bit more salty competition in here today. She's nine to five at the moment. Uh, boss of all, wow, she went down in price. She's now nine to two. Uh, I think after that paddock report from Richie, she's turning some heads. <laughs> Taking a bit of attention as well as the number two Western Lane. She was 12 to one on the morning line. I, I didn't pick her when doing Talking Horses as far as my top, my top four selections, but I just kind of kept going back to her because I feel like last time she ran like a horse that would appreciate less distance. I'd agree. And the second place finisher of her last start did return to win Peg's AK Girl and improved a little bit in terms of her buyer speed figure. I really, really liked her if this race came off the turf when we're doing our selections ahead of time. You have to plan for multiple circumstances. Getting back onto the surface, though, that she is running on today, she makes some sense. I just preferred a couple of others and higher placings than her. I know we were both impacted by some scratches in this race, but one that I think is a fair price if you like her right now, as uh, everybody else is perhaps maybe a little bit too short or taking money off of where their morning lines were with those scratches as well. Nine to five on Active Congress. So for more, let's go to Richie Trackside.
Yeah, guys, looking at horses warming up on the racetrack, uh, my opinion about the four, boss of all, was just strengthened. I loved her in the paddock, and I loved her even more seeing her on the racetrack. I just think that uh, the race last time did her a lot of good from a fitness standpoint. I think that uh, she was prepared last time, but I think she's better today. Uh, and I think just getting, uh, you know, to run back in, you know, fairly close proximity, you keep Kendrick Carmers. I think there's a lot to like here, and five to one is a very fair price to me. I'm all about the four, Boss of All. The other Linda Rice, the seven, Brisky Frolic. Now, it's interesting, Boss of All is a homebred. Brisky Frolic, acclaim, all different ways to acquire horses. Linda's got a very well-balanced barn of all types of horses. Um, made a great impression. I love the way she framed up under Jose Lascano. Didn't stand out as much in the paddock to me as she did on the racetrack. And I, I just really think that both Linda Rice's horses are very well meant here. The outside are snack nine act of Congress, your favorite. Big effort last time. I'm just not overwhelmed with it from a physical uh, perspective. It is a bit humid today, you know, not terribly warm, but the humidity. And maybe she just got a little bit hotter on the neck than I would have liked to have seen considering the weather you know that i do appreciate that horses need to sweat on warm days but it's not that warm for as warm as she got in my estimation but her last race was huge and if she runs that back obviously she's going to be tough to beat repeat it richie thank you she's always been a high energy type and sometimes those they kind of get themselves into a little bit of a lather before the race even begins and um you know you want to see some intensity sarah for a sprinter especially one that has early speed you just don't want them to run their race before the actual race begins right it's something everybody here focuses on so much when they're analyzing these horses from a physical perspective in the paddock is just what is normal for them? Right. And I think that that's such an important point that you all make so effectively because you could see something that might appear a little bit as a negative for others, but maybe that's just who they are. And if you don't see that, then it might be more of a negative, even though you'd expect it to be um, the other way around. So I think Richie makes a lot of great points about this one, and you do as well, wanting to see some sort of energy, some <laughs> sort of, you know, clued in that we're about to run a race here, especially for these shorter distances on the grass, but you don't want to get them too worked up and excited. Yeah, the, the most rewarding feeling when you take notes on horses is if you write that like you'd love to see, for instance, you'd love to see this horse try the turf in the future. You'd love to see this horse go long. And then the next time they're entered in that type of condition, you're like, oh, this trainer <laughs> had the same thought that I did. I'm in good company. You yes. know, it doesn't always work out, but it, it's, it's, it's doing rewarding. something right. Exactly. It's mm -hmm. rewarding to see that sometimes and it's rewarding if, if they do actually uh, prove to be effective with that kind of change that they suggested they might want physically. So. I completely agree. And in, in, uh, it's definitely an inexact science, <laughs> but you try to trust your gut more than anything when looking at horses. And like you said, what is typical of them is often the most important as well. Taking a lot of attention, by the way, is the number four, boss of all. Four to one now, two to one drifting up a little bit on the number nine, Act of Congress, your favorite, as the board gets to be a little bit more even as they approach the gate to kick off today's pick six. Perhaps uh, the betting public having some of those similar questions and thoughts uh, that we do about the mm -hmm. favorite as she floats up a little bit and, and now clicking down to seven to two for the number four boss of all as Linda Rice looks to win uh, the second race on the card for her, just winning with greatest love as they are behind the gate right now. But I mean, this is a very interesting race. I think there's a lot of different directions you could go in. And a lot will depend on that first horse that's going in there, Lola Flo. We know that she likes to run off a bit and can be a bit tough to handle with Apprentice Jamie Torres in the saddle. I would imagine Lynn Cash just wants her to go <laughs> from the inside. How will that impact your favorite who also has early speed? Race four, pick six, kicking off here from Belmont Park. Here's John and Brielle with the call. Waiting for Brisky Frolic, Bustin' Bullet, and Act of Congress. They're in the gate. And they're off. Act of Congress with a good start from the extreme outside. Try it again is in between horses. Lola Flo moves up now down at the rail. And on the outside is Bustin Bullet up the back stretch. Act of Congress is the leader. Lola Flo next in second. Then it's the duo of Try It Again and Bustin Bullet. They're right together third and fourth. Two lengths to the pair 
of Brisky Frolic and Boss of All, and trailing the field is Western Lane in seventh. It's Act of Congress who leads here by a length, a quarter, 21 and four-fifths seconds. Bustin' Bullet now takes second. Lola Flo down on the inside in third. Then comes Brisky Frolic next in fourth. Try It Again has retreated on the inside of Boss of All. The trailer is Western Lane. The leader is Act of Congress, who heads for home with a two-length lead. Ran the half mile in 44 and two-fifth seconds. Act of Congress under a hand right here. Now leads by three. Bustin' Bullet giving chase in second. Boss of All has moved up on the outside along with Brisky Frolic. It is Act of Congress who has the lead as they come on for the finish. And Act of Congress has done it. The others got closer as the wire came. But Act of Congress with a front-running score. And the final time, 1 minute 8 and 2 fifth seconds. Well, it looks like this filly has just come back better and stronger as a four-year-old. Act of Congress able to take them gate to wire yet again. Now two for two in this season. Those questions have been answered about whether she has improved as a four-year-old, clearly able to set some fast fractions. We didn't see Lola Flo press her as early as maybe we thought she was going to, but maybe she just didn't have the capability to do so as she was yeah. very fast off the blocks in here. I don't know that she necessarily wants to go any further than the six furlong distance as she was stretching out just a furlong more from five to six, but you could tell in the very end maybe felt it a little bit. Yeah, blanket finish for second. I I think it might have been the two Western Lane who was closing well under jockey Katie Davis, but the number nine act of Congress with Jose Ortiz, she got to the front as Lola Flo, as you mentioned, was not really aggressively pushed forward, but typically she's one that kind of runs off and she didn't have that at the start either, whereas act of Congress very quick right at the start and she was able to hold on, goes off at two to one. Favorites continue. Uh, I think Easter did not actually go off as the favorite, but still a shorter price. The rest, all favorites so far on the card. Yes. Formful <laughs> day at Belmont Park. We'll see if we can get you some prices a little bit later on. But race four, wire to wire for Act of Congress. We'll bring you prices and reactions in a moment. Stay with us on America's Day at the Races. Good Magic's going to win his first race, and he's going to do it in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Here's Mage coming strongly down the outside. Angel and Empire is putting in his run, and there's one for long to run. Two bills on the inside, trying to hold on Mage. Mage has taken the lead here as they come into the final 16, and it is going to be Mage to win the Kentucky Derby. The Classic Sire. We're back on America's Day at the Races, brought to you by America's Best Racing. For the love of the race, visit americasbestracing.net today. Act of Congress, she has come back strong as a four-year-old, now two for two. She wins this race wire to wire for trainer Bruce Levine, who's standing by with Richie. Thanks, Acacia. Bruce, Act of Congress 
is fast. She made the lead as easy as horse can make it sprinting on the turf. You know, when you come off them 5 eight races, it's like stretching one out to a route going six here. So I knew she was going to, and she's quick. She did uh, 21-44 here last year. So, I mean, I knew she's very, very fast. Now, Bruce, you sent her down to Maryland. She won for a claiming tag, made her eligible for the starter. But the way she ran today, five and a half in Saratoga, she may get that New York bread condition. Oh, I definitely think so. She's going to love that five and a half. It'll be, it'll be a turn back in distance. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I'm not worried about it. She's quick. Bruce, one thing I noticed, she, she got a bit hot in the paddock, and I, I thought it continued to get warm in the, in the post parade. And I, I, it made me a bit concerned about that. Is that usual for her? No, it made me nervous. When we ran it down in Maryland, she was okay. And the, uh, the other times we ran it, she was good. So I just have to work on her in the paddock a little bit in school. All right, well, we'll be looking for her up in Saratoga. Bruce Levine, a guy who's been winning races around here for as long as I can remember. And he's had a good meet, too, with some nice winners. Richie, thank you, Act of Congress. $6.20 winner with the victory, and it was Western Lane over Boss of All to round out the trifecta. And Richie's right. I mean, she's eligible still for all of her New York Fred conditions. And the nice thing about having a New York Fred is you can run in the first level allowance, second level, and then go to open company. So you really have a lot of opportunities with a New York Fred. There's so many spots to run her in. I really like how they talked about the difference in the turf courses, too, going from the six furlongs here at Belmont on that cutback to the five and a half <laughs> at Saratoga. And Saratoga turf has such tighter turns, yes. too, as well, which with the speed that she displayed probably won't be a problem. Yeah, she'll probably be dangerous up there at the spa this summer. We have two-year-olds coming up next, and I'm going to step away. I'll be back reporting a little bit later on with Lafitte Pinkai coming up on the desk to take you the rest of the way. Fun sharing the desk with you, as always, Sarah. We spent a lot of time together. We did. <laughs> well, Mike Rapoli, keeping it all in the family. We know he loves to bring all of the family members out to the races and celebrate it with those that mean the most to him. He has a two-year-old noted coming up in the next race. Grade one winner and track record setter, Lee. Like their sire, his runners have excelled on both dirt and turf, including these standout performers. Poppy Flowers putting in a late burst here. They come for the finish. Here is Nagarok who takes off. Nagarok will roll. Nagarok. Out of a Galileo mare, this dual surface star has sired juvenile stakes winners on both dirt and turf. Lee standing at Claiborne Farm. Experience the adrenaline pumping, suspense filled action of the Sport of Kings no matter where you are with Naira Vets. It's fast, easy, and secure. Download the app today and start winning with our lucrative weekly promotions, thrilling handicapping contests, and a one-of-a-kind VIP rewards program. Don't just watch horse racing, be a part of the action with Naira Vets. It will be good night to win it by a length and a half. It is all shotgun hottie as she pleases. Disarm draws even. Disarm takes from that win. But Echo Zulu opens up by two, now by three. Echo Zulu looking good. Geared down to win it by four. Racetrack Television Network brings you every race, every race. from every track, every track, on every screen, every, screen. every day. Every day. With monthly packages starting as low as $5, RTN gives you great value and access to more live HD streaming and race replays than anyone. Visit RTN.TV today to sign up and watch on almost any device, including Roku and Amazon Fire. RTN has packages that start at $5 per month. The industry has a few things that we have to take care of better, and one was the uh, aftercare of the horses. If we did nothing, these horses would end up in very bad places. Go back to where we were years and years and decades ago when it was just considered de rigueur that you could just send these horses to slaughter. It's different than any other program that was put into place. I remember that meeting at Belmont Park. It was a dream. 
It is a first line of defense for those who are concerned about what happens to the equine athlete after he's done racing. Without the TAA to provide that oversight, there would be a big void in terms of making sure that we have this ongoing safe environment for our off the track racehorses. Uh, we started with some 21 organizations across the country and now we're up to over 82 facilities throughout the country and uh, giving away almost just under $25 million. It's the one shining accomplishment that we have that we can point to to say we really do love our horses. Just the word aftercare has become part of the discussion has been part of the vernacular in a way that it was not when I started this position uh, around the start of 2013. It's a daunting task that the TAA and its accredited organizations have taken on. And that's why the industry itself has got to fund it. Every, every time I turn around across the country, uh, you know, the, the TAA staff is there and they're, they're, they're shaking hands and they're, they're kissing babies and they're doing the blocking and tackling, right, that needs to be done. We have a social responsibility to make sure that thoroughbred aftercare is also number one on the list. Few horses have stood in esteemed stall number one at Claiborne Farm, and all of them champions, legends of the sport. And now the stretching come, on bridle takes command. Who influenced the generations that followed. Today, stall number one belongs to Run Happy, who is looking to create champions in the generations to come. Bold ruler, secretariat, easy goer, unbridled, and then Run Happy. Each of those horses were North American champions at one point uh, in their career. All in line, and they're off. Secretariat by seven. Secretariat eight length. Oh, Pente just hand by the climb of the wire. He takes this to Paris by two and a half lengths. You got to be basically be a champion to, to uh, live in that stall, and uh, certainly Run Happy was. Run Happy's got him. Run Happy has won the sprint. Whoever's out to Run Happy will have to make sure he was a champion as well. Hopefully, I'm happy we'll be able to keep his name on the door and add to the list of uh, great horses that live in that stall. Experience the adrenaline pumping, suspense filled action of the Sport of Kings no matter where you are with Naira Vets. It's fast, easy, and secure. Download the app today and start winning with our lucrative weekly promotions, thrilling handicapping contests and a one-of-a-kind VIP rewards program. Don't just watch horse racing, be a part of the action with Naira Vets. Great to have you with us at Belmont Park. America's Day at the Races, four down, five left on the Thursday program at Big Sandy. Welcome everyone alongside Sarah El Badwi. I'm Lafitte Pinkai. Sarah, the first time we've had an opportunity to do this together. Uh, really looking forward to the next 20 minutes. <laughs> 20 minutes we get to spend together today. A short but hopefully sweet time that we have to go over this two-year-old race coming up. Looking forward to working with you. Of course, we match a little bit, so we got that coordinated. going on. Coordinated. Sarah Planned. promised the best 20 minutes in the history of horse racing <laughs> television. And, and it, started, it starts with the two-year-olds. <laughs> Cue the animation spent through of two-year-old. Race of the day, five-eighths of a mile on a firm turf course. Start of the late pick five and the field. Current two-to-one choice, culprit two-to-one. Uh, take a look at number three, Noted. That's Team Forte, trained by Todd Pletcher, ridden by Rad Ortiz, owned by Mike Rapoli. Over the last 10 to 15 years, we've become so accustomed to seeing these colors out on the racetrack, that blue and orange of Mike Rapoli. It's the same as the New York Mets, no coincidence. He is a Queens native. New York through and through, Mike Rapoli, but as much as he loves the New York Mets at first, at his heart, he's a family man. Growing up in Queens, uh, you know, we fell in love with horse racing and we would either go to Aqueduct or Belmont. 
I probably didn't go to Saratoga until my mid-20s because none of my friends had a car that could drive that far. You know, it was very special just uh, just going to the races. You know, we really enjoyed it. And, you know, if we weren't going to the track, we were going to the OTB on Grand Avenue, which is in uh, Mid Middle Ridge in Maspeth, Queens. And, uh, you know, listen, I just fell in love with the horses running down the stretch at 40 miles an hour. Uh, I fell in love with handicapping. I fell in love with winning. You know, I knew one day if I was blessed to be able to afford a horse, I would invest. And now we have 250 horses. Seeing the excitement that it does for my family and spending that special time together, like, it's just so special. You know, Maria's been my biggest supporter. She loves the family aspect and, you know, and my daughter got into it. You know, she's changed my life for so many reasons. She's made winning more fun, but what she's really done is lessen the blow of losing. When she, you know, when you come in second in a tough race and she gives you a kiss and says, I love you, dad. You know, having a daughter who's as competitive as me, as intense as me and as passionate as me, and when you see her reaction, you know, for a seven-year-old, she knows what place we're in. She knows if we have a chance, she knows if we lose, and if she knows that if we're gonna catch somebody at the wire, and um, just watching it. So please be joined by Mike Rapoli and Joya Rapoli as well. And Joya, who's your top pick? Who's gonna win, Groupie or, or Dreamlike? Uh, both. both. Both, it's gonna be dead a dead heat, heat Greg. Dead. I love the sport, I have a passion. Um, I love the people in the sport. I love the horses, but I love the people in the backstretch. I love uh, going to Todd's barn and watching all these different cultures interact, uh, watching these horses get taken care of. Yeah, I mean, Todd is, you know, listen, we, um, everybody thinks on the surface we're so different. You know, he's a little bit more stoic. I'm a little bit more passionate. I'm extremely intense outside. He's intense inside. But you know, we really have a great balance. We went from uh, trainer-owner relationship to uh, friend relationship to now to family. You know, I joke that it's gotten so bad that we have such a good relationship that no matter how bad he does for me, I can't fire him. You know, Rapoli Stable is my own little pro sports team. And I get to share it with so many friends and family. And you know, the energy at the track, you know, whether it's the Belmont Stakes or Saratoga or Churchill or Keeneland or Gulfstream, it just makes it really, really special. Mike Rapoli, you get the sense who he celebrates with as important as winning itself. Uh, taken aback with how many horses he actually owns, 250, Sarah. And yes, he has owned some big horses, big moments. Look at that all-star lineup. It's such an impressive list of horses that he's been able to be a part of. Forte, of course, coming to mind is, is the recent one that we're seeing on track right now. Just ran second in the Belmont Stakes, but something he talks about in that feature is passion. And you can feel it. Whenever you're around Mike Rapoli, you know how important this is to him and how excited and enthusiastic he is about his horses. It wears his heart on his sleeve, Mike Rapoli. And who knows, when we won that feature next year, maybe the name noted, that cult will be on that list as we say hello to Richie Migliori standing by with the Spendthrift two-year-old race of the day, Paddock Report. Hey, Richie. Hey, Lafitte. Um, I tell you what, really well-mannered group so far. Everybody's really handled themselves very professionally. They all saddled well. Uh, it's nice when you see two-year-olds this well-prepared that they've kind of just taken everything in almost matter of fact because it is a field just all consisting of first-time starters, uh, starting with the one, Mayor Jack. Uh, this is a half to Amber Knight. It was a debut winner recently on the turf and looks very well prepared. Uh, Melanie Giddings gone out on her own now, has about 10 horses that she's training up in Saratoga. She was assistant to Jeremiah Inglehart, and I, I really like what I'm seeing from Mayor Jack, ridden by uh, Sean Bridgemahan. The three noted, uh, Mike Rapoli. We did a feature on Rapoli. How many times have we done a feature, guys? And then uh, the, the connections from the feature wind up winning. Well, noted looks very well prepared for trainer Todd Putcher. Um, he was a little bit vocal out of all the babies here. He kind of wanted to talk to the other horses a little bit. He was nickering at them and winning. And I'm going to be curious to see how he acts when he gets on the racetrack and hooks up with the pony. The five culprit, obviously Wesley Ward, just taking money. He looks very defined. And as much as some of Wesley's horses' coats I don't think have been really very good honestly this horse is very well turned out he's been training up in saratoga and uh, his coat's resplendent he's making a real nice impression the seven please advise uh george weaver's horses have been running it's great to see cindy hutter his wife back going to the barn accompanied uh george to royal ascot and they had a win there which is incredible and i'm just so happy that they were able to share that experience together considering everything that cindy went through after having that accident last year she really 
come a long way, and it's great to see. But this horse looks fantastic. Please advise the seven. Uh, out of the mare, Amansara uh, had five turf winners. Uh, she was a stakes winner on the turf herself, and this horse looks very prepared. And Eric Cancel has been doing riding really well and doing really well for George Weaver. And then the eight horse, Dangerous Driver, from a physical perspective, looks like a horse that'll appreciate more ground. Grand Dam was the diminutive and very good racehorse. Uh, megahertz, uh, multiple graded, uh, grade one winner, uh, earner of over $2 million. Um, this horse, I think, gets more of his size. His uh, paternal grandsire was Dynaformer. He's got a little more size to him, and I do think he'll be better for a race. But this is a horse I'm going to be keeping an eye out for this summer in Saratoga when they stretch him to two turns. One to follow moving forward. Dangerous driver, cold on the board today, 25 to 1. Circling back to please advise number 7. It's 6 to 1 for trainer George Weaver, as Richie mentioned. Yesterday, the scene at the Royal Meeting, Royal Ascot, day 2, the Queen Mary, Sarah. And you're going to watch the American Crimson Advocate, 26 horse field. 26 <laughs> of them, Crimson Advocate, gutting this one out with Johnny Velasquez by millimeters up the at the wire as at this point Johnny V was talking about how tired she was getting that uphill climb to the wire and we've seen this with all sorts of surfaces distances John Velasquez is just so good at putting horses with early speed on the front end and sometimes even horses that don't have that early speed he's able to get that out of them being affected by being more of an aggressive rider and able to just hold off some really good fillies hold coming on. to the wire very very <laughs> close finish at the end did you call that one I, I, I was <laughs> wrong about the first race at Belmont today and I was wrong <laughs> about that I'm like oh my god brutal beat George Weaver and Johnny V but somehow getting her nose down at the wire and the story Sarah sentimental just doesn't cover it with George Weaver and his wife Cindy it was just last summer at Saratoga uh, Cindy was involved in in the morning training accident, she was pinned under a horse and suffered severe brain injury. It's been a long, long road, and Cindy's still recovering, but able to make the trip, Sarah, to the UK, and for her and George to experience that moment together is just amazing, and the best of the best in the world we're racing. And it makes you really believe in really thinking that if anybody deserved to have some success right now, and especially getting a win like that over at Royal Ascot, as we take a look at some of the owners of Crimson Advocate, just to come full circle and have the year that they're having now after going through so much last year, it's a great story and really makes you have some hope for the future in general as well. That's uh, uh, the stuff Hollywood scripts are made of, fairy tale ending at Royal Ascot. Yeah, it was yesterday, black type thoroughbreds and, and, and Randy Hill, uh, swing back stables, Hill here represented by Please Advise, who you're still looking at for trainer George Weaver and, and a moment they'll never forget. And for the Americans, they're lone victory in the first three days of the royal meeting yes i mean we've seen a couple of our uh, u.s horses go over and, and perhaps disappoint a little bit but always fun to see those races from over the pond we'll have more on royal ascot day three a little bit later on post parade here mayor jack a jim kelly owned first time starter and melanie giddings fairly new to training but has already had some early success as well perhaps this is one to use underneath at a little bit of a price and richie like what he saw in the paddock the noble wave bermuda limestone thoroughbred debut in colt the other george weaver at a little bit of a better price manny franco and george weaver have teamed up with some good first time starters at big prices in the past as well noted one of 250 horses owned by mike rapoli <laughs> Just the 250th. Just, that's it. That's all. That's all. <laughs> and Just this is where Irad Ortiz Jr. ends up as well. We know he rides for a couple of these barns. And for him to be on this one, I think it's a little meaningful. Uh, feeling better, Irad Ortiz. Good to see him back in the saddle. Dark Vintage, Wesley Ward, first-time starter. Uh, not American Rascals Day overseas. No, and, and Junior Alvarado and Wesley Ward are connections that we don't see teaming up that often. They've actually only teamed up for four races over the past five years. So interesting to see Wesley Ward opt for Junior to ride this one. Uh, culprit, favorite at 9-5, to five, uh, Ward trained, debuting Colts will break side by side. And this is a horse we touched on a little bit with those flashy turf works up at Saratoga. Likely to see some speed from this one. Number six, Weekend Concerto, the Mendelssohn, first time starter. This one going out for Mike Maker, who does a lot of things well, but first-time starters on the grass with two-year-olds, not as much so as his other statistics. Sometime more about intent than ability or lack of ability. Number seven, please advise in the Queen Mary winning team, Randy Hill, George Weaver. 
and Eric Cancel still off his mounds after a little bit of a spill the other day, though he is doing okay. Jose Lascano picking out the mount for this one. A dangerous driver, as Richie mentioned, maybe not today, but, but keep an eye on him moving forward. Maybe this summer at Saratoga. And perhaps wanting a little bit more ground as well. He looks kind of, from what we're seeing up here, like a bigger type, too, so he might appreciate stretching out in distance going forward. Kendrick Carmouche giving him some education, revving his engines, the big warm-up. We see that rather often with Kendrick. Who'd you wind up with here? I went to the favorite who is taking a little bit more money at 9-5 to five right now. I think even if this wasn't your typical Wesley Ward first-time starter as a two-year-old in a turf sprint, those works alone that we're seeing this one come in with from Saratoga really point this horse out as being live in a spot like this. Justify the sire is doing very well with mm -hmm. his two-year-old first-time starters. In addition, he's firing at 23%. This horse sold for $675,000 as a Keeneland September yearling. There's just a lot going on to like about this horse. Justify just sired his first grade one winner in the Woody Stevens. On the undercard of the Belmont Stakes, as we're looking at noted, uh, still looking at culprit, but circling back to noted at 5-2. to two. Again, Team Forte, Richie, Rapoli, Pletcher, Arad Ortiz, all adds up to the second choice in the wagering. What are you noticing? Well, I really like how professional uh, noted was when he, once he got on the racetrack. Like I said, in the paddock, he was a little bit talkative and kind of letting everybody know he was there. And sometimes that'll translate into horses being you know, a little bit rambunctious when they try to hook up with the pony. He could not have been more professional about everything. Extremely well-schooled by uh, Todd Pletcher. I, I just get the impression, though, looking at him, that he'll be a horse that will be better for a start. Um, but I certainly did uh, like him in the paddock and liked him even better on the racetrack. The uh, five-horse culprit, I tell you, this guy's a dude. He's got attitude. He chogged off. He came out on the racetrack like he owns the joint. And good horses have attitude. He, you know, I think he was, like, kind of looking around saying, you know what my dad is? My dad won the Triple Crown. What'd your dad do, right? I mean, he he just really a flashy individual. And I won't be surprised at all uh, if he wins as the favorite. I'm going with the seven, please advise. I like what I'm seeing from this horse. Um, and I, I'm sorry, I didn't really, I didn't catch that Eric Cancel was still off his mounts. I know he was a bit sore after that spill. Uh, thankfully, all his x-rays checked out fine, and he'll be back uh, before you know it. But uh, George Weaver's barn's going good. And I always feel like when a barn starts going good, the energy level and the enthusiasm in the barn rubs off on the horses. I, I'm a true believer horses feed on energy and positive energy elevates a barn. And I think Cindy being back in the fold with George working, the horses are running, and he looks like a very well-prepared individual. Jose Lascano is riding extremely well, coming back off an injury uh, faster than anybody expected. So I'm going to take a little bit of a swing with a horse that's taking money, steady money now, uh, and, guys, we're going to have a late scratch here. The six-horse weekend concerto jogged off, really didn't look like he was moving extremely well, and uh, he's, the tack is being removed now uh, by jockey Jose Ortiz. So a late defection, Richie. Thanks so much for the insight. Uh, weekend concerto is out. Jose Ortiz was cold on the board, 6-1 to one on the morning line, 14-1 uh, to one at the time the defection was announced. Culprit at 8-5. to five. Sarah, I always find it interesting for handicappers what they lean on most when it comes to debuting runners. And none of these horses have any experience. All first-time starters. Is it more pedigree for you? Is it the workouts? Is it the tote board? Is it what you see pre-race in the warm-up? What do you lean on most? Well, it's a combination of factors, I think, not only for myself, but for everybody who's trying to evaluate these horses that are all coming in with kind of a blank slate. We don't know what they're capable of in terms of how they'll race. And I look at all sorts of different angles. I think pedigree is extremely important as well as some of that precocity, maybe on the either the sire or dam side going forwards, as well as are these trainers capable of getting these horses as two-year-olds to fire first time out? We know Wesley Ward certainly capable of doing so, especially in these turf sprint races. So trainer statistics, some pedigree. Uh, I love watching those OBS workouts as well as from other sales that go on as far as a clue into how these horses are really moving when they are available, sale price. There's just so much information available, even if we haven't seen them run a race yet. It's uh, a matter of, as we mentioned, a trainer intent, Wesley Ward, an emphasis on horses' precocity and winning early. One of the greatest trainers of all time, the legendary Bald Eagle, the late great Hall of Famer, two-time Kentucky Derby winner, Charlie Whittingham, was like almost irritated when he would win <laughs> with a first-time starter because he wanted more of a 
patient approach. He wanted that horse to get a chance to face other maidens yet again. Um, all about trainer intent and what they feel is best for that particular prospect moving forward long term. Exactly, and, and we know what these trainers' intentions are. When you follow a circuit as closely as you and I do, we get very familiar with these kinds of connections. We know who's ready to fire first time out. We know which trainers are developing more of that slow progression with their horses and taking a more patient approach. So having an idea of what the MO is for different trainers, it also tells you a little bit about what their success level is going to be in a race like this. And the money on the board. Uh, for example, let's say you love number four, Dark Vintage, there's noted. Dark Vintage, she was 7-2 to two on the morning line, now 5-1. to one. I wouldn't go as far as calling it freezing, but not, you know, he's chilly. Um, if you liked him or her going in in a first-time starter, do you let the board, how much does that affect your opinion going in? Personally, I try to stay away from allowing the board to shift my mind considerably. If I already liked a horse and they're taking a lot of money, uh, it hurts my price, but I do feel a little bit more mm. confident that other people see the same thing that I do. If I really liked a horse and they're taking no money, maybe I take a little bit of a second look, but I don't like to let other people's opinions and what they do with their money based on those totally change my mind, though it is something to consider. Yeah, they don't always know. <laughs> they, <laughs> they aren't always they <laughs> right. We'll see if they are right here in this fifth race at Belmont, start of the late Pick five with Dark Vintage stepping forward in those famed Stone Street colors. They love culprit at six to five. And there he is in the Barbaro Lale colors. And we're all set for the fifth two-year-old sprinting five furlongs on a firm turf course. John Ambriel standing by, kicking off the late pick five at Belmont as please advise backs off. Now, coax forward. John Ambriel standing by. All set for race five. And uh, they're off. Awkward beginning for number eight, dangerous driver, and he trails. From the inside, Mayor Jack away well. Dark Vintage is there. And on the outside, it is Culprit. It's Culprit and Dark Vintage right together. Now they've got a length and a half on Mayor Jack in third. Another two and a half to Please Advise, who runs in fourth. And further back, it is a Noble Wave and Noted. And a dangerous driver is the trailer. Quarter win, 22 and 1. Dark Vintage on the inside and Culprit on the outside. The two of them heads apart for the lead as they come for the top of the stretch. Please Advise moves up on the outside. Now into third. Mayor Jack is next in a fourth. Noted is out in the middle of the course. Noble Wave is down towards the rail. Here is Please Advise now to take over the lead. Noted continues to gain on the outside. Down at the rail, Dark Vintage and Culprit. They're coming on for the finish and it will be Please advise by almost two. Noted got up for second. Then Dark Vintage and Culprit. Not the biggest win of the week thus far for this team, but a victory. Please advise for the Queen Mary winning team. Randy Hill, George Weaver, and Jose Lascano with the pickup mount. Lascano second on the afternoon. Please advise closing at four to one. You got a, a square price for how well the barn has been going lately. And, of course, George Weaver not only successful here, but over at Royal Alaska, just like you mentioned. But this ownership group, I mean, they're winning all over the place as well, perhaps with different connections, too, with different trainers. And, I mean, this horse was able to sit off the two Wesley Ward horses that were battling early and just produce a nice late run, holding off Noted, who we talked about earlier with Rapoli and this is a horse that could have a decent future going forwards into some of those turf sprint stakes, perhaps, at Saratoga. Randy Hill, his shirt game, long sleeve division, <laughs> J.K. short sleeve division, is going to be on fire this summer <laughs> <laughs> at Saratoga, coming in hot with prospects like Please Advise and coming in as a winner, a winning owner of a Queen Mary at Royal Alaska yesterday.
so exciting for uh, the entire barn. And something Richie mentioned with Cindy getting back to being involved more in terms of her uh, ability to go over to the barn and take care of some of these horses. She was extremely involved before. So great to see things on the up and up for the barn and, and so deserving after everything that they've been through. It's only what, 820 in the UK? <laughs> right watching. George, Cindy, congrats. Another winner here in the U.S. at 4-1, to one, please advise 7-3-4-5. And how about noted, Sarah, who really, in a losing effort, finishing second, but a professional second-place finish, plugging away, plugging away in the stretch, is showing some grit and determination. You love to see that from a young prospect, especially in a debut. And getting a an education as well. This is a horse that was further back early, too, so making up more ground than perhaps some of the other horses in this race. And one will, uh, will be benefited from a start, and we look forward to seeing that one next time out. Got a lot out of this race, I imagine. That 20 minutes flew by. <laughs> We'll, we'll leave it up to them to decide <laughs> if it was the best 20 minutes in the history of racing television. Uh, Sarah, stepping aside, do you, like, love anything the rest of the afternoon? No. That they can play? Short no? prices. Short prices. <laughs> that's that's the, the story thus far this afternoon. But uh, not so much in this one. Please advise at 4 to 1. Pleasure, Sarah. Look forward to working with you very soon. I'm sure we will have another chance to talk, perhaps for longer than 20 minutes. But uh, great to <laughs> chat with you about this two-year-old race for the first time. Sarah Bodby stepping aside. Paul Laduco joining me on set. Please advise you'll see him in the winner's circle. We'll be right back. Reach for the unreachable. Race to new horizons. The artisan's quest for beauty burns in the heart of Japan, forging strength like no other with love and honed to perfection. Noble, authentic, and only here. The legacy of strength. Welcome back to America's Day at the Races, Spencer of two-year-old race of the day. I'll be smiling, too. Two wins thus far, Jose Lascano, pickup mount. A story we saw last night at Canterbury. Adam Biskitza, pickup mount, having won the Canterbury Derby. And for this first-time starter with a future, Randy Hill, winning owner, George Weaver. What a week, the win at Royal Ascot, a win here. Please advise the first-time starter by... Belmont winner, Met Mile winner, Palace Malice strikes. Just a $20,000 purchase. 1020 for your would-be $2 investment. Good effort from noted. Something to build on. And then Dark Vintage having to settle for third. 7-3-4 in the spend through two-year-old race of the day. Please advise Jose Lascano two wins thus far. Standing by with Richie. Thanks, Lafitte. And Jose Lascano's just been riding so well. Jose, please advise. Was very professional for a first-time starter. He looked like he had done it before. Yes, you know, he groomed it up pretty good, you know, he acted like a old horse, you know, and when he broke out the game, he broke pretty good, he right behind horse, he couldn't ask it, by the 516, he really go on and take you off and win the race. I noticed even when Noted came to him on the gallop out, he never let him go by him. No, no, you know, put a neck to hands, he 
keep galloping in front of the horse, next to the other horse, you know. Jose, you had an injury earlier this year. It came back a lot faster than anybody anticipated. And to me, it looked like you never missed a day. How hard is it to put those, you know, kind of accidents behind you and ride as well as you're riding? Well, I have to come back every day to the track. Like, you know, like the day is passed already, you go forward the next day, you know. Well, you're riding terrific. And guys, I love and, and really appreciate and respect the Warriors mentality that Jose has shown. And looks like he's riding as well, if not better than ever. Top rider, uh, underrated rider, Richie, and off to a fine start on this Thursday afternoon. Second win thus far as we turn the page to the sixth race. We started a late pick four allowance. Optional claimer of the $80,000 variety. Nova Rags at four to five. Big scratch from the Bowman is out. As I welcome in my co-host for the rest of the afternoon, Paul LaDuca. I'm glad that you were able to catch the uh, Naira Betts private from Shock <laughs> last night to make it back in time for your shift. I was getting a little bit worried they left without you. Yeah, well, I, I walked to the wrong set already. So I've been in Belmont <laughs> back here for a couple of weeks, and I'm literally running uh, over to the other set. And everybody said, well, you got to go to the indoor set. Not informed. So, so what not, what not, indoor not set? Informed. Well, I, well, my problem, I should be informed, right? Uh but yeah, I made it. Um, good. It was a lot of fun in Shakopee, Minnesota. You know, um, a, f a fair like type of atmosphere. Reminded me of a mini type of Saratoga. Yeah. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It had that kind of feel. But yeah, a lot of fun and good to be back here in New York at Belmont. Yeah, uh, great stuff last night, Paul, Thanks. and a fun night of racing at Canterbury. Meantime, this weekend. The America's Best Racing's Race of the Week, and we have the wild applause for three year old Phillies. There's the field in the morning line, at nine of them. Mile in the Widener, and two to one. Down towards the bottom, breathe away. We'll look at her in just a moment, but starting with Liguria, seven to two on the morning line. Second start this year, Polly. Uh, only defeated a half length in the Edgewood, Kentucky Oaks Day, but here's her last win last December. Delmar in the Jimmy Durante. This was impressive. No, this was impressive. I mean, she kind of got locked up a little bit, and then she was able to swing towards the, the outside of the racetrack, and then really explode here late. You know, the horse with the, the blinkers on the rail was trying to make a move, but then she just decimated this field. And the public, you know, had it right from the beginning. You know, it's very hard for, at Del Mar at least to win for, out from the outside post. When you're in the 10, 11, or 12, it's a lot difficult because that trip course is a lot smaller than maybe a trip course like, uh, like Belmont here. Here's what I loved. You know, Bobby Frankel would always say you can lose ground on one turn, but don't do it on yeah. two turns. She lost ground on both yes. turns and still able to win powerfully yeah. at Del Mar. Uh, a solid effort. Uh, in her first start this year at Churchill Downs, we'll see what she does in the wild applause. And then you have Breathe Away, the actual morning line favorite, aside from the MTO, her most recent Pimlico, day before the Preakness, uh, the Hilltop, Polly, and Breathe Away uh, closing and just going to run out of ground. I thought she ran really well. You can see she's got her head up. She's, she runs with her head up high. A little bit earlier, she was kind of got steadied a little bit, but right here I thought she was home. But the horse on the outside had a little bit more, more momentum than her. But they both went through the wire, and they were, they were clear. There's no disgrace. Uh, you know, she ended up having a good trip after being steady. You know, they finished in 134. That was actually a pretty fast race. So I understand why David Aaron Gordon made her the uh, morning line favorite. I think it's going to be a, a really good race. Set your alarm early. Tomorrow's cross country pick five with four races. Day four from the Royal Meeting. Chesham, the Jersey, the Group 1 Queen Elizabeth, the Hardwick, and right here at Belmont Park on Saturday. That's Saturday, the wild applause for three-year-old Phillies and a significant race. These are Phillies you can see in races like the Lake George and the Lake Placid at Saratoga. Mm -hmm. Those are three-year-old Phillies on grass in terms of the boys on dirt and some of the bigger names we saw along the Triple Crown and specifically the Kentucky Derby. Those horses starting to resurface. Eight of them here and one name jumps off the screen in two fills who is eight to five. Jareth Luffberry is named to ride. Paul broke news last night from Canterbury when Luffberry had a banged up shoulder, wasn't able to finish the evening of racing. He has a couple of days to, for that to heal, to start feeling better, and hopefully he can still ride to fills as he did, Polly, in the Kentucky Derby in an incredibly brave effort, pressing a hot pace and still good enough to finish second. Yeah, I mean, the horse ran tremendous that day. I mean, you could take it two ways. A lot of people think, well, he saved ground most of the way, but you can also look at it as he was up on the pace the whole way and was the one that was sticking around. It really ran a bang up second. 
uh, to Mage and obviously Angel of Empire. Uh, talking to Jareth last time, he, he, he said two fills and the Galboy and, and Larry's been telling the horse has been working unbelievable. Now, Jared fell off a horse during training and he had injured his right shoulder. He tweaked it a little bit on Art Artemis City Limits last mm -hmm. night in uh, the sprint race. Um, you know, coming into the Derby, he had had a leg issue as well. So he's a tough customer, and I think he'll still be on the back of two fills. I think that was more precautionary last night. Uh, hopefully the MRI and everything comes o back okay with his his arm, and I think he'll be okay, and he'll be on two fills. Uh, hopefully a yeah. chance to ride two fills in the uh, Ohio Derby. That's on Saturday, three-year-olds taking center stage there. We mentioned the wild applause here for three-year-old fillies on grass. And when we return, the story of uh, Sochi Solario, a bright future, a childhood spent with a family on the backstretch, hard, hard-working parents, and a big reason for the opportunities in front of Sochi. That's next. The momentum continues for War Dancer as Ms. Big Bucks goes wire to wire. Ms. Big Bucks will pull off the upset in the nightcap. Her full brother, Bucker 2, and Brennan's War score a War Dancer exacta. Bucker 2 in front, Brennan's War on the outside. The two of them come on for the finish, and it is Bucker 2. And New York Anthem kicks off the year going a perfect two for two. New York Anthem not going down without a fight. Shouldn't you have a War Dancer? War Dancer, proud to stand in New York. Perfect day. There is no finer place in all of sports. There is excitement and anticipation. The beautiful, truly stunning. <laughs> For the Breeders' Cup World Championship. Daredevil. Returning to stud on U.S. soil, the only first crop sire to see two offspring win the grade one Kentucky Oaks and the grade one Preakness Stakes in the same year. She dares the devil, taking the Kentucky Oaks and the grade two Azari Stakes and champion Swiss Skydiver, winning the Preakness and the grade one Beholder Mile Stakes. With more exciting prospects on the track and multiple six-figure sales in the ring, Daredevil's career is just getting started, only at Lane's End. The Cross Country Pick 5 combines the best racing from New York with top races from around the country in one bet. Find it in your track menu and play this weekend. Races and free PPs posted at Naira.com slash cross country. Race Lens is the most in-depth product in horse racing with unique features found nowhere else. True odds, predictive analysis, and pace projection. Race Lens, it will change the way you follow horse racing and take your game to the next level. Great to have you with us on America's Day at the Races. As always, brought to you in part by America's Best Racing. For the love of the race, visit americasbestracing.net today. Ten minutes out, race number six, start of the late pick four. Coming up, so we do uh, have a moment. And if you've followed this broadcast over the years, at some point you've heard us reference the Anna House here at Belmont Park on the backstretch. It's a place where children can spend time with friends, where they can learn, where they can play while their parents are working on the backstretch. Case in point, Sochi Solario, uh, who spent much of her childhood here on the Belmont backstretch, and now looking ahead to a very, very bright future. My name is Sochi Solorio. I will be attending Northeastern University this fall. And right now we are currently in a barn where my parents work actually. My parents work very hard, like way harder than I, I have ever in my life. I give them props because I don't think I could do this every single day and they do it for my brother and I. So honestly, I'm very proud of them because like everyone talks about me and what I'm doing. People should be talking about them. They're, they're really the stars of the show. They would take me to Anna House around 4.30 in the morning. I stayed there until I was maybe five, then I went to kindergarten. I feel like I've been just very academically oriented since like the get-go. Uh, I've always liked school. When it comes to the calculus and all like the hard courses, I feel like the, the thrill and also the, the challenge it like presents is honestly something I really, really like. 
When I found out that Northeastern um, has combined major programs, and I saw that one of their combined majors programs was civil engineering and architectural studies, it was like the best thing in the world. I've never been so happy because not only did I get into my dream school, I could afford my dream school. With all the different types of scholarships that they offered me and then everything, it was just amazing. When it comes to my parents, they've honestly like presented a very, very strong base for me, showing me what uh, dedication and hard work truly is and showing me the importance of it and what could potentially come out. They've always told me that I should go to school. Como mamá de Sochi, yo estoy muy orgullosa de mi hija, mucho, 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 porque mi hija se ha esforzado mucho en trabajar en, su, en la escuela. It's very heartwarming when they say, oh, I'm proud of you. It's, it's like a sense of an accomplishment, bigger, bigger than any more other accomplishment in my life. Honestly, bigger than like getting into school and getting a full ride, just them saying that I'm proud of you. Para nosotros, Sochi, pues es, estamos muy orgullosos de ella, de lo que ha conseguido ella. My parents didn't go uh, because of the cost of school and also the fact that they were looking for work and they ended up here and they came to the U.S. for a better life. I'm extremely proud of them with everything that they do and I honestly couldn't have done any of this without their support and overall just like their, their grit within life. And they've definitely set up a really, really good example for my brother and I and I hope to live up to not only my dreams but also theirs. Very fortunate. Sochi, a bright young woman, her parents so proud. And you'll see her father, there he is, Gustavo, uh, with Nova Rags, works for Bill Mott. And again, just so very proud of his bright young daughter. Yeah, it's a really cool thing. And I mean, the father-daughter connection, we just had Father's Day, um, and we ran this special. And um, it really is kind of special too as well, that he, he's so involved. and he. You can see that Gustavo sort of stands back and lets his daughter do his own thing, lets her be herself, and I think that's the greatest part about it. And this, the opportunities in terms of the Anna House being here, and while backstretch workers, while they're working with the horses, and how much time they spend yeah, with the horses, that. while they're children, they, they have somewhere to play, somewhere yeah. to learn, to spend time with their friends, and what a difference that has made here over the years for the backstretch workers, for the families, and the kids growing up. No, it's the same way. Listen, when I played, you know, professional baseball, you. you you're away from your family you, and you're playing almost 200 days out of the year. So, you know, we used to have babysitters and stuff like that. And, you know, jockeys are 365. I mean, some of these guys take a month or two off here and there and they're flying here and there. So they need that help um, sometimes as well. And, you know, the learning that you get from the Anna House as well. Yeah, built by Mike Dubb, the uh, yes. Anna House, as we have riders up here for this sixth race. And speaking of Nova Rags, uh, his latest, uh, late April, Aqueduct. Uh, he was favored in this one. Paul and handles uh, seas get to crease with ease. Yeah, he, he kind of got the pace set up. I, I know he, he was wide on this day, but you know there was a couple horses that were going at it at the time. And when you look at his race record, he's the kind of horse that he has checked in second more than he's, than he's won. But on this day, he got the job done over Dot's dollar in the middle of the racetrack there. Can he repeat that? Every, every time he's come back, he had been knocking on the door with three seconds, but he had been favorite four times uh -huh. row, so he finally cashed for the better. So do you want to take three to five again today uh, with you know an entry that's pretty strong, Linda Rice and David Jacobson? Yeah, uh, fifth straight race. It looks like Nova Rags will be favored at post time. The entry, two for one, you're getting eight to five. And as always, we invite you to join us and play at Naira Bets. Get involved. Take advantage of that $200 deposit match bonus. Sign up with promo code BONUS200 and earn up to a $200 deposit match. After your first deposit, bet any track, anywhere, anytime. Join now at NairaBets.com to earn your $200 deposit match. Really want to get signed up now. Three weeks from today, Paulie. Three weeks from today, opening day of the 155th season of racing at Saratoga. No, really? Three weeks. I got it on my calendar. Yeah. <laughs> this, the, like Saratoga <laughs> and Christmas are the same thing. They, they should literally have a Saratoga calendar where you, you cross it out. You, you get know? 24 hours of Christmas. It's <laughs> two months of Saratoga. <laughs> 40 race days. <laughs> Post parade for the sixth. Uh, C's get degrees. Again, that entry for winning move stable two for one. You're getting eight to five. 
you know, after getting beat by Nova Rags, went to Pimlico and was odds on and got the job done. Lavia and Pratt's one win thus far. Jose Ortiz on Gunnet. Ortiz one win thus it's really, far. It's really did weird to see any horse that has Gunner or Gun in it, in it um, because Steve Asperson usually has it. And this is a horse that <laughs> was claimed from Steve Asperson for Linda Rice and ran a bang-up race on the dirt right after the claim. Yeah, I thought the exact same when I saw it. Secret <laughs> rule, sharp gelding, half length from winning three straight. Yeah, sharp gelding is right. And you know what? This horse is won on fast and wet services. So this son of Secret Circle is definitely moving forward. Longest shot in the field, currently 7-1. to one. Then Mr. Phil, not two Phils, Mr. Phil and Manny Franco. He brings speed to the party, and he's got some back races that are very good. He's, he tried to tackle Jackie's wear, and at one time put his head in front in the true <laughs> north at, at one point. You just wonder now at age six, now with James Begg um, taking the training duties, is he the same horse that he was? Nova Rags, there he is. Favorite in four straight, as Polly mentioned, defeated in three of those, but not his last. Yeah, but his races are really good, so he is the one to beat. And there is uh, C. Scott Degrees winding up. He is quick. Flavian Pratt aboard, getting him ready. Now, we saw the race in which Nova Rags defeated him. Uh, C. Scott Degrees has raced since, and he's won since. Uh, how can he get the best of Nova Rags this time? Yeah, this is, a, you mean Gunnett, right? Um, the gray. Um, I don't know. That's a good question, Lafitte, because when you look, this is a horse that hit the, the lead at the top of the stretch. And doesn't he look like he's kind of wandering around a little bit? And look at his race record, gonna Three wins, ten seconds. And he, he kind of runs like he's running second, doesn't he? So I think the other part of the entry is a little bit stronger. C's get degrees because he does have the speed. But then again, Nova Rags, you know, put him away. But this is a different dichotomy here can seize get degrees you know get loose here there he is warming up we check back in with richie with about a minute to go till this six race start of the late pick four yeah guys i think you've got a very well balanced entry if you will here starting with the 1a gun it more of a closing style he used his speed two back uh going after following c um but that's not the way he really wants to run. And I know that he'll be closing today as opposed to, you know, his entry, C's got degrees or C's get degrees. You see, I didn't go to school. Um, C's get degrees is fast. And, you know, he, he's going to be employed to go. And, and his way will be on the lead. And uh, Gunnett will be closing. Now, Gunnett does have three wins, 10 seconds. That's problematic for me. But I think he's looked the best I've ever seen him look. And this is a horse we've had an opportunity to watch over a few years now. Um, and I think he's going to get a good setup. He's going to be my top selection. C's get degrees is probably going to hurt the two horse secret rules, a horse that I am a big fan of. This horse is honest. He's hickory. He shows up. He brings his lunch pail and goes to work. Now, if something happens and C's gets degrees, doesn't get off very well, secret rules is going to be loose on the lead, I believe, and I think he could be tough to beat then, but I just think he's going to get a lot of pressure. And then Nova Rags is your favorite, and I have no problem with him as your favorite. He's got the right style for a race that I think projects to be fast early, uh, closing kind of style. You know, last time he had to come very wide into the stretch, and he drew off the right way. I just prefer others a little bit from a physical perspective, and I just think that Gunnett might be, in, you know, falling into the right spot in the right trip. And from a physical perspective, he stands out. And just real quick, guys, interesting in the paddock, you watch horses matched up with grooms. And over the years, if you had a horse that didn't have a good walk, not the most smooth walk, you'd put a groom with him that had a little bit of a limp. If you had a very small horse, you put him with a small groom. A really huge horse, you put him with a bigger groom. I was watching the horses in the paddock and kind of laughing to myself how, they just, uh, you know, interesting to see the pairings between grooms and horses. How do you, how do you, who has a limp? You, you, how, put, how do you, you, you pull out the you Kaiser. give somebody a reason to I limp? guess you pull out the Kaiser Sose. You go. <laughs> yeah, and you just, you, you come up with it, I guess. Uh, but, you know, that's actually, it makes sense. You know, I've always wondered, you know, Harley, if a lot of people don't know who Harley is, he's a, horse that's out in Kentucky, uh, he's about 2,100 pounds. Probably if they would have actually worked him out instead of Rich Strike, more people would have showed up <laughs> at Churchill Downs. <laughs> Seriously, that's how popular Harley is. And I've always wondered, like, that big of an animal, does he scare the horse? 
But then she told me, Ma'am. she goes, no, I get all the bad actors because they won't bite yeah. Harley because they know better. <laughs> He's a monster. He's a monster, yeah. So the old groom with a limp play. So many different ways to so try and angles, zero in right? on a winner. <laughs> There's the so many track. angles. There's whatever. It's only stupid if it doesn't hey, work. Hey, listen, when I was at Del Mar, I know some old, old guys that would play the tide. The yes. tide, oh, where the tide was, the what, time of day, and where would that day, would favor would the say, racetrack? Yeah, yeah, yeah would sure. Favor the racetrack. Absolutely. And that's like, come on, man. People get deep. You can, yeah, <laughs> you can get that, that. Technical, that deep, whatever it takes. Like I said, it's only stupid if it doesn't work. Right? As long as you pick the winner, I don't care how you come up with it. Did you pick the winner, winner in this one? Or I, did you I, wind I, up with I like Nova the, Rags? I like the four, yeah. I, I'm not going outside the box. I just think that Nova Rags might repeat against this group. Because, you know, C's got degrees I thought was the other danger, and he's handled him twice already. See how it all unfolds. Start of the late pick four. Post time for the six. Live from Belmont Park, Johnny I. Standing by. They're in the gate. And they're off. C's get degrees right out for the early lead. Down on the inside is Secret Rules. And then comes Nova Rags. And on the outside is the gray Gunnett. The early trailer is Mr. Phil in fifth, who's just two and a half lengths from the lead. And the leader is C's get degrees in front by a length. Secret Rules down at the rail, and on the outside is Nova Rags, and Secret Rules is now gaining ground on the inside of C's Get Degrees. The quarter 22 and 4. C's Get Degrees by a neck. Secret Rules down at the rail. Then comes Nova Rags, who's in and among horses and in third. On the outside is a Gunnett, and then Mr. Phil as they come for the top of the stretch. C's Get Degrees. Down at the rail, secret rules. Here's Nova Rags now making a move, and Gunnett is widest of all. Mr. Phil is in behind horses. The half went in 45-2, and two, and they're heading for the eighth pole. And here comes Gunnett up on the outside to grab a narrow lead. Nova Rags battles on. Down at the rail is secret rules. It is Gunnett who has the lead as they come on for the finish. Gunnett is the winner here by almost three lengths. It was close for second between Nova Rags and Secret Rules. Gun it. Not by Gunrunner. By Tap It. <laughs> the seven-year-old gelding who doesn't win often. Mig like what he saw. Gun it here in the sixth at Belmont Park. Wow. They paid $2.6 million for this horse at one time. Great call by, by Mig because this is a horse that... Checks in second a lot. 0 for 13 the last two years. But Mick said, listen, this horse outlooks the field by a lot. And one off. I mean, this is the first time this horse is one off like that. Usually likes to hang around and look around. But Linda Rice got this horse home with Jose Ortiz. And you got to love it. They know when they're going to win. But, yeah, he polished his field away. You know, he made that move on the outside. I, I, I turned to you. I'm like, this one is home here. And... Good ride by Jose Ortiz. He pulled the trigger right late and a nice little time here. Just a shade under 110. Two wins on the afternoon. Jose Ortiz, Linda Rice. You mentioned the purchase price, $2.6 million for a gelding who was 3 for 33. 3 for 33 before that win. His problem has been the lack of the knockout punch. A little bit one-paced, one-geared when the real running starts. Today, he handled his business late. No, he did. In you know... He's the kind of horse, if you looked, when we showed the replay, he kind of lost, got lost on the lead a little bit, maybe hit the front too soon last time. So Jose learned a little bit from him, and he timed the move perfect today. One, four, two, three. Gun it for the winning move stable. And that fourth lifetime win for the once $2.6 million purchase. Gun it in the six from Belmont. Results, reaction. As our coverage continues, you're watching America's Day at the Races on Fox Sports 2.
You're watching America's Day at the Races. As always, brought to you in part by Hill and Dale, Adelapa. Just watch Gun It. Find that winning move for winning move. Jose Ortiz entering the winner's circle. Peace, Jose. Two wins on the afternoon, and for he and Linda Rice having won two of the last three races. Yeah, tap it out of that great mare, Miss Bezalou. Um, gets the job done. Now four for 34 lifetime. <laughs> Uh, two years between drinks and water, but got the job done. Back in the winner's circle, as is Jose Ortiz standing by with Richie in the winner's circle. Guys, absolute textbook way to use an entry. One speed, one closer. And Jose, gun it. This is the third time you've ridden him. Um, he showed good speed trying to put pressure on following C, but more raiding tactics today seem to really help. I think he had, he had raid. Uh, very good in the past. Uh, that day we following C, we felt like it was gonna be a two race horse, and he ended up being not. Uh, a horse from the back came and win. Uh, last time he rode on the grassy room, very good. I think uh, he switched leads properly, which he didn't first time with us here. And today he switched. We're very happy about it, and it looked like he's moving forward. We're very happy with him. Well, you really had to help him switch leads though about the 316 ball. Yeah, he had give us problem with that even in the morning too. Uh, but the crew at the barn had done a great job. The XSI riders uh, had done a great job also, and I tried to do my best in the afternoon. I'm glad he switched, and I mean, like I said, he's, he looked like he's moving forward, and we're very happy with him. Also, he's a horse that's accumulated a lot of seconds compared to wins. Is that something that you think about going in, that time you run a little bit? Yeah, you can see in the top of the stretch, I don't want to move. I got him all pretty. I was where I wanted to be, but I don't want to go yet because he kind of have a lot of seconds on his record, and... I just want to, wanted to wait as long as I could. and uh, to, But today he responded well. He was there for me, and he, he ran a great race. So we are very happy with him, like I said before. Congratulations, Jose. You've been riding in such good form. And, guys, you can't ride a, a, a better race. It was picture perfect and a perfect execution with an entry. And for newer fans and followers of the sport, as you take a look at the late Big Five follow along thus far, please advise 10, 20, gun it, 540. Some horses that hit the front too soon yeah. think their job is done. And for that reason, horses like Gunnett rack up all those second, third place finishes because they do think their, their job is done and stop giving the rider their best. Yeah, and he, I love the interview because Jose just says, we, we, we. And that's, it's a team effort. He's talking about the Gallup boy. He's talking about Linda Rice. And after two times aboard this gray, they finally figured him out. And... You just love when you hear a jockey say we because, you know, it's, 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 it's a whole team effort. Team effort. Yep. Uh, seventh race coming up here at Belmont with New York Breds. $45,000 allowance, optional claimer, six furlong sprint. Much more on this one when we come back. Stepping aside here on America's Day at the races and the story of Matty Oliver. There's some big time jockeys riding in this next one. Jose Ortiz, Manny Franco, and right there mixing it up with him. Matty Oliver, she rides Foolish Ghost. Her story is next. Stay tuned. Fun to run. In the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile, he defeated a loaded field that included multiple grade one winners, Omaha Beach and Improbable. His brilliant speed figures were among the fastest of any three-year-old at a mile or more. And he hails from the legendary Danzig Sire Line. Multiple graded stakes winner, millionaire, Breeders' Cup champion, spun to run, standing at Gainesway. When it comes to horse racing, you can never have too much information. With Twin Spires, you can place your bets with confidence. Whether you use handicapping insights, like our Brisnet speed ratings, prime power and past performances, the guidance of our experts' top picks, or just choose a name that catches your eye. Yes! No matter how you pick your horse, bet with Twin Spires. Start earning your $200 sign-up bonus when you sign up with offer code GET200. Grade one winner on both dirt and turf, War of Will became a classic winner with this victory in the Preakness Stakes. He added turf credentials to his resume with a determined victory in the grade one Maker's Mark Mile. Now his first weanlings are commanding attention in the sales ring. Right here, 280,000. 191,000. 165,000. 160,000 dollars, thank you. A dual surface classic winning son of Warfront, War of Will, standing at Claiborne Farm. Racetrack Television Network brings you every race, every race from every track, every track on every screen, every, screen, every day. Every day.
With monthly packages starting as low as $5, RTN gives you great value and access to more live HD streaming and race replays than anyone. Visit RTN.TV today to sign up and watch on almost any device, including Roku and Amazon Fire. RTN has packages that start at $5 per month. Today at Belmont, uh, the 2023 race against MS event. It's the 40th edition of the event. And some of New York's most iconic sports figures in attendance. Fans had the opportunity to take pictures with newly enshrined NFL Hall of Famer Joe Klecko, uh, his teammate and Jets defensive end Marty Lyons, New York Knicks star guard John Starks, and Hall of Fame jockey Angel Cordero all participating. It warms your heart when you see the people that come in with MS that you can do something for them. Giving back is one of the things we have to do. It's instilled in you to do that, you know, from a moral perspective. What a great place to, to hold this event at. And uh, obviously it's, it's the 40th year uh, of the event and knowing that what you're doing is going to make a difference in this world. So anytime that we can lend a helping hand or words of encouragement to a family or to an individual, I think we should all do it. You don't have to be an athlete to do it. You just have to show that you care. A terrific event. These New York sports legends, uh, Joe Klecko played in the first NFL game yeah. I ever attended. Early 80s at the old Murph. It was, it was the Chargers and Jets. This was the old Air Coriel offense. Probably not a game Klecko wants to remember. There was like 100 <laughs> points scored. But how good Klecko was with Marty Lyons and Mark Gastineau and part of that old New York sack exchange, just a monster of a defensive line and well-deserved being enshrined to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Yeah, pretty cool stuff there. I mean, John Starks obviously got one of the most famous dunks um, in, in the NBA uh, uh, not finals, but in the uh, Eastern Conference finals. I mean, it, one of the best. And, you know, you look back in there, I said Bruce Beck. Bruce Beck's been a figure here in New York for a long time at Sports Night as well. Bruce Beck on New York 4. So, yeah, great stuff there for, you know, anytime you're raising money for MS or any kind of cause like that. It's great to see the celebrities out here. And there's a ton of guys out here to do a ton of stuff. Um, there's actually going to be a 1969 Mets re reunion Monday where a lot of the funds are going to autism. So um, some great stuff out there like that. Yeah, and, and John Starks, absolute new rock star, and uh, Angel Cordero, the king yeah. of Saratoga. Uh, that's the kind of success jockeys all aspire to have, what Angel Cordero <laughs> did during the course of his career, which brings us full circle back to a very young rider in Matty Olver, an aspiring young jockey who, who spent some time working with the Clemence. It's actually a really funny story how she wound up there. Maddie Olver given an opportunity and making the most of it. Now you've been working uh, for a while now with uh, Christophe Clemence, his son yes. Miguel. Yes. When and how did you hook up with them? I was still in college at the time and I was looking at a stakes race and I saw this name Clemence and I said, oh, that's French. And so I looked them up, they have a website, and I sent them an email with my resume and I said, I'm looking for a job in, in, to ride racehorses after I graduate college. If you have a place, would you be willing to give me an opportunity, give me a chance? Um, and they were so wonderful, immediately reached back out to me, had me come out to Florida to do like a week trial while I was still in school, and then offered me a job when I graduated. She's very knowledgeable, but She's willing to learn, she's open-minded, and um, I think that's a great attribute. From day one, she's been an exemplary employee. She works hard, she's dedicated, but I think she's a talented rider. She quickly developed to our main work rider here in Saratoga, and um, she's guided many good horses so far in the mornings, so it's just a question whether or not she can do it in the afternoon. What was the turning point for you when you said, you know, I, I not only want to exercise horses, I want to be a jockey. I was in the process of pursuing my license in France when unfortunately COVID shut everything down. Um, there's been some friends that I've had here and some other riders that have truly changed my life and the Clements as well with the mentorship and the encouragement that they've given me. The non-stop encouragement from the moment I said, hey, I would like to do this. It's been really special and I'm very grateful. There are several protocols that an apprentice rider has to go through just to get the opportunity to ride in the afternoon. The exercise rider has to prove to us that they can stay on the horse and break from the gate. So they would need clearance from the outrider, the starting gate, 
and they're also going to need three reference letters, and they must have been galloping horses for at least three years to be eligible to apply for a jockey license. So just to get the opportunity to compete in the afternoon takes an incredible amount of hard work. I want to be as strong as I absolutely can. I run every other day and then I go to the gym every other day, but also every day I do yeah, 100 push-ups. I'm, I'm getting to a four minute plank, I'm only at three right now, um, four minute wall sit, and just little things like that. But the end goal is to be really strong in that finishing drive, which is something um, especially that people tend to be really hard on girls for. I don't want people to say, oh wow, she's a strong rider for a girl. I want people to say, she's a strong rider. I try to use the people that have a lot of knowledge, such as yourself, other jockeys. Uh, Miguel has uh, watched race replays with me and to just show me what is a good ride versus a bad ride or what makes a win versus what makes a loss. Um, I've learned how to read PPs. I mean, I watch racing and I just try to talk to as many people and get as much information as possible because there's so many people that are so willing to offer information. I feel that I've been working hard and I feel really good about the work that I've put into it. So I'm just, I'm just happy to be where I'm at. All smiles, Maddie over. You know how hard that is? Four <laughs> minute plank. Any idea how difficult that is? Well, listen, I caught for 17 years, and Mike Sosha used to make us do wall sits. That's no <laughs> joke for a minute's wall sits. Uh, your legs will be trembling at the end of that. I was actually downstairs grabbing some lunch, and I actually saw Maddie. She is put together. Um, she is strong, um, and she said she just got done running, too, as well, and she was doing some planks down there. So, yeah, a four-minute plank. I think you and I would be dead at about a, a 45 uh, seconds. 45 seconds. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Fit. Wow. Strong. And like she said, she doesn't want to just be a, like a strong female jockey. Matty Over wants to be known as a strong jockey as we welcome in Acacia back to the show. Acacia, working all that time with an operation you're very, very familiar with, with the Clements. Uh, what have you noticed in terms of Maddie Over and her progression over the last year plus? Well, I'm so proud of her, Lafitte. I've gotten to know Maddie on a personal level, too. And as much as you see in that piece, how she's such a hard worker with an unbelievable work ethic. And I think that that is a, such a big part of her success as well. She's also just a terrific person. Um, it's ever since she said uh, that she wanted to pursue becoming a rider, she's just taken the bull by the horns and jumped in with both feet and more than anything you can see just the joy that it brings her how much fun she's had doing it from her first victory to getting through uh, her fifth win and all of those celebrations we had at aqueduct and now moving her tack primarily over to monmouth and pursuing something that's been a dream of hers it's not easy to make it into this business and especially she started a little bit later than a lot of the riders that we've seen but i think her international experience riding over in france then working uh, all all of the big horses with the Clement Stable being really their number one work rider while her, her time there. She put in the miles and put in the effort, and I'm just so proud to see the success and see that she's still enjoying it as much as she is because while this is a profession, as we all know, it's very much a way of life too. And so if you can get that much joy and pleasure out of it, I think that that's something really special, Lafitte. Well said, Acacia. If you didn't have a rooting interest before this seventh race, now you do with Maddie Olver. That's the gelding. She'll be riding in Foolish Ghost, not trained by Christophe Clement. Second start with Oscar Barrera. This was two starts back, Polly, with Olver aboard, Olver in front with Foolish Ghost, and being tracked by Union Unions. And there is danger for both lurking behind in the slot. Yeah, it was. You know, unique Unions. You thought this race was over, but you know, I think Foolish Ghost just kind of stung him a little bit. He just could not completely go by, and the two is just treading and treading and treading. It's just going to go by. Uh, and, and you watch the six right here kind of, you know, sometimes when a horse goes by, the other horse will sort of go after, and he kind of didn't that day, but Unique Union's. You know, it said six wide upper, but it looked like a lot of the guys wanted to be on the outside mm -hmm. of the track that day. As uh, wet and sloppy as that track was, Foolish Ghost, 10 to 1, 5 to 2 here, Unique Unions, as we go right back to Acacia for this race seven paddock report. Acacia.
And Lafitte, we'll start with the horse that's in terrific form right now. Defusky Island has turned out to be a very good claim for Rudy Rodriguez as he won by nearly 20 lengths for Lesser Company, two back, and then came right back in a race last time that I thought he could be up against it a little bit tactically because there looked to be some other speed in there. That being said, he was still just so dominant, and he has just continued to really flourish in Rudy's care. And sometimes when a, a trainer claims a horse, it's not an indictment on the future barn where they were, but sometimes just a different training program can suit a horse quite well. And a Fusky Island looks like he's stepping in the right direction. He's carried his conditioning uh, from race to race. Sometimes he never looked like he was carrying his muscle mass well. No, that's not the case now. He's incredibly strong yet again. And we'll see if he can pick up another victory with what looks to be like some other speed in the race. I thought the number three, the th thrill of it, could potentially get a nice trip. And I really don't think he's a horse that appreciates a wet track, especially for the barn where John Terranova's horses always tend to be super fit, very refined type of builds. This guy carries a lot of conditioning, and I don't think he looks physically like a horse that would have gotten over a wet track well, and he also just really did not seem to appreciate it in watching the running of the race. So getting onto a fast track today, um, I thought his race two starts back was very strong, and if he can run back to that, I think he's a major player in this spot, and he is strutting his stuff around the paddock. He's on the muscle, but in a good way today, Lafitte. Thrill of it. Keisha likes what she sees. And back to a fast main track. Uh, Paulie, what do you make of his chances at 5-1? to one? I think he's got a giant shot. Um, if you go back and you look, you, you know, he got gelded after that July 28th effort of 2022 where he was dead last. He came back with the best race of his career by far with an 88 buyer and destroyed a field at 9-1. to one, And he was – he broke slow and he just – sort of just went around that field. Um, I'm with totally with Acacia. He was kind of swimming, and he still ran okay against some of these horses in here last time, but he was swimming in, in that slop last time. I thought he was a major player. How about this? They only paid $1,000 <laughs> for him, uh, a Bali Bali for $1,000, and, you know, maybe gelding him did the trick, and I think he, yeah, is a major player. Little less expensive than the winner of the last race, 2.6 million, big engine, two to one currently drawn inside uh, his latest, May 21st right here. Similar company, Richie, Foolish Ghost, big engine running one, two, but again, danger lurking from off the pace. Yeah, it just seems like the horse was just waiting on horses. You could see big engine just, or excuse me, um, Foolish Ghost just waiting on horses and just gets passed by about three of them. And, just gets tired here in the lane. You can see at the end of it, uh, big engine ends up finishing third. You know, it was a race that was, he's a kind of a, a big engine's a tough horse to read, you know, because he's one for nine here at Belmont. Um, his last win, he's won by a nose and a neck in his last two wins over the last two years. So he doesn't win by much. I don't know if you want to take two to one on a horse that actually ran a big effort last time. And the last time this horse ran a big effort, he, he kind of had eight. Can he run back-to-back -back big efforts? The eight-year-old gelding in his 42nd career start, big engine, two to one. Another look at Matty over there. Game face on, foolish ghost. We'll see her in the post parade. Another look at big engine, Jose Ortiz, Linda Rice looking for a third together on the afternoon. No, we just talked about this horse with an eight-year-old by Not For Love. Definitely a player. I mean, 11 for 41 lifetime. Just, I don't know if he can back up that last effort. Keisha liked what she saw. Thrill of it. Yeah, I like this horse, too, as well. I think this horse got a big shot. I know um, he's 0 for 3 over the Belmont Strip, but he might be a different horse since he's been gelded. Unique Unions, currently 3 to 1, second in his last pair. Listen, he's been knocking on the door, and he can show speed. He can rate, so he's very, very uh, versatile type horse for very good conditioner in David Duggan. Number five, Foolish Ghost, Matty Over in the saddle. I would think Matty's on the send. This horse likes to go to the front end and likes Belmont Park, too. Six for 16 lifetime. Then the favorite, Defusky Island, seven to five, five minutes out. Well, you can't deny it. This horse as a four-year-old has just been a different horse. I mean, at least the last two races, one by 19 and then backed it up. The horse to beat. By two-time Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile winner, Golden Sense to Fusky Island, Sealy K. It has been a struggle this year, winless in eight tries. Yeah, Patty Reynolds in the helm. You know, this horse <sighs> ran an okay race behind Unique Unions and Foolish Ghosts. And then, you know, Patty tried this horse on the turf. Maybe back on the dirt will help a little bit. You're getting your price. You're getting a giant price, 28 to 1. 
New York Brett's in the seventh, $45,000 allowance, optional claimer, six furlong sprint, six to five. Not on that, six-year-old Seeley K. Defusky Island, seven to five. You want to take advantage of this. Uh, earn a 20% deposit bonus today uh, by playing with us. Naira Betts deposit $100 and bet at least $100 on Belmont Park uh, to earn a 20% bonus. Opt in at NairaBets.com to earn your 20% deposit bonus. Want to take advantage of that? And we'll see if Defusky Island can take advantage of this field. His most recent, late May. Uh, first start with Rudy Rodriguez, Trevor McCarthy aboard to Fusky Island, battling up front throughout and drawing off late. And you can see Trevor right at the beginning of the video. He had already looked under his arm. He knew he had a, uh, a lot of horse underneath him. And, you know, listen, when a horse wins by 20-some-odd lengths or 19 <laughs> lengths, they get a ton of confidence. And this horse came right back. Acacia kind of mentioned that, you know, he was kind of up against the pace, but he was able to just get the job done. The four was the only horse that kind of made up some ground, but he put away the rest of the speed. He draws outside. Trevor McCarthy uh, knows him well. You know, Foolish Ghost is very fast right to his inside, so I would think he's going to just stay right off his hip. McCarthy at Penn National last night won a race and now trying to strike with Defusky Island seeking a third straight as the favorite even money acacia the second choice will break from the rail and big engine at five to two and red hot connections jose ortiz linda rice that's yeah, the dynamic duo today as they'll team up once again with this horse lafitte and jose ortiz took big, big engine right away from the pony and gave him a pretty strong warm-up and as i had alluded to back in the paddock it looks like there could be some pace in here with the presence of foolish ghost and defusky island even unique unions is not slow but this is a horse that sometimes takes a little bit of time to get into stride and sometimes he doesn't warm up the best. Today, he was striding out nicely, really reaching in the warm up, which is what you like to see. And sometimes he can be a little bit tricky, a little bit um, difficult in the gate, so to speak. And I think that that warm up is speaking to Jose Ortiz, wanting to get him focused, wanting him to pay attention to his job at hand and say, hey buddy, it's game time here. And I like that he took him away, gave him a big gallop out there on the track, as is the case with all of Linda Rice's horses. He's carrying great weight, really strong, and well muscled. Uh, let's see if he can break through uh, the second time in a row with this condition and uh, back with his fellow New York Reds in this spot. And he's a horse that's an 11 time winner. And since he's running for the claiming tag, he's eligible for this condition. Sometimes as you start to get maybe uh, trying to be a little bit too creative with some of the up and comers, Lafitte, you just have to take a second look at the old veteran who knows how to win races. He does know how to Find the winner's circle, and look, whatever Jose Ortiz wants to do, like whatever he wants to do today, it's working. Looking for a third win thus far, and circling back to Thrill of It. I asked you, Paul, what you thought of Thrill of It's chances after Acacia's comments in the paddock, and you both wind up with the same selection on top at a price. Six to one currently, Thrill of It, two minutes to post. Yeah, I mean, listen, this race goes through the six to Fusky Island, I thought, and, you know, big engine, um, as well, but I thought thrill of it, like I said, after that being gelded, you know, to win at nine to one, draw off, and then in his last race, you could just tell he was not liking the wet track at all. Um, and you're getting six to one on, on a horse that I think's got a, a big shot, and you know, a horse that can come from a little bit off the pace. You know, the time he won, he got dead left, so there should be some pace in here, like I said, the five and the six. The worry that you have is the six just so sharp right now that he's just going to bury this field because those last two races are impressive. And this horse is three for four over the Belmont Strip. He likes this racetrack. You know, he he that that double-digit win where he ran up the score and, and, and embarrassed his opponents to Fusky Island. Uh, yeah, that's impressive, and, and that's fine, and, and all good. Um, I liked his most recent effort because he had to mix it up early. Yeah. He, he was right there facing speed, taking heat dishing it out, and in the end, still had enough left to re-break, find a, a another gear, yeah. and go on to a convincing win. Well, you make a great point. I mean, he went two seconds faster in his next race early on in the race. Now, did they come home a little bit slower? Of course, because you, you go so fast early. But he stopped the clock at 110, you know, flat. The time before that, he jogged home at 110 and 3. So, and he was 46 and 2. So, he almost went, you know, 10 lengths slower um, when he won by 19 early in the race, and he had a ton for the, the end. So you're right. He, he was a lot more ga gamer. I don't even know if that's even the right English there, but he was gamer last time out <laughs> than he was when he won by 19, of course. 
Yeah, it was an impressive win. And for Maddie Elver, there she is, Foolish Ghost. This is where all those wall squats pay off. <laughs> those hours and hours of planking. If she's going to pull off the upset, how can she do so with Foolish Ghost? You know, I, listen, Foolish Ghost is the speed of the speed. And, you know, the way she wins this race, if everybody else goes, okay, she's going to back up, and she gets away with soft fractions. See if she can trigger the upset. 16 to 1, Foolish Ghost. Final check of the tote board. Defusky Island, even money. At post time, as Acacia mentioned, watch Big Engine at the gate and how he gets out of the blocks this afternoon. Post time for the 7th of 9 from Belmont. John Embryow standing by. Fusky Island and Silly Key. They're in the gate. And they're off. Defusky Island sent right out for the early lead. Unique Unions came away racing in second. Big Engine is down at the rail. Then Foolish Ghost on the outside, followed by Thrill of It. And the trailer is Silly Key in sixth. Defusky Island challenged here on the outside by Foolish Ghost. And the two of them are right together going into the far turn. Unique Unions sits off of them in third. The quarter one in 22 and three-fifth seconds. Thrill of it. Next in fourth, Big Engine is down at the rail, about seven or eight lengths from the lead. And farther back is Silly Key. Defusky Island, the favorite on the inside, and Foolish Ghost, the long shot on the outside. They are heads apart with Unique Unions racing in third. They're at the top of the stretch now, and it is Defusky Island who has the lead over Foolish Ghost. Half mile in 45 seconds. Unique Unions is on the outside, and in third, it is Defusky Island who is clear by four. Then Foolish Ghost, Unique Unions, big engine down at the rail. Defusky Island continues to roll here at Belmont. Defusky Island with another convincing win, won by almost five, big engine up for second. Unique Unions was third. All right, so it wasn't by 19 lengths, but another convincing win. Defusky Island, razor sharp, three straight as the favorite delivers in the seventh at Belmont. Yeah, as times keep getting faster and faster, 109 and change. And Trevor McCarthy did the right thing. He got a flyer out of the gate, and he said, you know what? I'm going to go to the front end. He must have saw that Matty Oliver got left with the five a little bit, foolish ghost, and said, I'll, I'll just take it to this field. And you know what? The five was able to put just moderate pressure, mm -hmm. but not enough. And, and he was just much the best in here. And Trevor gave this horse a perfect ride. You know, Meg always talks about it. Sometimes when you get a flyer, you got to – you got to make that call right on the beat, and he decided to be aggressive, and it was the right move. Yeah, you saw Matty Oliver turning up the heat, applying as much pressure as she possibly could, as you mentioned, with Foolish Ghost in the end, just tired, as Defusky Island had plenty left with the crop uncocked. Trevor McCarthy, as we mentioned, the win at Penn National last night, the win at Belmont here, and kind of an odd trip for Big Engine from the inside, who went off at 9-5 to five as a second choice. Uh, he broke fine, but then he dropped back on the inside and then kind of re-rallied late, almost like running in spots this afternoon. Yeah, it was weird. When he he kind of broke, and he was trying to get up inside early in the race, and I don't know if he was really digging it up in there, and he started a little bit of a rally. You know, the three that I liked just didn't run a step at all. He was trying to to move, but not. Nah, the Fusky Island was just so much better than this group. A big engine did get up. For a second, yeah. it was a grind fest for a second. But you know, you're right. I don't know if he kind of liked it too much inside horses, but that's a forward step for this horse. You know, he's getting a little bit better and better out of the gate, and you know, and a horse it's probably going to be favored next time he runs. The Fusky Island, yeah, he's digging it up in here. As Paul mentioned, the Fusky Island now four for five at Belmont, even money favorite. By daylight, 6145 results. Reaction as our coverage continues from beautiful Belmont Park. You're watching America's Day at the Races on Fox Sports 2. They're off in the Breeders' Cup to the
exciting day of thoroughbred racing continues from Belmont. You're watching America's Day at the Races. As always, brought to you in part by Naira Betts. At any track, anywhere, anytime, visit NairaBets.com or download the Naira Betts app to get started. Maybe you had your account fired up and locked in on the favorite. Fusky Island with Trevor McCarthy entering the winner's circle for a third straight time as New York bred son of two-time Breeders' Cup dirt mile winner Golden Sense. Yeah, congratulations to this, like you said. And then the bottom side, Mount Livermore, Mare, Livermore Valley. And Trevor gets another W. You were talking about him last night. He took a horse gate to wire yep. national. Did the same thing today in race number seven. Mount Livermore may have competed in the 85 Breeders' Cup at Aqueduct. Maybe. Goes back, goes back away. Goes back away. I don't think Trevor McCarthy was watching that Breeders' <laughs> Cup in 85, but he is standing by in the winner's circle with a cation. And the winner's circle is definitely the place to be. Lafitte, Trevor with Defusky Island. Trevor, it's funny. I heard you come back to the winner's circle, and you said, I just heard Rudy's voice in my head saying, go. Yeah, look, he broke super fast, and the four and the five had some really quick speed as well. But, uh, you know, this this guy, he's pretty sharp leaving there, and uh, – once I kind of outbroke them guys, I'm like, okay, see you later. Let me take control of the race here. And, um, you know, we got a nice, easy first quarter. And after that first quarter, I said, I, I got it one from here. I got a little bit of pressure um, from the half-mile pole home, but um, he was just moving so comfortable. And I, as soon as I pushed the button on him, he just took off. He's such a cool little horse. And, and he is a little horse, but at least he's broad. And for a tall jockey, uh, talk about finding your balance and, and making sure that you do the right thing by, the, by your horse. Yeah, it's important. And uh, with a horse like him, he's really easy. You know, he kind of, he's push button and he levels off really nice. You know, he kind of runs with that head a little bit low where I can kind of get a short hold of him. And he's one that he kind of likes the throwing of the reins and kind of just flagging him other than, you know, really giving him a hit or two. Um, he really responds well from kind of a really strong hair ride, and uh, that's what I kind of did. I just kind of stayed out of his way and just kind of threw the reins at him and just kind of shook him up all the way down the lane, and he seemed to really run good today. We saw you in the winter circle at Penn National last night, too. Tell me about the hustle and, and covering all your grounds here. Yeah, look, uh, that, that filly came, uh, she came over here to Belmont, and I worked her on the grass. She didn't work very good, and uh, they wanted to run her here on Sunday, and that's Stanley Series States. Um, so they skipped that and Tyler Connor was on vacation and, uh, they asked me to come down and ride her and, uh, get to know her and, uh, she got the money. Uh, she worked for it last night, but she seems pretty game and she's a nice little New York bride. So, um, we're kind of chasing those around this summer. Well, it, that's all the hard work that'll pay off, but congratulations on the win here, Trevor. Thanks so much, Acacia. The Fusky Island in terrific form right now, Lafitte. Trevor, uh, almost working as hard as, as you the last 24 <laughs> hours or so, Polly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, awesome stuff there from Trevor. And like like he said, like, to take the initiative and go to the front end and get the job done. And the pick five follow along. Please advise he's going to play a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. Because when you have two Wesley Wards in that fifth race that got played, I know George Weaver's has a pistol right now. You're not lying. And then gun it, you get the entry, but they were second choice. So finally you get a favorite. By the way, I was looking at Mount Livermore. He won the Carter here. Third in the Breeders' Cup Sprint. Was it 85? Yes, it was. Man, I'm good. To precisionist <laughs> and smile. How about those two horses? Precisionist trained up to that Breeders' Cup. Wow. Smile won the following year. Ross Fenstemaker, precisionist. He could do it all. He was like a he was like Ghost Zapper yeah. before Ghost Zapper, kind winning of, yeah. Grade One races at classic distances and at a sprint distance. That's going back a yeah. long long time. Uh, important for Trevor McCarthy and any rider here to get their momentum going with what's going to take place in three weeks. Uh, opening day of the 155th season of racing at Saratoga. Can't wait to see that crowd and all of you up there at the spa three weeks from today. Most prestigious race meet in North America. Live coverage right here. Saratoga Live returns July 13th. Eight weeks of racing. A stakes race every day. Wall to wall graded stakes activity on the weekends where we're going to spend a lot of time this summer on uh, Big Fox. Uh, Saturdays on Fox. Uh, six of them from the Coaching Club American Oaks to the Travers and everything in between Saratoga's most prestigious races this summer only on Fox. And the giveaways for the fans. Fans love this. They Look got that bucket hat. They got Look the best at that bucket hat. They got the best quality giveaways, by the way. Uh, listen, you and Acacia are sitting on gold. All right, if this horse racing thing doesn't work out, selling that tote bag last week with imported pleather from North Hempstead, I think I heard you say. Yes, it was. That was awesome. Yeah, and then uh, Acacia wanted to be 
me to be a hand model, but that's out of the question. Consider I've broken all my hands. There, there you see the cooler jug, the dry fit t-shirt. That dry fit t-shirt is no joke. The bucket hat and then the tote bag. I already have a zillion people trying to hit me up for the bucket hat. I'm like, man, listen, I haven't got it from the manufacturer yet, okay? Gotta rock that Gilligan look. Right? You know? Hey, Worked for him for a couple spots 25 go years. Fishing. Lots. You can, two, go, two. You can go golfing. In it. You can go old school and go golfing in it too. <laughs> those are all on a, a Fridays at Saratoga. All of those giveaways. The fans love the giveaways, especially a horse racing fan and a giveaway from Saratoga. Yeah, you know the thing about Saratoga is, is like everybody always asks me, "What's Saratoga like?" Just come. It's a festival of fun. There's food trucks. There's everything you want. It's New York City in a racetrack. Whenever you, whatever you want, you can get it. I mean, I, 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 that's how I can describe it. You want a pizza, you want a sub, you want crabs, you want this, you want that, you want a better horse, you got it all. We'll be back there in three weeks, opening day of the 155th season of racing at Saratoga. We'd love to see you there. If you can't make it, of course, live coverage daily right here on Fox and Saratoga Live. Coverage continues. Horses in the paddock for the eighth race. Post time, 18 minutes. The paddock report, riders up, and a post parade when we come back. Stay tuned. Precocity. Strategic speed. Some speed at two, but can carry it on through their later careers. Improbable, full of run. Improbable, now a grade one winner. It is a complete runaway, an authoritative run. It's improbable to win the Whitney. It's America's original sport, and no one covers it better than AmericasBestRacing.net. From the sport to the lifestyle, the best races, horses, and destination venues, cocktails, gambling, fashion, and more. AmericasBestRacing.net is a sport for you. They say breed the best of the best and hope for the best. Macoma broke well on the outside. And but you don't right. expect to get speed like this. It is Macoma, the one to catch. Macoma has a five-length lead in this grade one corner. Monmouth Park's summer season rolls on with live racing action Friday through Sunday. Friday's features a 2 p.m. first post, while weekend action begins at 12.40, kicking off the win early, pick five. Home to full, competitive fields, and big paydays, Monmouth Park continues to prove itself as a place to profit. Joining us on site? Be sure to lock in your odds with fixed odds wagering at Monmouth Park Racetrack. him run away. Worthington is rolling up to second to the outside of one in Vermillion. It is Golden Bandit with a lead of four. One in Vermillion puts his mind back on running, but it's too late. And Golden Bandit steals the Canterbury Derby. An exciting fun night of racing at Canterbury last night and the headline event, the Canterbury Derby, all about Golden Bandit and a pickup mount well ridden by Adam Biscitza. Yeah, great job by Cody Razine. I mean, not many times you claim a horse from Brad Cox for 12500 and then you put the horse on, on the turf, and I, you know, I ended up finding out after the race they had worked the horse on the turf before he'd ran first time on it, and he, he had worked so well, Cody was like, you know, let's just run him on the turf, let's check a box. And he went off at three to five, and it was a weak field, but he did it so nicely, and he did it nicely again last night, just laying off one under Vermillion, who was kind of weird that he kind of was lost on the turf, and then he yeah. came running back. And then high front was so special. I mean, getting left and missing the track record by 0.03 seconds. Crazy. Big night for Lancheroux. Yes. Jonathan Thomas as well. 
Augustine's table. Augustine, two stakes wins. Uh, Thomas and Giroux, three apiece. Uh, aside from the Bugler and his all-world <laughs> talent, uh, what were some of the highlights for you as we lock in on Florent Giroux, who didn't even have to change his, his silks, and very similar trips in two of those three stakes wins. One was planned to take the horse well off the pace. The other, as you mentioned, was not. No, you know, in the, I, I, the one thing I took away from this, listen, Flo is a world-class jockey. He'd only ridden for Jonathan Thomas twice during the Crazy. year. Now he's four for five for him. But the Minnesota Breds, they held their own um, as well. Mac Robertson was one as well. Um, but Flo showed his skills last night. And Jonathan Thomas had his horses ready. And Fuerte Ventura just started it off. Listen, he, he got home by an absolute <laughs> nostril in a basically a six-horse uh, uh uh, photo in that race, and then I think that just kicked off Flo's night. And then after that, he almost set a, a track record. He was second with Flashy Jim, third with Worthington, and like I said, he almost set a track record with High Front. And let's say Regal Realm was very impressive as well. Yeah, uh, I thought his mount wasn't going to ride in the Canterbury Derby. His mount scratched, and then he picked up Worthington when uh, Luffberry wound up with a shoulder injury and couldn't ride the remainder of the evening. Worthington could do no better than third, but it's such a it's a fun night, you know. I mean, you look ahead to Thistle Down in the Ohio Derby, uh, the Pennsylvania Derby now a Grade One, of course, yeah. but at Parks when you have the the biggest day or evening of the year at one of these smaller race tracks it is always such a fun event. No, it was it was so, it was a ton of fun and people coming up to you and saying, "Hey, we watch the show all the time." Um, we tuned into you guys as well, and you know, to hear that, it's just, I get more pleasure out of that. Listen, I played baseball way too long ago. I'd rather <laughs> get compliments from me doing this and than hitting baseballs. <laughs> Meantime, here at Belmont, horses in the paddock for the eighth. Is that price correct? Five to one, big brass bed for Chad Brown. Manny Franco to ride, surprising her maiden win last month, Monmouth. That was Sammy Camacho riding Paul, big brass bed. Uh, perfect trip that afternoon uh, behind the dueling leaders accelerating late. Yeah, good win. Philly by Nyquist. It's an Ontario bred. You know, his horse was in the Lisa Lewis barn, and then Chad picked his horse up. Sammy Camacho is a very underrated rider. He's a heck of a turf rider, too. Manny Franco now gets... So I'm wondering if this horse was a uh, private purchase for Mr. Peter Brand, but I thought this Philly had a big shot in here. Um, nine to five on the morning line, so a little bit an overlay right now. We'll monitor five to one if you like her for the moment. Big brass bed for owner Peter Brandt, Chad Brown, Manny Franco to ride. Again, we'll check in with Acacia for her paddock report. When we come back, riders up the post parade. Eighth of nine from Belmont as our coverage continues. Stay tuned. You're watching America's Day at the Races. Catholic board. A grade one winner on both dirt and turf, including this romp in the run happy Travers Stakes. He's so impressive today, the others didn't even have a prayer. This six time graded stakes winner was the fastest three year old of his crop over 10 furlongs. At the sales, his first crop yearling sold up to $300,000. Dual surface grade one winner, Catholic Boy, standing at Claiborne Farm.
Rava has come on through to take the lead. And War Emblem has given way. No Triple Crown for the 24th year. Here comes Sarava and Medallia Doro. They're striding to the line together. Sarava on the outside. Medallia Doro toward the rail. They're coming down to the finish. A huge upset is looming here under the line. Sarava has won. Biggest upset in the history of the Belmont Stakes. Sarava star jockey Edgar Prado. War Emblem's Triple Crown bid denied, puts away Medallia Doro Sarava in one of many, many grade one wins in the Hall of Fame career of Edgar Prado. Yeah, pretty crazy. I mean, he's got a ton of wins. His first grade one win was the Budweiser International in 1991. Wow. And you can keep going on. He's had a Kentucky Derby. He's got a Belmont. He's got a Kentucky Oaks as well. Um, 7,000 wins. Man. That is a lot of wins, folks. A lot of wins. And that's not including his wins he had in Peru before he came over here. Had a pretty good 97, 535 wins. First name that comes to mind, Barbaro. Yes. In that, as Tom Durkin described it, sublime performance in the 2006 Kentucky Derby. Edgar Prado calling it a career, one of the very best. Retiring, and what a career. Pulling off the biggest upset, 70 to 1, Sarava in the 2002 Belmont Stakes. Three-year-old Phillies here in the eighth race. Riders up in a moment. We check in with Acacia for this Race 8 Paddock Report. And Lafitte, uh, I want to talk about your favorite root cause, trackside and seas warm-up. So touch on a couple other potential alternatives, starting with the number six, Coral. Uh, this filly comes out of the soaring softly in a race that was dominated on the front end. The top two finishers ran 2-1 around the racetrack, and she was pretty far back and going seven furlongs off a layoff. I think she is the type of filly that needs to race into fitness and get stronger, and she also wants some more distance. She has a lot of length to her frame. She's big. She's sharp. She's very strong in here. I think this is the right spot for Quarrel, who uh, her lone route race on the turf was her win. And she took a lot of money early on because she did have a big pedigree for the turf. But I think that she's finally getting a chance to do what she wants, not to mention a little class relief. The number eight, Big Brass Bed. The other one for Chad Brown. Now, Peter Brandt does keep a handful of horses with Lisa Lewis down in Florida at Payson Park. And um, so this one started in his silks with Lisa before being transferred to Chad Brown. And uh, sometimes some of the, the stronger ones will do just that. And one impressively at Monmouth last time out. The question is, can she repeat that effort? She's a leggy filly uh, by Nyquist. I do wish that overall she had a little bit more muscle mass to her. She's a very lightly framed type. But that being said, uh, she settled in kind of a stocking trip. Closing took, well, took over well against the others last time out. We'll see if she can uh, do just the same as she faces winners for the first time today. Lafitte. Still hanging up there at five to one, Acacia. Big brass bed for connections that typically get over bet. Peter Brandt, Chad Brown, not on this occasion. Nine to two, Manny Franco in the saddle. Paulie, the handicapper, zeroing in on root cause now eight to five, also trained by Chad Brown. Yeah, a horse that was one and 20 cents in a dollar at Gulfstream Park. So you wonder how Really good that field was at one to five, and then transferred over to um, Churchill Downs. I was actually there that day. It was six to five, and she just didn't fire at all. She kind of just went towards the front end, showed where you know her speed a little bit. She was kind of like too wide trying to press, and she just stopped at the top of the lane. That was going a mile and eighth. Maybe the one turn will help her today. Emerging from the tunnel post parade, we start with Stephanie's charm. And uh, one win thus far, and that was on a synthetic track. Yeah, you're right. And 0 for 6 over the turf. But for a hot trainer, and Junior Alvarado gets aboard. 9 to 1, if you like her. Stephanie's charm, number 2 here in trying my heart out. Uh, not much since her maiden win. Yeah, she got on the turf in her maiden win at 23 to 1. But like you said, she hasn't really done much. In her last race at Monmouth, she was a mid-pack. Fast Kimmy, not quick, not fast leaving the gate. You know, she wasn't that bad for going first time going long. So a 10 to 1, if you're looking for a long shot, she's not awful here. Root cause, uh, Jeff Drown, Chad Brown, team's hand in, favored. Really tough horse to read. I was, I'm surprised this horse is the favorite, although 2 to 1 on the morning line. Life, love, and laughter. Great name, blinkers on 3 to 1. Yeah, and a horse that's kind of run decent in almost all of her starts, so maybe the blinkers will make her turn the corner. 
Coral needs to break better this afternoon. The needed class relief Acacia touched on. I think this one's got a big shot in here. You know, got on the turf for the first time going long in one, and then last time didn't disgrace herself in the soaring softly. Maybe you just play jockeys blind. Maybe you're a Flavian Pratt fan. You're getting a price. Tap it up. Currently 18 to 1. Yeah, it took 10 tries to break her maiden, but sometimes a, a light bulb can go on. So if you like Flavian Pratt, which a lot of people do, you're getting <laughs> and at a big price. The overlay. Big brass bed, 9 to 5 in the morning line, 9 to 2, four minutes out. Yeah, impressive last time at Monmouth Park. And to try to repeat with Manny Franco aboard a Philly by Nyquist, Ontario bred. I like the way she's warming up. I mean, she'll probably come down, I would think, around that 7 2 area. Real class connections, big brass bed, that's the field. Eighth race, post time, three minutes. As always, we invite you to get involved, sign up. Join us at Naira Bets and take advantage of that $200 deposit match bonus. Sign up, use that promo code BONUS200, earn up to a $200 deposit match after your first deposit. But any track, anywhere, anytime, join now. NairaBets.com to earn your $200 deposit match. Stephanie's charm. There she is, Junior Alvarado. Met mile win on the undercard of the Belmont Stakes. Cody's wish and quarrel. And this is what we're talking about, Polly, that she needs to get out of the blocks better than she did in the grade three soaring softly that cost her that afternoon. Yeah, it did. I mean, she just, she didn't break bad. If you go back and look at her, her first couple steps were okay, and then she, she stumbled. And sometimes, you know, Mick can attest to it. You just, whenever that happens, it, it, it takes a sting out of a horse late. Now, she had a decent trip. She was kind of covered up, but that stumble starts to take in about right now. It's just like, it's just really hard. And, it, you know, when you watch so many races over your lifetime, when a horse stumbles like that in, in, a, in a really tough field, it's just, they just don't really have that kick late. So I like that she keeps on trying, keeps on grinding. Um, and with a better break today, I think she's going to uh, run a better race. Five to one is a very good price on her. Taken out of her comfort zone. She had done her best work in the mix, prompting the pace, and uh, far back after the stumble and he's soaring softly. We'll see if Coral gets out of the blocks better this afternoon. Now, so Rup Kaz, who's 8-5 to five in the favorite here, if she's going to be effective, what's the key to success this afternoon with a Rad Ortiz in the saddle? That's a good question. I mean, the, the race that the source won at 1-5, to five, there was not much in there. I mean, Irad rode the horse seven wide. I mean, like the horse was 1-5. to five. The Churchill race is confusing. So... I don't know. Usually Chad's horses do bounce back. I love that this horse has gotten some, at least, what, four works over here at Belmont. So it's been in New York for a little while. So maybe this horse can turn the corner. But I don't know about three to two. When the outside horse, he ate it at four to one. I, I'm surprised. I thought they'd be a little bit closer. What is it, Acacia? The Chad Brown Phillies, are you surprised at which one the wagering public is leaning on? Root cause instead of big brass bed? I am a bit Lafitte. Now, Root Cause is the half sister to multiple graded stakes winner Vertical Oak, who's a dirt sprinter. This filly has been going a mile and an eighth on the turf recently. And physically, she does look more like a turf, hoof. She, a turf horse. She has that flat turf hoof that we talk about, um, a little bit more of the physique for the conditions. That said, I feel like Paul's correct. The money that she's taken without really delivering against top competition. I think her stable mate has a little bit more blue sky and I also liked the warm up from Big Brass Bed better. I mentioned I wanted to see how Root Cause was moving because she just wasn't moving as freely as I would have liked back in the paddock at the walk and she had a very quiet subdued warm up never left the pony which I would have liked to see a bit more of a gallop from her. Um, thought that the five li life love and laughter she could get a clean trip. Intriguing Lafitte. Interesting how this one's being played. See how it all unfolds as they move into line. Mile and a 16th, three-year-old Phillies. Final check of the tote board reading, root cause at three to two. Johnny I standing by, eighth of nine, live from Belmont. Waiting for root cause and big brass bed. They're all in.
and uh, they're off. Stephanie's Charm, along with Trying My Heart Out, and Fast Kimmy is right there as they make the move around the bend and head for the back stretch. Fast Kimmy has come away with the lead. Trying My Heart Out down at the rail. And now Quarrel moves up on the outside to grab third. Life, Love, and Laughter is in fourth. Stephanie's Charm had a steady there down on the inside in fifth. Also steadying there was Root Cause. On the outside is Tap It Up, and the trailer is Big Brass Bed in eighth. The quarter went in 24 and three-fifth seconds. Trying my heart out as the leader here by a half length with Fast Kimmy running in second. Quarrel in the clear on the outside in third. Stephanie's Charm in behind the front runners and in fourth. Alongside is Life, Love, and Laughter in fifth position, but just three lengths from the lead. Then comes Tap It Up, Root Cause. Big Brass Bed is still at the back. The half mile went in 48 and four. Trying my heart out. Leads here by a length with Fast Kimmy in pursuit in second. Quarrel now makes a move on the outside from third. Stephanie Charm is down at the rail. And she's followed by Life, Love, and Laughter. And tap it up. The trailers are root cause and big brass bed. Three quarters in one, 12 and four. Trying my heart out. Fast Kimmy. Quarrel on the outside, looking to come through. Down on the inside is Stephanie's Charm. Gaining ground out in the middle of the course is Root Cause. Then comes Quarrel. It is trying my heart out. Life, love, and laughter has made a move now into second. Root Cause continues to gain on the outside. Trying my heart out. Trying to pull off an upset here. Trying my heart out. Trying my heart out at 42 to one. A formful day at Belmont Park for the most part. Until that, massive upset, 40 to one, trying my heart out, stealing this eighth race at Belmont Park. Wow. Yeah, great job by the, the, the bug boy who just took the horse to the front end here for Jose Cameo and just kept on finding. You know, the six was wide, most they quarreled. Check out the eight on the far outside when she swings out. I think she takes a bad step when she tries to swing all the way on the outside. She, right there, look see at that? that? Yeah, she almost went down the eight, and you gotta give credit, wow, Manny Franco kept on riding the eight, but everybody is there, and one of my buddies that roots all the time, sometimes we'll have a horse like this, he always says, build a wall! <laughs> well, a wall was built, and wow, 42 to one in a short field. This is gonna spice up this pick five. Love and laughter. Jose Ortiz gave that horse a big ride. Root cause. You know, the eight big brass bed, it would have been interesting if she wouldn't have taken that stumble, would she have been able to get up? That was, uh, uh, she almost went down. Funky step, took a yeah. bad step. Yeah, fortunate to stay on her feet, trying my heart out, doing just that, digging, digging to her inside. Life, love, and laughter, and here, Root Cause, the favorite, putting in a late bid, but too late, trying my heart out, has flown the coop. Yeah, 112, got away with 113 and change, and gosh, when they come back to the winner's circle, they never look like a loser, don't they? They look even better when they run, don't That's they? Right, if you had it, especially 42 <laughs> to one, and for Jason Gerson, the apprentice, what a moment for him, and a second win at Belmont Park, and, and to do so, you've got Jose Ortiz chasing you from the inside, you've got Arad Ortiz, the brothers, and Root Cause trying to run you down. The apprentice here able to get every ounce out of trying my heart out and holds on at a massive price and a massive upset. Yeah, this is a massive upset. The more you look at it, you know, the numbers weren't that far off. You know, it's hindsight that this horse probably should have been 42 to 1, but a great job by Jason and a lot of heart. Great job by Jose Cameo as well. Britland Stable winning owners. Jose Cameo, who you just saw, you just saddled a 42 to 1 winner at Belmont Park, trying my heart out. In the eighth, results, reaction, and a driving finish. 2 5 4 8. We'll be right back.
Experience the adrenaline pumping, suspense filled action of the Sport of Kings no matter where you are with Naira Vets. It's fast, easy, and secure. Download the app today and start winning with our lucrative weekly promotions, thrilling handicapping contests, and a one of a kind VIP rewards program. Don't just watch horse racing, be a part of the action with Naira Vets. Last September broke records. It brought the energy, the magic, the momentum. And this year, it all returns. Only at the World Yearling Sale. Keeneland, September. There's a big, bold, beautiful world waiting to be explored by you and your friends, of course. But not just any friends, the best of friends. The kind of friends who let you do you. Because in this world, it's positive vibes only. And when you get in the zone here, you stay a while. These aren't just good times, they're the best of times. And your time is now. So come explore. Resorts World. Dust settling following that big upset in race number eight. And the winner circle lead in as they circle about for a moment with trying my heart out. Winner circle lead in brought to you by the Phasic Tipton July sales of selected yearlings and horses of racing age July 10th and 11th in Lexington, Kentucky. Where will you be? Trying my heart out. She is in the winner circle. $42.87 for your would be $2 investment. Game effort, life, love, and laughter. Root caused the favorite with some trouble having to settle for third. Winning trainer Jose Camejo pulling off the upset, standing by with the case in the winner's circle. A big prize winner for a beautiful filly, trying my heart out. She lived up to her name, Jose. As you and I were talking about it, she got pretty headstrong in her last couple of races. And you said, go to the lead, it paid off today. Yes, the last two races, she's been in trouble the whole way. So I told the guy today, just, you know, just trying to take the lead and see what happened. But I think she needs to go to the lead and feel free. And she, you know, let him go and, you know, easy in the first turn, in the first quarter. And, you know, when come from home, I said she's going to be tough to beat and, and she's gotten done. She lived up to her name today too, huh? She really dug in. She re-rallied. She did. She, you know, she get everything right there. I feel like, you know, she's getting better and better as a, as a, as a, as a three-year-old. I have a lot of, you know, a lot of high on her. Um, hopefully after this race, she's start getting more mature because she's still green in her mind. But she showed today that, you know, she's going she's to be a nice horse. And mentally, she's still figuring things out. Physically, she's very mature, too. There's a lot of her. Yeah, she's just a big filly, you know. My only buyer to sell because she see a lot of talent on her. So today, you know, she, she, she showed that, you know, she can have some talent. So hopefully, in Saratoga, we can run some state races. So that's, that's going to be the plan. The dream's alive, right? Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> we got we to gotta dream. You don't dream, you will never, you will never know. That's what it's all about. Congratulations. Thank you. We look forward to seeing Dry My Heart Out. Maybe tackle some big ones up in the spa, Lafitte. <laughs> like, the, like the cat that ate the canary. Polly, I don't know that Canejo's as surprised as the rest of us. Yeah, right? He's giving us a fist bump right there. Yeah, listen, sometimes you put a filly on the front end, she gets brave. He talked about his la last two times. Sometimes you run into a, a race where you can't get the front end, but this big filly by Into Mischief out of a Malibu mare, moon mare, Miss Hollywood decided to spike up this pick four. And if you're alive, the lowest you can do is the three Hilliard at 3,500. That'll work. And if you have the six, the six's name is Prayer Brook, get out the prayer. 62,000, oh, excuse me, 83,000 for 50 cents. So a nice little prayer can make that work. That'll, yeah, yeah. that'll work. Uh, kind of a theme <laughs> on this Thursday afternoon. What took place this morning at Royal Ascot will revisit in just a moment. This ninth race, would you like in this $35,000 claimer on grass to close the show? I thought, you know, the three and the four were going to be the two horses in here to be, you know, and the board's kind of showing that. I also thought the one and the nine were the others in here. That's coming up next, ninth and final post time, 20 minutes after that big upset at Belmont. Meantime, overseas, George Weaver, a week he'll never forget with his wife Cindy in the UK and a win. 
at Royal Ascot. Crimson Advocate by a flared nostril in the Queen Mary. We'll revisit as our coverage continues. You're watching Fox Sports 2, America's Day at the Races. Good Magic's going to win his first race, and he's going to do it in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Here's Mage coming strongly down the outside. Angel and Empire is putting in his run, and there's one for Lund to run. Two bills on the inside. Try to hold on, Mage. Mage is taking the lead here. He's coming in the final 16, and it is going to be Mage to win the Kentucky Derby. The classic sire. The nightcap left here at Belmont Park. You're watching America's Day at the Races, as always. Brought to you in part by Claiborne Farm. 100 years doing the usual unusually well. Could have given me 100 years, and I wouldn't have found the winner of the Norfolk this morning overseas, day three at Royal Ascot. And what took place there, uh, the equaling the biggest upset in the history of racing at the Royal Meeting, Valiant Force at 150 to one, Polly, with Ross Ryan, 151 to one, bombs away in the Norfolk. Wow. I wonder what the bookmakers, because you know you have the bookmakers. Outside. And the horse uh, won. 487 to one, bet but, fair. Wow, that's crazy. And here's the thing, the horse won easy. I mean, it's not like the horse got up by a nose or whatever. It won easy at 150 to one and came home in 11 and change, stopped the clock at 59 and change. Wow, crazy. 478 to one if you had a future, and somebody or some people are cashing some big tickets. That's amazing. 150 to one. You're just not going to see that anymore here. You know, we've seen the rich strike effect already happen here in the United States. You mean, we had horses that were running in the Belmont, like Air the Miracle horse or whatever. Mm -hmm. That horse should have been 100 to one, but you're not going to see that a lot, 80 some odd to one, like Rich Strike anymore. So to see a horse at 150 to one is amazing. Yeah, along with uh, Nando in the Coventry several years back, the two biggest upsets in the history of racing at Royal Alaska that goes back a thousand years, yeah. it seems. The jockey said, like, I couldn't believe what price he was. Just an incredible outcome. Uh, not the, the, Race that uh, Wesley Ward was yeah. hoping to see from American Rascal. He was disappointing this afternoon, uh, leaving the door open for another valiant force and a massive upset in the Norfolk at Royal Alaska this morning. And then uh, uh, yesterday, uh, the feel-good story of yeah. the meet thus far and the lone victory for the Americans in the Queen Mary Stakes and Crimson Advocate for George Weaver, wife Cindy there, John Velasquez here, strikes the front in a slugfest to the wire, Polly, every time I see it. Every time I see it, I think she gets beat. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, Johnny V, right at the end, he's hands and heels. He's he he's now asking just a tiny bit, but if you can watch, he's still waiting to use the crop. Now he dry, drives with the crop, 
and the other horse tries to saddle up side of him on the inside, and it turns into a head bob. But Johnny did a, mm. just a great job to push, and it's just crazy how these guys know where the wire's at. Because watch Johnny D push down right there at the end of that wire and get the bob of all bobs. I mean, when I watched this race, I kept going on. I'm like, he either won this race or it's a dead heat. But when you watch this close, he's flagging, he's flagging. And just at the right at the end, he's going to hit the horse one more time with the crop, try to get a little bit extra, and then he's going to push to the line. And with that strong right here, right there, you see him going, I'm going to the line now because i got to win this bob. i got to put the whip away. And he got it done. Fourth win at the Royal Meeting for John Velasquez. Black type thoroughbreds, Randy Hill, Swing Bank Stables. Uh, so many great storylines, um, but sentimental, the word just doesn't really cover it for George Weaver and his wife, Cindy, uh, being able to make the trip after suffering yeah. a serious brain injury at Saratoga just last summer in a morning training accident. It's been a long, long road to recovery that continues, but the fact that she was able to make the trip with George and, and enjoy that moment, that incredible moment, and win together. No, it's an awesome feeling. I mean, listen, what he, what the family's gone through uh, as well, and to have a horse go to Ascot and win, I would think it's got to be George's one, a, a dream. And his wife has been beside him through all this as well. And George, you know, one thing about George, he hasn't played the poor me card at all. He's been supportive through all this. Um, you know, he, he went through a tiny bit, of, a little bit of a, a rut training, um, and then he got hot at Saratoga last year. Obviously, the accident with, with his wife, but he handled it with such class. And, you know, um, karma comes around, and he deserves this. Him and his family and his wife, they deserve this. Crimson Advocate, what a story. In yesterday's Queen Mary, uh, we've seen the American contingent perhaps stronger season after season. Yeah. We've seen many familiar faces there, including Maggie Wolfendale, Ernie Munich. There they are over the week there at Ascot. You expect, you know, Maggie's gonna look incredible, right? <laughs> but look at Ernie in his morning suit and top hat. Yeah, Ernie looking sharp. Five foot eight, six foot four with the top hat. <laughs> and, and, and Acacia, time ticking away until uh, your flight takes off for the UK, yes? <laughs> Yes, uh, flying out uh, at 9 o'clock tonight, Luffy, and uh, my carry-on is my hat box, so I can certainly understand as you have to abide by the wardrobe rules over at Royal Ascot, but it'll be my first time experiencing it, so really excited for that. We have a uh, big invasion running on Saturday in what's now the Queen Elizabeth II Jubilee in honor of the late Queen, which is, I know, very special as my husband, Miguel, who uh, he and I will be going to represent the stable. His, his family used to actually train for the Queen, so I know Kristoff has some incredibly fond memories of, of training for Queen Elizabeth and her passion for racing. And Big Invasion, who we just saw on Belmont Stakes Day, run second behind Caravelle in the grade one Jiper. The plan had been to consider Royal Ascot if he came out well from the Jiper. So it is a quick turnaround, just two weeks, and he will run the six furlongs with a little bit of an uphill run against 15 other horses. So uh, it will be definitely a competitive race. The Australian look quite tough but how exciting to have the opportunity to go there and experience it and for owner Dean Reeves uh, Luffy and Paul this has been a dream of his after having a horse named Hotsy Totsy run in an undercard race a few years back he's wanted to come back to Royal Ascot with a big chance in his silks and we'll get to do that this weekend with Big Invasion. Acacia for the handicappers for the punters your level of confidence Big Invasion this weekend? One thing I know about this horse, he thrives off racing. I'm not concerned about the quick turnaround. He's been stabled in Newmarket. My husband got there this morning and he said the horse is doing tremendous. The turf is firm. So those are all the things that we can hope for. Um, now we just have to see if he gets a good trip. Jim Crowley will be riding him for the first time, a local jockey who actually won uh, the Prince of Wales this week. So he's in good form too, Lafitte. Have a great trip, Acacia. Best of luck, big invasion on Saturday at Royal Ascot. Meantime here, well, Tom Morley well represented with a sonic speed, currently nine to two picture. Trevor McCarthy to ride, looking for a second win on the afternoon. Uh, news on the pick six and a potential carryover as our coverage continues.
The momentum continues for War Dancer as Ms. Big Bucks goes wire to wire. Ms. Big Bucks will pull off the upset in the nightcap. Her full brother, Bucker 2, and Brennan's War score a War Dancer exacta. Bucker 2 in front, Brennan's War on the outside. The two of them come on for the finish, and it is Bucker 2. And New York Anthem kicks off the year going a perfect two for two. New York Anthem not going down without a fight. Shouldn't you have a War Dancer? War Dancer, proud to stand in New York. Today, there is no finer place in all of sports. Nerves, excitement, and anticipation. The beautiful, truly stunning. <laughs> For the Breeders' Cup World Championships. The Cross Country Pick 5 combines the best racing from New York with top races from around the country in one bet. Find it in your track menu and play this weekend. Races and free PPs posted at Naira.com slash cross country. Race Lens is the most in-depth product in horse racing with unique features found nowhere else. True odds, predictive analysis, and pace projection. Race Lens, it will change the way you follow horse racing and take your game to the next level. Racetrack Television Network brings you every race, every race. from every track, every track, on every screen, every, screen. every day. Every day. With monthly packages starting as low as $5, RTN gives you great value and access to more live HD streaming and race replays than anyone. Visit RTN.TV today to sign up and watch on almost any device, including Roku and Amazon Fire. RTN has packages that start at $5 per month. Gearing up for the ninth and final on a Thursday at Belmont Park. Riders up momentarily as Flavie M. Pratt. Current favorite at two to one. Number four, Splendid Summer in his $35,000 claimer, mile and a 16th on a firm turf course, uh, Polly, and the possibility of a pick six carryover, only two are covered. Yeah, only two are covered in here. The three and the 11. Not I, the favorite. Not the favorite. The four in here, Splendid Summer. The three Hilliard, I, I can understand. You know, you get Ired Ortiz and Mike Maker, and a lot of people will say, okay, yeah, um, you know, it's Mike Maker and them. But this is a horse that has back class to go to. This is Jordan Wyckoff from Three Diamond Farms. And this horse has got races with feet that would win this race, but can this horse way, get way, back to this? Way back. Yeah. yeah. yeah that, this is over a year ago. That's uh, true. His last win. So can he reach back and find this stuff? And bring it this afternoon. Yeah, you know, it was in the Michael Mako barn at that time. You know, this horse at one time, I know 69 to 1 in the Hill Prince in 2021, but was fourth in that race and behind Baltus. He's been behind some really good horses, but, you know, that was a year, year and a half ago. His last couple of races at Turfway Park, you can maybe say he didn't love the synthetic. He drops to an all time low. He's still only age five, so. I don't mind the, the drop there. So I think he'll end up going off as the favorite. Um, he's the lowest in the will pays. It's going to be close between the, the three and the four. That's Hilliard, five to two, second choice. Breaking to his outside, splendid summer. First after the claim, Rudy Rodriguez. This Colt, he is in form, coming off a win, and Rodriguez looking for a second win this afternoon, having struck with the Fusky Island about an hour ago. Yeah. And Flavian Pratt will be aboard again. It, you know, this is good that Flavian is actually riding this horse back. Now, they're 0 for 15, Rudy Rod and him, which is kind of crazy. But in, in this effort, you're going to see this horse. Sorry, this is Cumberland Blues. But the last time this horse ran, you know, Flavian went to the front end and just took the initiative and, and just went on with it. But this horse is shown to come from off the pace as well. So it has some versatility. And Rudy Rod's been going great guns right now. Here's Splendid Summer, dictating up front, wheeling and dealing, makes the lead and never looks back, Bowling. Yeah, I mean, got away with some soft fractions, 49 and 114, but got the job done like he was supposed to that day. And, you know, Rudy Rod dipped in and claimed the horse for 30,000. And, you know, he doesn't place the horse in an impossible spot. His body goes from a 35,000 non two, basically to a 35,000 non three winners of lifetime. So. Just stepping up a notch. I like the way the horse finished and kind of just ran away from that group. Now, 
Is he going to get the same kind of pace today or get away from this group? He could. There's not a lot of pace in here unless somebody else on the outside, like the 10, who's getting on the turf for the first time, if that horse is going to show any speed. The 11's the other horse in here that's covered in the pick, and I think a lot of people think that horse might go to the front end. First time he'd ever made the lead that afternoon. Splendid summer. Of course, we invite you to join us with us at NairoBets.com. Get signed up. Take advantage of that $200 deposit match bonus. Sign up. Use the promo code BONUS200. Earn up to a $200 deposit match after your first deposit. Bet any track, anywhere, anytime. Join now. NairoBets.com to earn your $200 deposit match. Lots riding on the outcome of this one. To carry or not to carry in the pick six, numbers three and 11. The only two covered. What about the pick five payouts here, Polly? They're, they're phenomenal. There you see them, 3,500 to the three. So you're, you know, the three and the four. The one and the nine are getting played in here. I know that, that Sarah and Acacia both like that horse. Uh, the one in here, KP, all systems go. And then the nine, Sonic Speed for Tommy Morley. That's a pretty low payout considering that horse was eight to one on the morning line. So a horse that... Maybe got a little seven furlong, you know, breeze into him and now drops in for 35 and has run some decent races going long in the past. <laughs> After what we saw this morning at Royal Ascot with a 150 to one shot, what we saw about 25 minutes ago, the apprentice triggering an $80 payoff in race number eight. Yeah, anything goes. We'll see if uh, Hilliard pictured can restore order as a two to one favorite. And again, win for the first time in over a year uh, riding an eight-race losing streak yeah. into this one, but facing softer company. Yeah, one for ten. You, you make a good point. Where you look at the four, the fours had two races over the Belmont turf, and they're both Ws. And Hilliard just needs to get back to some of that, I guess, that older form. And Michael Maker maybe can pull it out, or maybe the drop can pull that out of him. Hilliard, two to one, post parade for this ninth and final. KP, all systems go, and Dylan Davis. You know, I could totally see this horse. You know, three back, this horse ran a bang up race from the 12 hole um, at Aqueduct, and if he gets back to that race, he is a player in here. Boliero, kind of one geared, kind of one pace. Yeah, you're right. Just kind of just goes in, in motion and stays in the mid pack. Hilliard, Red Ortiz, Mike Maker. Yeah, Jordan Wyckoff, the owner here, not in Three Diamonds Farms. Silks and Jordan with this one on his own for Maker and I, uh, Irad Ortiz. Summer. Splendid summer. Wire to wire in his latest. Again, that was the first time he ever made the lead. Yeah, and he's sharp, too. He's, he likes Belmont as well. And I, I would think he's going to be part of the outcome. Prayer Book, 37-1, to 1 would be a big surprise. Yeah, he's 83,000 if you have him in the pick five. Long shot side by side, life and light, 44-1. to 1. Yeah, tough horse to get to for Edmund Pringle. You know, the race on the turf was just not much. Steelers fan for life, 30-1 to 1 outsider, two-time winner. Both of those here at Belmont on the lawn. Man, Leah Jim Marty's been hot. She's had a couple winners in, in, in the past week, so I, I wouldn't discount this horse maybe to, to hit the board with Katie Davis. Sonic speed for Tom Morley at 6-1. to 1. Definitely has a shot in here. The, the race in Delaware, there's another race that you go back to at Aqueduct and Saratoga. Another horse that needs to get back to some of that old form. Zilla Racing, Trevor McCarthy seeking a second win on the afternoon. Number 10, Cumberland Blues, 10th career start, first on the Belmont Lawn. You know, an interesting pedigree. Unified candy ride out of an El Corridor mare. El Corridor was a sprinter, but he's actually not bad going long. Not a lot of turf pedigree, but we'll see what happens today. Turf debut, Cumberland Blues, and then Ario, who, who is covered in the pick six. I, I think Ario is covered in the pick six. You know, the more you look at it, is he the horse that takes the initiative? Manny Franco takes over the mount. Is he going to go to the front end? This horse has showed speed in the past, and maybe that's why he's covered, thinking he's the horse that's going to go to the front end, and maybe the three's the horse that comes from off the pace. A little ago, a long way in this one. Acacia, what do you think? Yeah, I would definitely agree with Paul on that philosophy. I do think the speed is to the outside, and the question is, does Hilliard still have some of those good races on the go-back? Now, he tried uh, jumping, and it looked like hurdles were not to his liking, and it is fun to see how Jordan Wyckoff has really taken to uh, the steeplechase racing, but this horse back on the flat, and I think he'll appreciate getting back on the turf. That said, he hasn't run since March, and He's carrying a lot more condition than I typically remember of Hilliard. As Paul said, he is now a five-year-old, but he's dappled out from head to toe. He looks very healthy. I just really think that 
He needs a little bit of a race off of that a bit of a freshening and a few months off the break. He had a big warm up from a rider tease, took him right away from the pony. He's moving fine out there. I just wonder if he is necessarily fit enough. Maybe he's just the class against these. I thought the one KP All Systems Go was interesting. The last time he ran at this level, he was just beaten a nose at a big price beyond inflation adjusted, who would come back to win again. I know it's been a long time since he's seen the winner's circle, um, but I think that he suits these conditions quite well. He will be coming from off of it. He doesn't have a ton of early speed, and but he looks tremendous today. He Sometimes his weight isn't great from race to race. He looks so strong. He's dappled from head to toe. He looks the picture of health right now for Jeffrey Englehart. And he's also second off a layoff as well. This would be the right spot. Let's see if he can seal the deal. At least he's a nice price at six to one, Lafitte. Yeah, Acacia, at this, at this level, KP All Systems Go. Uh, Polly, th this is what you're looking for. You know, a, a horse that's giving you an indication that they're going to bring uh, the best they do have to offer. It's a good size field. He has a good inside post, saving yeah. ground. It's something to work with there with KP All Systems Go. Yeah. yeah you know, Casey made a lot of good points there. And, you know, at this condition, he's been right there. I mean, at Monmouth, at Saratoga, he lost inflation adjusted um, just by a nostril. That was a bang up race. His, his last race. Um, maybe he, he needed that. He had been off for so long. So I could see definitely um, where she's going with the, the one. I'm surprised that the three is your favorite. It, it, it's it's Irad maybe and Mike Maker. I thought the four would be the favorite at post time. But good luck if you're alive. I, I'm not a root against her. I'm not a root against her. So, you know, I have no action in this race, so I'm rooting for the three of the 11. Somebody, the 11s, I think the three... It it hits. I think the eleven is the pool is a pool job. Yeah, only two covered in the pick six numbers yeah. three and eleven. What are you looking for early? Splendid summer second choice who made the lead in his last start, but really isn't all that fast. What are we looking for early? I think the eleven goes to the front end, and Flavian Pratt's a forward rider on the four splendid summer. So I think he maybe tries to lap himself or at least be close to the eleven and get first run, and hopefully and he's probably hoping that the three doesn't reach back to that back class for the pick six to carry or not to carry. We're about to find out. Handing things over to Johnny I one final time. The ninth and final from Belmont. Get in there. Set for the start of the nightcap. And they're off. From the extreme outside, it's Ario going for the lead. Life and Light is racing in second. Splendid Summer is next and third. Sonic Speed now moves up from fourth or pulling up there. Pulling up to the go to the back of the pack was number two, Volietto. Volietto still in the race, but went back to last. Up front, it's Ario, the leader. Sonic Speed next in second. Life and Light runs in third, followed by Steelers Fan for Life in fourth. Splendid Summer in fifth, followed on the outside by Cumberland Blues in sixth. Hilliard is down at the rail. And on the outside is a prayer book, the trailers of Olieto and KP All Systems Go. First quarter in 25 seconds, Ario leads here by a length. Sonic Speed in second with Life and Light third by a neck. And on the outside is Steelers fan for life. And it's a gap of two and a half to Splendid Summer, who's running in fifth. Half mile, 49 and three. Still Ario, who has the lead here. Ario by a full length. Sonic Speed is in second by two. Then Steelers fan for life. Life and Light is down at the rail. A break of two and a half lengths to Splendid Summer in fifth. Hilliard has now advanced up until sixth, but still seven lengths from the lead. Then comes KP All Systems Go. It is Ario who will lead the field to the top of the stretch. Sonic Speed now getting closer on the outside. Then Steelers fan for life. They are in the lane now. Ario on the inside. Sonic Speed on the outside. And Steelers fan for life. Down at the rail is Life and Light. On the outside is Splendid Summer along with Hilliard who is coming on now. Sonic Speed has the lead. Then Ario. Hilliard continues to gain, but the wire is coming, and Sonic Speed got there first. Sonic Speed is the winner. Hilliard closed for second. Ario faded to third.
time is it in the UK? Like 10.20? <laughs> Maggie and Tom probably watching. Sonic Speed in the ninth at Belmont Park, closing 7-1, to one, pick six carryover for the Friday program. That's why you got to pay attention to the board. This horse was sneakily bet in the pick five. It was about 5,000, was your third choice. And Trevor McCarthy gave this horse a perfect ride. Good setup race by Tom. You know, this horse doesn't want to go around uh, one turn, wants to go around a couple turns, and was able to just get first jump. It was very, very aggressive, was on the 11th heels, and you could see that the three was trying to make a move late here. Hilliard picking up his feet, trying to get back to that back class. But Sonic Speed had some back class as well and gets the job done. Yeah, pick six carryover, but nice little pick five payout. About 56, 5,700, somewhere in there. Yeah, things got interesting the last couple of races. Form full day throughout, and then the eighth race with a 40 to 1 shot. And here's Sonic Speed at 7 to 1. Trevor McCarthy going to work. Good afternoon for Trevor. Two wins. And as you mentioned pre race, you thought Ario and Manny Franco might try to steal this thing. Was able to set the tempo early on. Slow, slow fractions early. Yeah, and it, it, listen, whoever had the pick sixes alive, the three and 11, was tremendous handicap. And you had the right horse on the front end, the 11, who was giving Manny, if that horse was able to settle a little bit more on the backside, he was just giving Manny a little bit of trouble. Manny was trying to get him to settle a little bit. And when Sonic Speed took over, for a split second, he thought Hilliard and the one started making a move that you had a chance with Hilliard, but you just couldn't get it home. But... Um, that's a was a pretty good ticket, and whoever had that was some pretty good handicap. Uh, awaiting payouts for the ninth race, the pick six carryover. Uh, congrats, Zilla Racing and the Gray Riders Stable winning owners here. Sonic Speed, Tom Morley, Trevor McCarthy again two wins on the afternoon. While we have a moment, let's go ahead and cue up the animation with the ABR America's Best Racing Race of the Week. Three-year-old fillies on grass on Saturday, and the wild applause. Field, morning line. We're going to start with number three, Ligaria, who was 7-2, Arad Ortiz to ride the one start this year at Churchill Downs, a solid three-year-old debut prior to this effort at Del Mar. Pauly in the Jimmy Durante in which she was wide on the first turn, wide on the far turn, and still wins drawing off. Yeah, this was impressive. I mean, it's one of those ones where you're like, okay, I got the best horse, let's handle with care here, and at 7-5, to five, she just circled the field. I mean, she just went all the way around him and just kept on moving forward, and keeps on reaching. Um, this was an impressive, impressive race. You can see right there, she gets a little sideways. I think she was checking herself out on the infield board there, saying, hey, I won this race. But that was impressive. Lots to be proud of after that effort. Number eight, Brethaway, Joel Rosario, two to one, the morning line favorite aside from the MTO. Brethaway, uh, this was the day before the Preakness at Pimlico in a hard fought second place finish in the hilltop coming from off of pace. Yeah, I thought this was a decent race because you can see right there, she had been bobbing her head a little bit. He was trying to find room a little bit. Now it turns into a decent trip. And you know, the horse on the outside, the complete far outside of the blue silks, I just think got the jump on her spray at the time. And you know, they're gonna go to the wire together. No disgrace, she just gets out finished. But I thought she was, you know, striding along pretty nicely. So this was another good effort. They stopped the clock in, in a very fast time as well. Good Philly. Yeah. It brings it every time. Four starts, two wins. Uh, two second place finishes, uh, the wild applause, and a significant race looking ahead to Saratoga in races like the Lake Placid, uh, the Lake George, three-year-old fillies on grass. That's the Saturday feature, America's best racing race of the week Saturday. Meantime, also Saturday, based on what we saw today, Polly, 150 to one shot, the cross-country pick five sequence for the five races at the Royal Meeting, the Chesham. Jersey, Group 1 Queen Elizabeth, the Hardwick, and the Wild Applause here at Belmont. It's the perfect time to play. It's the perfect time to play because everybody's going to be throwing in those 75 and 80 to 1 shots now. That's going to be a fun <laughs> sequence. You got that right. Fun sequence across country. Pick five. And for Trevor McCarthy, for Tom Morley, big smile, Sonic Speed. First win since April of 2022. Yeah, congratulations. The son of McLean's music out of Tiz Now Mayor. Tiz camera ready, and he was camera ready today, this New York bred. Bred by Anthony Matoli and Steve Matoli, Zilla Racing, and Gray Rider Stable. Congratulations, Maggie and Tom. If you're listening, hopefully you're uh, popping a little bubbly. Probably doing that regardless. There's right? the pick six carry. By carry the way, 43,000 plus. You better check your account. Five out of six, 521. That's That'll a work. nice little bail, yeah. And the pick five, Polly, here with Sonic Speed. Again, things got real interesting with trying yeah, my heart out in the apprentice, $87, and Tom Morley's Sonic Speed, 1720. 
Fun afternoon of uh, Thoroughbred Racing here at Belmont Park, setting up for a prime, prime time weekend with that cross country pick five, the racing overseas for Alaska, and another nine race program tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, it's like a day night doubleheader for me. It was like old school. Caught last night, came back here today, caught a doubleheader, no problem. That uh, private, the, the Naira Betts private, got you back just in time. I'll tell you what, my pilot, Mark, legit. <laughs> I'm sorry. Great stuff as always, Paul Duca, Acacia, have a great trip to the UK. Here, some of the highlights have a gun it. Jose Ortiz, big afternoon. Defusky Island, razor sharp. Trevor McCarthy, first win on the afternoon for Defusky Island, make it three straight. And then in the eighth race, in a driving finish, the apprentice, trying my heart out, 40 to one, shocker, here at Belmont, triggering the pick six carryover. Have a great night, everyone.